Hi guys, Veggie Gamer back and we're back to the Harry Potter book reviews, Prison of Azkaban, chapter 16 and 17 today guys, and thank goodness there's no discussion to be had about Quidditch or Firebolts or Teams or anything like that guys, this is going to be a, a happy Veggie <laughs> episode, I was happy last time guys, I, I love discussing this stuff, but I know... I know that it's um, unconscious bias, but it's conscious bias for me. <laughs> yeah, it actually is. Uh, it's conscious bias that I have, guys. Uh, so I, I apologise about um, episodes where we cover the Quidditch stuff, guys. I know that some of you really like the discussion, guys, but I do sometimes feel like what I'm saying comes off wrong, you know. And so I do, I do hope that that you you understand. I'm, in fact, sometimes I, I say word things very, very badly. I'm still to this day getting comments on, um, on like three episodes ago, when uh, I, I was saying about how when when Lupin found out that Neville's Boggett was Snape, he shouldn't have allowed it, and I worded it so badly. So even now, I'm getting comments saying, "Hey, Veggie, Neville can't change what his Boggett is." I know that isn't what I was saying for a second. I'm sorry, guys. It's about Lupin's professionalism as a teacher. Oh my God, Lupin is cool in this chat tonight. We'll be getting to it, guys. We'll be getting to it. But I love, my goodness, guys. I, I said it in my re reactions that that the scene that we'll be covering in the chapter 17 today is possibly the best Harry Potter scene. The book seems even better, guys. And there is one aspect. I tweeted about it uh, just now, in fact. And I maybe I interpreted it wrong, but it's something that Hermione does in, in this scene, which I genuinely would pay good money to have seen in the movie, guys. Especially book Hermione. Because if movie Hermione would have done it, it would have been all right. But the fact that it's book Hermione is kind of still... Uh, Hermione's had a horrible book storyline in this one guys and so yes there's something that that's what i believe she does in that scene which i think is amazing and i would love to have seen it in in the um in the movie but we're not here to talk about the movies we're here to talk, talk about these chapters guys and we're starting off with uh chapter 16 um no real house housekeeping today like i say um uh when, when it comes to like the previous ones apart from the fact that at least you know a, a, a kind of I, I know that you thing is guys you tell me to not apologize and then i apologize for apologizing but i i know that it could have been a bit frustrating listening through the quidditch stuff with the way that i say it you know and so i i do hope that we're past that now okay so let's now get on to the, the good stuff you know this is this this is the stuff which I really enjoy in the books, and this is like main storyline these chapters, absolutely, and so we'll be getting into those in a moment. Guys, if you're new to these book reviews, basically I go through each chapter uh, having experienced them for the first time. I'm actually listening to the audiobook, but essentially reading them for the first time. I think reading is actually still the right term when it comes to audiobooks. In in incredibly. Um... And I give my thoughts on them and, and so on. And uh, at the end of the video, we I then go through all the comments that we have in the Harry Potter book review. This is me purposely moving my hands like this. So when I'm editing it, I can go straight to the point where I'm doing this. So I can edit in this image. <laughs> it's very helpful. Um, yes, it's a Harry Potter uh, book club, guys. Which uh, you can all be a part of if you wish. It is on the Patreon, but you can back it for as little as you want. And get access to everything that's on the Patreon. Uh, including Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We have now completed Series 2. My God, how good was Series 2 of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I've got to pick who my favourite character is from it as well now. Because at the end of each series, we uh, I, I pick my favourite character and my favourite episode. Which will be very difficult as well. We'll discuss it. We'll discuss my favorite characters. I got it down to three. <laughs> I was gonna say two, but it is no, it is three characters. Uh, but yeah, so we will discuss that next time because we'll be covering the movie as well. So if you want to check out my reaction to the Buffy, 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 Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, which I know is not particularly critically acclaimed, um, you can check that out on the Patreon as well. Like I say, guys, there's no tier system, so you can pay as little as you want and get access to everything on there, including the Harry Potter book clubs. Now, this is somewhere where you can leave your thoughts for these chapters on, on, on in, in the blog. And then at the end of these videos, I go and check it out and read through them. And we basically discuss back and forth. Well, not really back and forth because it's just me discussing to you. So, back. I'm not making any sense. Right. I then go through your comments and give my thoughts on your comments. So, it could, it could be a question. It could be an opinion. It could be a theory. Um, 
And so, yes, if you want to be a part of that, it is the best part of doing these book reviews, guys, is, uh, is checking out the book clubs. And so if you want to be a part of it, you can, uh, you can be. Uh, you also get these book reviews a couple of episodes in advance. And so the one which I've just posted, that, that I pre previously posted on YouTube, on the Patreon, we're always two full episodes ahead. And so if, if, if that makes any sense. And so um, if you get to the end of the ones which are uh, uh, up for free on YouTube and you really want to check out some more, you can go to the Patreon, check out the uh, like at least two uh, book review episodes on the Patreon that are yet to appear on the YouTube channel. I think that makes sense. Never feel like you had to back the Patreon, guys. These videos will be coming out uh, uh, when I can. I'm so sorry about the wait on, on videos in general on YouTube at the moment. Um, but I hope that to uh, fix that soon enough. I am wearing my Hufflepuff shirt. I'm delighted with it. I blooming love it, guys. Look at those colors. Look at those colors. Badger, badger, badger. Sorry. Anyway, guys, I think that's it for housekeeping. It seems weird me not talking for 20 minutes about bobbins before I get you into the book club. I'm going to oil my, oil my beard in a second. Um, oh, actually, what a nice thing. Last night, I blew and watched uh, for the first time in years. Because I, I actually learned, I, I was actually taught this uh, this story at school. I watched Much Ado About Nothing for the first time in a heck of a long time, guys. Much Ado About Nothing, the 1993 um, Kenneth Branagh version. He actually directed it as well as... Set co-starred in it as well. I think you can say no. Mm, there's no. Re there's no real main character in Much Ado About Nothing. It's a Shakespeare play, guys, and it also uh, that the 1993 version also uh, features um, uh, Professor Trelawney's actress, and I completely forgotten Umbridge is in it as well. I've completely forgotten that that actress is in it. She's very young in it. Actually, they're all young in it, but it's just lovely. It's just it, uh, it's it's the only Shakespeare story which I get to the end of and think you know what I really enjoyed that and I genuinely do um even having learned it at school guys it, I feel like it is because the movie is all thou art blah, 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 blah. you know it's, it's all Shakespearean talk poet poetic talk but I think that if you're if you're focused enough you can still understand what the storyline is and that's rare with Shakespeare plays I find guys at least, you know at least to me um so I really like it it's just lovely happy Nobody, um, it's just a, a really nice love story, in my opinion. And Kenneth Branagh's character is amazing on it. Madame Trelawney's character on it is amazing as well. They're the best things about it. I can't remember the actress's name. Um, what's Hermione's actress name? Because she has the same name. Emma, ah, Emma Watson. Emma Thompson. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, Emma Thompson, she's, her and Kenneth Branagh are amazing in it. Seriously, just brilliant. Um, yeah, their, their, their characters are great. I don't want to spoil too much, guys, but they're basically, they're both essentially, I don't know if sexists are the right term, but they basically really do, like, Kenneth Branagh's character, like, really looks down on women, and, um... Emma Thompson's character really looks down on men in a sort of like combative way and so whenever they're talking to each other they're always at each other's throats but their story arc ends lovely so anyway guys I, I, I thought I'd just, just mention that because it has three blooming uh, Hogwarts professors in it which is kind of crazy I'm trying to think if there's any others there, I mean the, the cast is crazy the, the cast is actually like p people will appear pop up on it we, we think wait they're in it how what um but, yes, uh, Brian Blessed is in Harry Potter, is he? That's a weird one. I would have expected him to be in all of them. <laughs> God, he would have played a strange Hagrid. No, he couldn't play Hagrid. He's too aggressive. Who would have Brian Blessed played in, in Harry Potter? Because it's got, um... What's his blooming name? Um... Much Ado About Nothing has Richard Bryars in it, and I think he could have played a great Dumbledore, actually. Definitely the, the early Dumbledore, the lovely stuff, you know. But who would have Brian Blessed played in Harry Potter? I, I, all I can think is Hagrid, but that's just not right. He wouldn't be able to play. He Ah, you know what? Oh, you know what? I can't remember his name, but the Bulgarian um, headmaster. I'm guessing he's the headmaster. The one who um, who knows what's going on with Snape and everything. Yeah, you get it. actually, that would have been good. <laughs> anyway, guys, Brian Blessed aside, 
go and check out Much Ado About Nothing if you like nice, lovely love, love stories. I think it's great. I really do. It's got blooming Keanu Reeves in it, guys. Seriously, the cast in it is bizarre. It's really quite bizarre. Like any Shakespeare thing, I'm going to say now, it was written for its time, okay? So there are some things which are not that so, so great. The fact that there is a character who is literally a bastard literally a bastard as in his parents weren't weren't uh, weren't married aren't married that being a dishonorable thing and actually a personality trait you know that's that, that's not great now you know because obviously a, a lot of people are born out of wedlock now so there are certain things in it which uh, with any Shakespeare play are not going to be completely palatable now but if you just watch it as a as a, as, a, as its own thing I think it's lovely so, I, I, we could have started four minutes ago, but I've just been waffling about much ado about nothing. But anyway, I thought I'd mention it, guys, because it has, like like I say, three of the actors in it. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I really do waffle on. I'm going to go oil my beard, and then we're going to get straight on to Chapter 16, Professor Trawley's Predictions. Prediction. Oh, I should also just say when it comes to much to do about nothing, guys, I don't know if it's age restricted, but there's a lot of butts in it. <laughs> so I thought I'd better just mention that. Yes, yes, that, particularly at the start, there's a lot of bums. So there you go, guys. So <laughs> check out however you want. If you've seen it, let me know, guys, because I think it's blooming wonderful. It's the only Shakespeare play that I genuinely really enjoy, you know, anyway. Um, Professor Trawley's uh, prediction. Now, as always, guys, Jonas, thank you so much for these wonderful side panels uh, that, that you do. Uh, again, we're doing the, 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 the two-parter, and it looks amazing, as as always. And also, Raider Max, thank you so much for the uh, description, the summarizations of these chapters that I read out before moving into my own notes. So... Let's get going. Uh, with finals approaching, Hermione is stressed out. Not only does she have tons of classes to prepare, prepare for, but also Buttbeak's appeal is coming up. Hagrid informs the trio that an executioner will be attending the appeal. The day of the appeal is on the same day as the last finals. Last exam. Yeah, no finals is right. Um, Hermione has... I... I, I, I after the Mansi? I, I feel like I'm always saying that wrong. Uh, whilst Harry and Ron have divination. Um, Harry is the last one to go and must predict his future through a crystal ball to which he makes up a story about Buttbeak. Harry thinks uh, the exam is over when Trelawney starts speaking weird. Well, weirder than normal. Fair point. She goes into a trance-like state and speaks with a, a hoarse voice telling Harry a very big prediction. She wakes, at, she wakes up, um, oh, she wakes out of it and has a, no memory of it at all. Harry makes a run for her, Ron and Hermione. However, they have received bad news that Hagrid lost the appeal and Buttbeak has been sentenced to death. Against Hagrid's wishes, they all... We want to sneak to to see him. However, Harry realizes he left the cloak in the in the passage as um as he ran from Hogsmeade. Which, to be honest, guys, I didn't pick up until getting to these chapters. I didn't realize he'd, he'd plumb and dropped the, the 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 cloak. But I guess it makes sense that that it would say that because it's such a it was such a dramatic moment. You know, it's just like he even he he he, he didn't notice it. Uh, Shockingly, Hermione goes to get it, and they head to Hagrid's hut. Uh, uh, hut. Uh, they arrive to console Hagrid, and he says he has Buttbeak outside to get fresh air before it happens. Whilst going to make tea, Hermione finds a rat, and to everyone's surprise, it's Scabbers. Before too much can be said, they all hear Dumbledore fudge Mucknear, and a committee member coming... And, and Hagrid tells him to get out, uh, out the back. As they head back to the castle, Ron stops because Scabbers is absolutely is going absolutely bonkers trying to get away. Whilst while trying to calm th th him down, they they hear all the men coming out of Hagrid's hut and uh, the unmisp unmistakable sound of a swish and a thud of an axe. Thank you so much for your summary of that chapter, Max. And again, Jonas, thank you so much for these wonderful side panels. So going over to my notes tonight, guys. i got to say, straight off the bat, guys, whenever I do these um, 
these chapter reviews, I go and check out uh, the movie just so I can make sure that my, my my mind's up to speed and so like when I compare things, I'm actually uh, comparing it accurately. For this chapter is it's basically it's essentially two scenes. It's two very short scenes in the movie, and so. Which is fine. I mean, we get so much wonderful information in this chapter regarding all the different exams. Best bit of this chapter, but let's go through it in order. So, uh, people are playing gobstones and, or like watching the giant squid like flap around. Um, I, I think that they, they're basically preparing for, for the exams at this point. Gobstones is an interesting one, guys. Cause I, I don't want to talk about Hog Hogwarts Legacy too much, but I get... From a certain character in Hog Hogwarts Legacy, I get the impression that, that Gobstones actually aren't that popular, but in the books, they definitely seem popular. Even Percy has Gobstones, which is insane. So maybe that's just something that they got wrong in Hogwarts Legacy, but... But, um... Yeah. It's, it's just interesting to hear Gobstones being used so casually, whilst in other medium like uh, Hogwarts Legacy, I kind of get the impression that we're meant to feel like they're worse than they actually are, but anyway... That, that's the either here nor there. No more talking about Hogwarts Legacy. I, I need to remember that a lot of you still haven't played it. Um, I believe the uh, the previous gen version is meant to drop. We need to get back to my playthrough as well, guys. I'm so sorry about the, how slow that, that has been. Everything on the channel has been slow at the moment. Um, so yes, exams are coming up for all students. Uh, Fred and George are actually uh, preparing to take their owls. We hear that Percy is taking his newts, which is definitely new to me, guys. N-E-W-T's, right? I do not think I've ever heard of those before. Maybe maybe it have been mentioned before. I mean, ironically, presumably Newt Scamander doesn't have his newts. And so that would have been that is quite alright. Um we hear that how he that he's planning on joining the, the ministry and so has to do well in them. I'm wondering, is this the first time we've ex explicitly heard that he wants to join the ministry? Because I know that he like he, we've seen him like reading books about how to climb the political ladder and so on and so forth. But for it to actually say this is his intentions, I, I don't know. I, we probably have done, but with a lot of Percy stuff, I, I do often forget it, despite the fact that I bloom and love Percy. Certainly less of a presence in this book than last book. Last book he was uh, omnipresent, wasn't he? In fact, he was a major red herring in the book, which which is something which I only picked up on very, very late whilst covering Chamber of Secrets. Because because I knew that where it was going, it's hard to really pick up on those red herrings, you know? And Percy is a huge red herring in, in Chamber of Secrets. Uh, it, it, Percy is also being uh, stricter than, than normal about people making noises and being distracting in the common room, which is... I guess fair because it's helping everyone else out but he's uh, I was about to say that he's really helping himself out the most but I don't think that's true I feel like Percy gets a bad rap guys even in Harry's viewpoints I'm sure that's going to change guys particularly with what when he shows up in blooming um uh, Order of the Phoenix which was out of nowhere when he's like you know in the movies I should say um but at this point, I think he's a good egg. I do. I think he's a good egg. Not very really vegan, but I do think he's a good egg. Um, Hermione not trying to convince Harry. Uh, oh, yes. So uh, Harry and Ron are basically essentially given up on trying to work out how Hermione is getting to all the classes. Which, again, is interesting, guys. Because in the movie, it's... It, it was just... It, it's such a throwaway thing, the fact that Hermione just, like, keep, keeps on popping up and everything. But here, you know, Harry and Ron are, like, looking at her timetable and saying, this is literally impossible. And in the movie, she's always brushing it off. Like, oh, what, don't be ridiculous. Of course, it's impossible to be in two places at once. But in the movie, in the book, she's, like, she's just completely shutting him down. Then again, she is extremely stressed. Again, guys, I think I've already said it. Hermione has a terrible go of it in this book she really does she's having a really bad time but you know hopefully it will all pay off um i'm sure it probably will it'd be nice to hear about the results i think i think we do hear about results don't we yeah i, I hope we do fi find out about the results it'll be interesting to see where this book ends because obviously um in the movie it ends mid mid term doesn't it with uh harry flying through the air so yeah, it'd be interesting to see what direction that this this uh, this book actually ends on. If it's going to be a case of them getting back to um, 
<clears throat> uh, Private Drive and everything like that. Well, not back to there, but back to the Dudley, D Dursleys, aren't I? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Ron, yes, yeah, so Ron is actually, uh, for the first time I think in this book, is actually being very, very gentle around Hermione. And so when he is approaching her about the timetable, he's doing it very, very softly. He's like saying, hey, Hermione, you know that this doesn't, <laughs> so sorry. But he's purposely being uh, nice to her because he could tell that she's going through it a lot. And also they have been at it so much in, in, this, in this book. It's just nice that Ron is being considerate. You know, and he and he is. He's been he's been he's been kind to a very very stressed uh, Hermione. Um. Oh yeah, my, my my note here. I've got I I I don't know if I brought this up before, guys, but I I do wonder what Hermione was like at primary school. I think I don't know what you'd call it in in, in other countries, but yeah, the school before secondary school, which is what we got it here. Uh, the school that she would have attended before going to Hogwarts, which would, which would have obviously been a muggle school. Was it the case that she was exactly the same there? If I was to put my headcanon into it, guys, I think it would actually be the opposite. I think, not the opposite. Uh, I, I think that she would just be completely normal when it came to her approach of school. But when she found out about the wizarding world, that just inspired her imagination so much that she just wants to learn everything that, that that's my interpretation of it so maybe she was like um i don't want to use the word swat because i believe that's uh, a negative term but no i don't think it is actually <clears throat> was she someone who like you know, devoured knowledge like she does at hogwarts before coming to hogwarts my headcanon is no but let me know your thoughts in the comments on that maybe we'll hear about it eventually um but the appeal will be take, taking place at Hogwarts. Uh, they've brought an executioner up, up to it. I guess that makes sense that it's been done where Buckbeak is rather than be getting Buckbeak to be brought to him if the ex execution is basically a done deal. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's why it's been done at Hogwarts because because of Lucius, Lucius's uh, you know, manipulation and everything. The appeal is all, is basically guaranteed to fail, and they may as well get it all done at once. You know what I mean? We've fudged there as well. Uh, we do hear about McNear as well, which is obviously in the in the summarization, which you hear his name, which I've definitely heard before, and I'm pretty sure that people have said to me before that he is a. I believe that when we got to Goblet of Fire, I I I, I remarked about how a crab, at least crab or Goyle's parents are there and i think that i got a few comments saying oh the executioner from uh azkaban's there as well and so i believe that that's that's the case looks very different in a movie though guys in the book he's got a big thick uh, black mustache i think his axe is significantly smaller as well in the, in the in the movie they went full-on medieval stereotypical scary executor character didn't they it worked it worked very well uh ron they they can't I've already decided because oh yeah sure so so Ron is like I feel like the one who is the most passionate about saving Buttbeak. Now I know Hermione's put a lot of work in, but I feel like that's because she because she wants to be a good friend and everything. Whereas Ron's like here, like saying they can't have decided already because I've spent ages reading up all this legal stuff and everything. So he's a bit frustrated about. Um, the potential of that work being done irrelevantly. But even later on in Hagrid's hut, he is the one who is basically saying, no, we cannot allow this to happen. And Hermione is like that to an extent, but she's more in denial. Like, I think the last line of this, this chapter is, I can't believe it from, uh, from Hermione, which is very sad. Uh, so she's just like in denial that, that they just wouldn't do it, which it seems to be a, a common thing where Ron is the realist and Hermione's, kind of living on hope a lot i feel like that is a case a, a case a lot with with those two characters then again there's probably examples of it being the other way around but yeah that dynamic between ron and hermione's um always i always appreciate the fact that they um they approach the same problem together but from very, very, very different standpoints and different attitudes. I think it's probably the word that, that I'm looking for. <coughs> um, 
so Drake Draco is being Draco and is smugly saying about you know the fact that uh, Buttbeak is going to get executed and everything, and <laughs> Harry Harry is a avoiding imitating Hermione and hitting Draco in the face, which is a great line. Um, we do then find out that the invisibility cloak uh, is still below the, the one-eyed witch, which again, guys, is something which I did not pick up on at all in the, in the previous chapter. Chapters. So this is my favourite bit of this chapter, guys. And again, it's a list. I love lists in these book, guys. When it's like, uh, Harry looked at the bookshelf, bookshelf and saw blah, 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 blah. And then, like, Harry, like, um, history of, uh, history of magic. All the different things that you had to learn about. I love that stuff. And this list is great, guys. It's the list of each different exam um, at Hogwarts that, that they're taking. And we hear about all of them and what they involve and everything. And they're blooming. It, this is my favourite. This, this is this is my favourite stuff from, from these Harry Potter books, really. really. So we start off with Transfiguration and uh, you have to turn a teapot into a tortoise. But Hermione is moaning that hers looks more like a turtle, which quite frankly... Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's not right. It's not right. But I couldn't tell the difference. But, you know... I think one's a lot larger than the other, right? A turtle tortoise. A turtle's larger, I believe. I don't know. Uh, so she's kind of annoying people by the, say, the fact that, that hers looks more like a turtle rather than a tortoise. Because everyone else is like really... Not everyone else, but a lot of other people have really messed up. Like uh, one person has uh, the, 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 um, the tortoise's tail being, being the spout still. Uh, another one is breathing steam, which is amazing. Which actually sounds actually pretty awesome. And one still has like that, like the the uh, the teapot uh, start design on the shell, which again sounds amazing. Uh, so yes, I don't know. I'd imagine her might probably pass that one fine. I don't know, but but then again, if she's right, then she should get full. She should get full marks. But it sounds like she's going to do better than most people. Which is interesting, because in a way, no, I was going to say that that means that, that McGonagall is kind of not being very successful. But then again, we have heard that Transfiguration is an extre is is one of the most difficult, I believe, when it comes to um, lessons at Hogwarts. I'm sorry, guys. I've got a phone charger arriving today. Anyway, I'm sorry. Very unprofessional. Right, back to it. So yes, that's the trans Transfiguration um, exam done with. Uh, that we have that we don't now have charms, which is amazing, guys. Harry over uh, overdid his charm uh, again in the exam. In the exam, like you you pair you pair up w with each other, and ha t typically, uh, you know, the joined by the hip. Harry and Ron are working together again. And Harry, actually, uh, uh, nerv because he was nervous about doing it, overdid the cheer cheering exam. And apparently it took Ron an hour to calm down in a separate room, which is amazing. I would mean, love to see that. All of these would have been amazing in the movie, in the movie, guys. Again, time restraints and everything. But this would have been so cool to have all these different exams. That, because arguably the best, the best character in Harry Potter is Hogwarts. And I mean it, guys. Uh, Hogwarts is a character and one thing that you get from playing Hogwarts Legacy is just the gloriness of all the different aspects of, of it and imagine if we just had like a little montage like maybe like 30 seconds and so like you get like five seconds per class and everything so you have like Hermione coming out saying oh mine looks more like a tortoise and then like a tortoise a tortoise in the background like breathing steam out of its out of its mouth over to Transfiguration and like uh, like Rod getting walked off and Harry looking embarrassed and Rod just like in uh, like fits of laughter. Oh, it would have been good. It would have been good. So yeah, <laughs> so presumably Harry didn't do too well there. Um, dooby dooby doo. Then we over to the Care for Magical Creatures. Hagrid's checked out, guys, and I gotta do it, guys. I gotta bring up unprofessionalism because I do it with Snape. I do it with Lupin. Uh, and this, this is the aspects of the book clubs which which gets the most discussion in the book reviews, I find, when it comes to holding prof professors. I always call them professors, but the books don't, do they? They're teachers, aren't they? But when they refer to them, their names, they say professor. All right. Confusing. But, um... Ha Harrogate should not be 
doing this is important guys this is important to these students that you know progression and everything if hagrid is too down in the dumps to do his do exams i, I don't mind the odd lesson i don't mind the odd lesson guys you know in in rl that one lesson isn't acceptable but the exam that's just not acceptable guys so presumably everyone apart from neville probably but everyone passed this uh care of magical creatures exam with flying colors because all they had to do was keep a flubberworm alive for an hour and the best way to keep the flubberworms alive is just to let them do their thing so I'd imagine that everyone's just chatting away and everything. In fact, that's exactly what Ron, Hermione, and uh, and uh, Harry are doing. They're chatting with Hagrid. I gotta call out unprofessionalism when I when when I see it, guys. If I'm gonna do it to, for one professor, I got to do it for for all of them, you know. And so that's not good, Hagrid. I know. I get someone else to fill in for him. There you go. That that's I mean, you can't really do that, at Hogwarts, can you? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Dumbledore could have done it easily. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Dumbledore should have uh, should have taken the exam, not taken the exam, ran the exam. I, I mean, obviously, I feel blooming terrible for Hagrid, but that do that doesn't mean that you can play around with students' future, you know? Because it is, it is playing around with their future, guys. At least it's not owls or newts. Uh, potions. Uh, Harry is trying to make a confusion concoction, but kind of messes up the stability. Um, and, uh, as Snape is walking past, uh, we, uh, like, Harry believes that Snape is moving his arm in the, in a, in a way of, of writing a zero. So basically, he's going like that. <laughs> again, is he though? Or is that just Harry's unconscious bias? Is that term again? Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it's, um, yeah. I mean, he probably has failed. <laughs> and it probably is down to Snape for being, you know, being Snape and like, you know, putting more. I do not believe that Snape. Now, this will probably be a cause of discussion, but I don't believe that Snape would be giving fair judgment when it comes to everyone scoring. And so he, he very well may have written zero for Harry if doing a, a confusion concoction not perfect requires a zero. I don't know. You'd imagine probably with with potions. This is an interesting uh, discussion actually. With potions, if you don't get it 100%, you've got it zero. Right? Is that fair? But that would also be the case for transfiguration though as well. In which case, everyone that we've heard about would have failed it. Charms not so much. I feel like Harry probably could have got full marks. Oh, I don't know. The potency has got to be important in charms, just like it is in, in po potions. So yeah, if you're going to rate anything out of 100, let's say. It can't just be pass or fail. And so yeah, I think that Harry should have got more than more than zero. In this in this situation. If it's not fail or pass, if the potion is correct or not correct, that's it. Uh, then, then that's fine. But if you're going to give someone a zero, that means that there has to be tiers to it. It's not zero or one, one being pass, zero being fail, you know? And so, yeah, I feel like Harry probably does deserve more than more than zero. And maybe he did get more than zero, guys, because obviously we're always hearing this stuff from Harry's point of view. And when Snape's around, he's... I don't think nervous is the right term at this point, but he's always in the back of his mind thinking, ah, oh, Snape's going to hold this against me. He was probably thinking it as he was putting the potion together. Maybe that's why he messed it up. Either way, astronomy exam at midnight. Very interesting to have, have an exam at midnight, but it completely makes sense though, doesn't it? History of magic. Um, Harry is scribbling down everything uh, that uh, Florine... Fortescue had told him about uh, Witch Hunts, which is the guy at, with the ice cream parlor at the start of the book. That was cool. I really like the fact that we that, that 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 paid off. And so I don't know if that is because because Harry, I, I feel like Harry chose that subject and that's why he was writing the paper at the start of this book. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he chose it rather than everyone being given that subject. Because he was writing an essay and so to write an essay, I think generally you need to no, that's not true, because uh, Snape gave the essay work out 
for werewolves. So maybe he didn't choose it, but that definitely paid off though. So Harry's just like scribbling down all the waffle that uh, Florine uh, gave him, which is, you know, that, that paid off beautifully. Uh, herbology, everyone gets sunburnt inside the greenhouse. You'd, you'd think that, uh, you know, in a school, let alone a wizarding school, there would probably be a way around that. But I guess with Sprout's personality, particularly in the movie, and also with who they chose to play her, that she probably doesn't really... She would blame the students for if they were to get sunburned. Oh, well, then again, she's a Hufflepuff. Oh man, I'm not sure. It's not great. All the students coming back with red. I think it's like like I think it says that they have red. The backs of their necks are red. I think. Essentially, everyone's sunburned because they were inside a great greenhouse for so long, and also summer is properly approaching. It keeps on saying how uh, summer air is wafting into the room as they're studying and stuff like that. It's very nicely described how summer is clearly just around the corner. Which means that we probably definitely are going to get to the end of this uh, term in the book. You'd imagine. Because um, obviously the timing of, of, of the movie is very different. A lot of the of, of this movie is is set in snowy times in winter. I should probably say snowy times. That's not true. Isn't this one? It's this one where it keeps on showing the Whomping Willow in the different seasons, isn't it? Well, I take that back then. Yeah, no, that that that's literally showing you the different stages, isn't it? Whomping Willow scene, guys. My goodness, we'll be getting to it, but my god. That, what would the age restrictions have been if that scene was like it is in the movie, guys? My goodness, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. But we're still going through the, these wonderful exam moments. Defense Against the art, Dark Arts class sounds awesome, guys. Lupin's like set up an obstacle course outside the grounds and everything. Uh, the first thing is to, I don't know if you, I think you're wading at least through like some water with a grindelow in there, which would be interesting. Uh, you have to like navigate uh, potholes with uh, red caps in. Uh, marshy arrow with a hinky pump who's giving you the wrong directions, which is just, all these just really, you just, sound, just sounds amazing. It just, sound, you can just like, picture it in your mind you know as, as long as you know what these characters are like and then finally you need to do battle with a boggart in a tree trunk now guys as soon as i heard that my mind went straight to empire strikes back now the thing is i can't say why because there are still people who have not seen star wars with you know watch it whenever you want guys Record your reaction to it, oh guys! All the Star, all, all the Star Wars movies, I, I should say, because it's wonderful seeing people watch Star Wars for the first time. Because they are great, but there being a boggart in a tree trunk just instantly makes me think, oh, that scene in Empire Strikes Back where essentially someone's boggart is there. <laughs> I can't really say any more than that, guys. But immediately I thought, bang, which makes what happens to Hermione even funnier, here, guys. Um, so we finally find out what Hermione's boggart is. And this is so unfair on her, guys. Because you'd imagine that a lot of people's boggarts, you've got to imagine a lot of people's boggarts would be some conscience. And so a lot of people would be, like, think, you know, like Lupin, like, says, okay, think of your most, uh, your biggest fear, get in line. A lot of people are getting to the front line thinking, oh, what, 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 that, that, maybe that, 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 I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But then when they get to the front line, it turns out to be their parents looking disappointed at them or something like that, you know. Some people actually wouldn't think scared, you know. And so it's very possible that, that, possible that Hermione had no idea what her pocket would be. <laughs> and she comes, and the fact that she, she comes screaming out is ridiculous. <laughs> It is McGonagall. Very interesting that it's specifically McGonagall. I guess it's because of the time turner, isn't it? It's like... So it's McGonagall saying that that that, that, that she's failed at everything. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> the fact that she comes screaming out is ridiculous, though. Because the thing is, a boggart wouldn't necessarily... It's not as... Ah! It's not necessarily that. That's my... Ah! Moment. Um... It, a boggit isn't necessarily going to be something that is going to make you scream when you see it. 
Because if you uh, loot Scamander's, guys, we see his boy in Crimes of Grindelwald. I hope you don't mind me mentioning stuff from Crimes of Grindelwald, guys. I won't go too much into the, into the plot if you haven't seen it. Um, the movie reaction edit is coming up, guys. I've, I've finished the first pass now, which is always by far the longest part of doing it. So it will be coming as soon as I can get it done. But if you're watching this for free on YouTube, it will have already been posted. So you can go check out there. But yes, when we see Newt's uh, Boggy, he's not like, oh my god! <laughs> like that, you know? It wouldn't make any sense because it's a desk. I don't really like that. You know how much I love Newt's Commander, guys. My god, I love his character. And I love Tina as well. And I love Jacob and I love Queenie. <laughs> my goodness. I've got, I've got opinions of Crime crime on now, guys. Um, because one very interesting thing is, like, when, obviously, when I when I finish a movie, I'm like, ah, oh, it's great. I'm more electrified and everything. But when you're editing it and breaking down every single scene, you know, cutting it into like small chunks, to, like put all together in a, in a reaction, you really start to pick up on the things where I think I understand why some people don't like it. For one thing, the last third of the movie, there's barely any dialogue. It's just people looking really dramatic each other. <laughs> it really is huge chunks of nothing that being cut out. Um. But also, I'll, I'll, I'll word this. In, I'll, I'll re-say this in in the intro to the the, the third and final. Apparently, uh, I hope that's not true. But third and final um, Fantastic Beasts movie. Um, I really enjoyed the movie, guys. I did. I really did enjoy it. Now that being said, if you were to give me a chart. And there's a lot of characters in Crime of, Crimes of Grindelwald, guys. A lot of characters. And you gave me a little sticker with each character's name on, or picture, let's say. And you say, okay, you've got two, two columns. Interested. Invested, not invested. So characters who I'm invested in, characters that I'm not really invested in their, in their story. If I was to put the characters on that chart, guys, it would make grim reading. <laughs> it really would. It would make grim reading. Um, yeah. There wouldn't be many in the interesting side. There's too many characters. It, we're, we're made to... They attempted to make us really care about characters that we've just met. And it, that didn't work for me. That being said, any movie with Scamand... Newt, I, I apologise. Sounding like Tina now. I missed the Scamander. Uh, with Newt, Tina, Queenie and Jacob in, I will enjoy because I love their characters and I would have liked it to focus more on them. You know what, another thing, and again, I will be talking about this in the intro to the, to the third movie. Another thing is that I realise it basically undoes the end of the first movie. It's all like, okay, uh, th that's it. Uh, so, um, again, I, I shouldn't really be talking about the, the main storyline, guys, but the main events that have... The, 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 there are two big things that happen at the end of Crimes of Grindelwald. One sad, one justice. I guess is probably the best way of putting it. At the very start of the next of Crimes of Grindelwald, um, those two things are literally completely undone immediately. Like immediately. And so it makes you just think, well, what's the point of the end of the movie then? Anyway, I will shut up because we're not talking about Crimes of Grindelwald, guys. Even though in fact I've just spent the last five minutes talking about Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, why was I mentioning it? Of course the bogget. So yes, back to uh, the fact that it's McGonagall is very interesting, guys. But I do wonder it's because because Hermione has been confided in the Time Turner for her to then fail then is even worse. And so for it to be the person who gave it to her, and also because obviously McGonagall is her, her her house representative, and everything her, her, her the head of the house, I should say. Um, I'd like some more McGonagall Hermione scene, but of course with, with Harry Potter in general, Harry's got to be in the scene. There's never a scene where Harry isn't at least conscious, you know? Um, but yeah, more McGonagall Hermione would be lovely. Uh, the fact that, that that it's her, McGonagall appearing for Hermione is, is very sweet and it's also quite sad as well. <laughs> the fact she screams though is a bit much though, guys. <laughs> She should be in. She should be in tears, and quite frankly, she spends more time in tears than they're not in this book. Really, she really does, doesn't she? Not, not. It's not criticism, of course. Um, but for her to be screaming, <laughs> that, my, that McGonagall told her that that yeah that I mean it's to think it's it is ridiculous, but it's meant to be ridiculous, guys. It's a very funny scene. Ridiculous. How ironic. 
So Hermione doesn't complete the, the challenge, guys. Harry does. Harry gets full marks. He does fantastically. I, I would probably say because he has had the most experience with Lupin. And that's going to go a long way, guys. Uh, Ron gets a bog down in the marsh. And again, that makes me think of Empire Strikes Back. The marsh, guys. The marsh. And then the tree trunk. Anyone who's seen Empire Strikes Back, you know what I mean. And I think I'm making a great point. But that's why I think it's so funny. Because you, you imagine... And the fact that, Hermo that I, I got... Apparently, I knew that Ron had predicted what Hermione's bog would be. But apparently he gets it bang on. Um, I thought... I knew it was something about failing against, or not getting a full score or a perfect score or something. But apparently Ron did actually get it bang on. <laughs> so that's amazing. But imagine that scene in Empire Strikes Back. And again, I can't give too much context. That, 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 that whole scene where it's like... Suddenly changes to like almost slow motion. And there's like really scary music and everything. And then McGonagall walking around the corner to the fight. That'd be amazing. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up on Star Wars, guys. I, 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 I saw, I've I saw the, the first three so many times when I was a child. My, my, bro, my, my, I've got two older brothers. The one which is just above me. Big, big proper Star Wars fan. And, uh, uh, you know, and I, am, I was a big Star Wars fan as well. I can't say I was as big as him. I mean, he read, read all the books and everything, you know. And we're talking about the old books. Em Heir, of the em Heir to the Empire and all that sort of stuff, you know. Which, which I have read as well, to be fair. Um, audiobook, I think. No, I think I actually read... No! I think I may have actually read that. That's insane. As a dyslexic. Um, what was the point I was going to make about Star Wars? Oh, that's right. Because I grew up on it when I was very, very young, I used to make really weird assumptions about it. And the first movie, I, I still clearly remember having really... Ha thinking things that are going on in the movie that aren't. And, and I've, t I've told this to my brother, and he says, you know what, that is incredibly perceptive. Cons considering I was wrong, it's incredibly per perceptive of, of me when I, when, because I was that young. I'm not making any sense, I guess. But when I was very, very young, I distinctly remember thinking that Obi-Wan Kenobi was a bad guy on A New Hope. And you know why? And if you watch the scene now, I think I'm actually onto it, guys. When, 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 uh, when like, he's trying to get uh, Luke to, to go with him to Alderaan. And, uh, and Luke's like saying, no, I've got to go home. I've got, I've got work on the farm to do. I can't just like go off on an adventure. Uh, and like he like, says, like, look, I'll, I'll take you as far. I can't remember where he says I'll take you as far as. He basically says I'll take you as far as like a near town nearby or something, and, and then and then and then you can get you get get your own transport to Alderaan from there. And Alec Guinness, who was a fantastic actor, quite frankly, he acts the pants off everyone in that movie. He is fan He is so much better than everyone <laughs> as an actor, guys. He is a fantastic actor. And just like looking away from Luke, and he goes, "You must do what you think is right, of course." I thought he was being sinister there. I thought I thought he was basically saying, "Okay, I'll show you." And so I thought that he had actually orchestrated what then happens. <laughs> I won't see what happens next, guys, but it end nice. And so for the longest time, I thought that 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 that, that uh, Obi Wan was a baddie. Also, I shouldn't be talking about stuff. This is why this is why these videos are so long. There's, okay, I'll do one more. You know the guy in 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 the, in the bar who like says he doesn't like you. And then, and then Luke says, "All right." And then turns away. And then, like he, like he grabs his shoulder again and he says, "I don't like you either." As a kid, I remember that guy saying, "I don't like you," and then his head rotating, and then uh, the other side saying, "I don't like you either." I'm a weird. I was a weird kid, guys. I really was, because that sure as hell does not happen in the movie. Right back to Harry Potter. This is why these videos are so long, guys. I'm so sorry about the sidetrack, but I can't, I, apparently, a lot of you don't mind. I mean, the majority of you don't mind my sidetracking, but I'm so sorry to anyone who does mind, because it must be very infuriating. So Hermione's boggit is amazing, and I do think it is massively unfair on her, guys, because she has never seen her boggit before. In the boggit lesson, she, she was left out. For what reason was she left out? I can't remember. No, it's because she answered a question, wasn't it? And so... So she had already completed the the lesson, but Lupin still should. Lupin definitely should have let uh, 
well, this gets into the whole professionalism thing again, isn't it? Is it, is it ethical to, to show that a professor is technically the thing that you've scared, you're afraid of the most? Because it is, it is McGonagall that, that she's afraid of there. It is McGonagall that she's afraid of there. It's failure, but it's failure via McGonagall. Because the boggit could have just turned into a piece of pears, paper saying F. Just F. I'm not going to say anything ruder. Um, but the fact is McGonagall. Yeah. But then again, Lupin has no idea what, what Hermione's boggit's going to be because she doesn't say, does she? And she and he assumes what Harry's going to be and that's why Harry doesn't get a chance. But it's very unfair on, on Hermione because if, if boggits can be subconscious and I can't see them not being able to be subconscious. They have to be, right? Like, if you've gone through some, like, horrific trauma as a child and you've just blocked it out in your life, in your mind just so you can get through life, when you say, what's your biggest fear? You're not going to think of that because you've blocked it out. But then when the bogger appears, it's going to be able to see through that. Very interesting. It's got to be, it's got to be subconscious. Boggets can, can, had to be able to be subconscious. And so it's very possible that Hermione had no idea what her bogget, bogget was going to be. Which is unfair. So I'm, I'm hoping Lupin uh, scores her correctly. I would love if we hear the, the results to all these guys. I really would. I don't think we will, but I would love to hear the breakdown of each lesson. Obviously, everyone w walked over Hagrid's lesson, apart from probably Neville. Like I said, he probably sat on his um, flubber worm. That sounded worse. Okay, ignore me. Right. That sounded much worse than I meant it to. Right. Fudge uh, greets Harry. So, ha yeah, F Fudge is, is there with um, McNair and a very elderly um, uh, committee member. And like and greets Harry, which is very interesting. And so, obviously, he, he hasn't really had a run-in with Ron and Hermione. Possibly not even ever. He may have been in the same room as Ron, but Hermione... Well, he, well, obviously, Ron knows that he's been in the same room as Fudge before, but Fudge um, didn't know because they there under the invisibility cloak in Chamber. Uh, whereas Hermione, I think it's got to be potentially the first time that she's been in the presence of Fudge, right? Oh, guys, I'm trying... Uh, it, Fudge isn't physically in Philosopher's Stone, is he? Yeah, I, I think it's. I, I think this must be the first time for Hermione. And so, anyway, that that aside, Fudge does greet Harry, and um, and it says how Ron and Hermione uh like hover in the background awkwardly. And I've got down in my notes, story of my life, because the amount of, I, I'm not good at that, guys. Like, if I'm with like a, if a family member or or someone, and like and like one of their friends is like sees them in the streets, and they say, "Oh, how are you doing?" And everything. It's it's got to be down to my autism, guys. But I freeze. I don't know what to do. I, so I essentially just walk slowly off and like pretend to be like looking in the shop and everything. It's not good. It's it's very. It's not. It's not very rude. But I wish. I wish that I could do better. And so yeah, that line hovering in the, in the background awkwardly that speaks to me, guys. It really does. Um, Fudge tells Harry uh, why he's there, which is a bit weird, guys. Why, why does? Why is it, and it's not like Harry like says, why are you here? I mean, he just gives Harry the full lowdown. The fact that he's here because of like a, a mad hippogriff that he says here. Very interesting that it says mad hippogriff. Because it, it that would suggest that the vast majority of hippogriffs probably... No, they are dangerous creatures, guys. Because there's, there's so many cases through history. It's just interesting that he refers to it as, as a mad hippogriff. So yes, the ex executioner does have a thick black moustache. And he does, he, I believe he has his axe concealed. Whereas in the movie, it's huge, isn't it? It's this blooming ridiculously long axe. Which obviously you need leverage and to get for a lot of creatures. Uh, next. Um... But yes, Harry like spies the fact that McNair has has this knife that he's running his thumb along. Uh, Ron actually goes to say something about the bug beak thing again. Different approach, guys. The, Ron does have this fire when it comes to trying to protect Buck Beak uh, uh, in this situation, but Hermione like nudges him and stops him from being able to talk. And Hermione then explains to him when, when they've walked away from when, from Fudge that she did it because she doesn't want Arthur to get in trouble. So smart. That's awesome, Hermione. That that is Hermione being an awesome lookout for Ron there. Uh, very quick thinking as well. 
especially the fact that even Hermione would be very emotional at this point. She's still looking out for Ron in that situation, or looking out for Arthur and Ron, of course. Um, but, but then again, also, Hermione is still in denial, though. At this point, she's like saying, they're, they're not going to kill Butt Peak. And that's why at the end of this chapter is so sad. She, she, but she is, throughout this entire chapter, saying, oh, they're not going to do it. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So now we carry on with the exams, the uh, divination and the muggle studies exam. Obviously, Hermione's no longer doing divination, so she's off doing the muggle study. I've got here, guys. Why not? And I can't see a reason why not. Why not have a muggle as the muggle teacher? Professor, I should say. Um, I don't see a problem with that. Ob obviously, there's a lot of muggles that know about the wizarding world. A hell of a lot of muggles that know about the wizarding world. And so, what if, if like, say, uh, like Hermione's parents and everything, um, as, as an example, obviously not the Dursleys, that would be bad. But, like, the Dursleys, like, said, okay, my, my daughter's going off here. You have something called muggle studies. Well, I mean, I could probably help out with that, you know? At least, you know, you know maybe come in, like, say, hi, guys, I'm a muggle. That'd be amazing. Oh, I want to see that scene. This is a TV remote. We press the buttons to change the TV. Um, that'd be great. Arthur would love that as well. Yeah, I can't see why the professor, the muggle professor can't and shouldn't be a muggle. I feel like it'd be better. It's like when you're learning another language, you're, got, you're probably going to be best off learning it from, well, actually, the ability to teach is obviously very important as well. But like, say, if someone, if, uh, if a muggle teacher... A very good muggle teacher, their, their son or daughter gets, uh, you know, gets an offer to go to, to Hogwarts. That, that, oh, they'd have to go off the grid though, wouldn't they? Oh, that could be a good point. Maybe that's why it wouldn't work then. But the child's going off the grid. That's a good point. So all, all students that have muggle parents have to have a front saying oh no we're we're, we're sending our child off to a different school god that's quite a it's got to be a bit of a pain isn't it like all of them have to hmm but then for a parent to go and live in hogwarts for a good chunk of the year they would be disappearing and then you'd it's like, you know, tax revenue people and, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe because the, it's okay for a student to go off the grid because they're just saying, oh, no, they're, no, they're going to another school. But for an adult to do it, that is actually quite different. And also they wouldn't be paid in, in uh, muggle money, would they? You, there would be a, a system of, no, of course they, no, they go to Gringotts, what am I talking about? This is the sort of thing which is fascinating to me, so I hope it's interesting to you guys. But yeah, why not have a muggle as a muggle teacher? Let me know your reasons why you think there shouldn't be. Because I think we can all agree a muggle would make a great muggle teacher. If if they are a, if they are a muggle teacher and are generally good at teaching children, then they would be great at Hogwarts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when it comes to the legal standpoint of it, guys, that that's that would be a little bit more interesting. Maybe it's because they'd had to just like uh, just basically essentially disappear. But they could say they're working abroad, though. Yeah, I think it's interesting. <laughs> right. So, uh, divination is done being done one by one. So it's almost like an interview process. And Trelawney, uh when when Neville leaves, ha having done his 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 exam, he like says that uh, Trelawney had told him to. Uh, not tell anyone about what what goes on in the exam, um, or he or he will have a terrible accident. I do wonder if that is a premonition, or that is Chironly actually showing her true colours there, like saying, "I like to think that that is Chironly thinking that Neville actually have an accident." I mean, he's going to have an accident. That, that Ron like says this is ridiculous. Of course, like Ron's going to have an accident. That Neville's going to have, have, have accidents. It's what Neville does. But yeah, for Chironly to actually say to Neville. That you will have an accident if you tell anyone. Is that her genuinely seeing that? Or is that her manipulating people? I do... Oh, man. I feel like that is the line where it really becomes a little bit more potential that she is a charlatan. <laughs> but then again, we know she isn't, though. So... Yeah. And the fact is Neville specifically, you know. 
But then again, maybe Harry and Ron didn't ask anyone else about what goes in on it, and, and, and so that's why I mentioned. Uh, Pravati uh, apparently is told that she has the makings of a true seer, which is very nice of her, guys. I do wor worry, though, again, it's it's like a backhanded compliment. It's like saying, yeah, you're stupid enough to believe this stuff. You know, no, actually, no, you're you're gullible enough. Not stupid, sorry, but but you're, you're willing to... You're willing to go with a narrative that may not be 100% true, you know? Or maybe she's just going to be great to see her. I'd love to know what Pravati does, because both Pravati and... Um, oh, God, her sister. Um, I need to look up. I'm sorry, guys. Patel sisters, isn't it? What? Harry Potter, not Hindu. And apparently there's something, uh, an obviously famous Hindu, um, of course, Patel is obviously a very uh, common name in India. Oh my goodness, Pravati Padma, there we go, I'm sorry guys. I believe both of them survived, I, I don't know, we'll, 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 we'll cover it in a book. There was, there was one bit where I thought that Padma was, with Trawnley in fact, that's, no, maybe it was Pravati then. But like putting that like uh, a blanket over someone's face in Deathly Hollows, and I thought, oh god, that must be the other sister. And I blew broke down at that point. I've since seen. Uh, I think they were actually, you know, uh, off camera, you know, shots of it. You know, as in not fo not movie footage showing that it's it's just like a completely different character. It may have been Lavender again, and again. God, that I could have been Lavender. And that makes even more sense. So maybe it is Pravati, Lavender, and Trawny in that scene. That makes me so sad. Because we know that Lavender doesn't make it. Oh, that makes me sad, guys. Either way, uh, I love hearing about uh, Pravati, to be honest, guys. And so I hope to hear more about her and Lavender and the Trawny sid situation. I don't know what I meant by that. Um, Harry is the last to be seen, typically. That is probably truly possibly thinking that she's doing him a favour there, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, pa uh, Harry is last um, to go in. I've got down here that, and this is again why these videos are so long. Ron's large feet appear on the ladder. And I've got down here, are Ron's feet noteworthingly large? So I'm sure we haven't heard that about that before. But the fact is, there's Ron's large feet appear on the ladder. Has he got large feet? You know what they say about people with large feet? That's right, large socks. Um, yeah. For, so this, is, this is why these videos are so long. I just find it interesting that it is noteworthy that Ron's feet are large. I will be looking out like like a hawk for any more examples of that happening in the future. Uh, so yeah, so having having done done the exam. And he tells Harry that he just made a bunch of stuff up, and and he thinks that Trawny like <laughs> believed it. Um, so yes, Harry goes in, and he after like attempting to to see something in, in the orb, uh, then starts making stuff about Butby. Now this is interesting, guys, because in the movie he does see something in the orb, and so there has to be something going on with these orbs. And it's not even when he's trying to; he's just like he's like returning the orb, and then suddenly he sees uh, Sirius Black talking to him. And so, yeah, there is definitely something to these orbs. Um, Trawny is, like, surprised that that, that Buttbeak still has his head on his shoulders. And, like, saying, are you sure there isn't loads of blood everywhere? And <laughs> everything is horrible, the way she words it. Um, and it's, this, this, is, this makes me think that Trawny is legit now. Because having... And, and Harry, you know, because you know, he's... He, he, he's like Hermione. He's like not accepting the fact that what's going to happen to Buttbeak. He's like saying, no, no, Buttbeak's fine. He's, saying he's flying off. He's flying off. He's perfectly fine and everything. And then Trawny says, well, I'm sure you did your best. Now, that is fascinating, guys. One, that means that she believes him. Two, that means that there is definitely something going on with the orbs and it isn't a complete... You know, like McGonagall says, there is actually something going on with the orbs. Three, I can't remember what my three was, but it's the most interesting one. False. I'm sure you did your best. That's right. I'm sure you did your best. Again, that that is a fascinating line when it comes to seeing visions. 
because that means that the visions aren't necessarily real. So if you if you see something in orb, that does not mean it's going to happen. If you're Padma and you see something in the orb, it is likely to happen because she's she has all the makings of a true seer. But if you see something and it isn't what Shrawny expects to see or has at least seen herself, then <sighs> what I'm saying is you, the things that you see in the orb aren't necessarily going to happen going to happen and so it's not just a case of being able to see it and in in a way sense that Hermione just can't see nothing Harry can see something oh no Harry can't see something but Trawny believes that Harry can see something but it isn't the right something so yeah that that makes her lessons very bizarre guys because the fact that the fact that you're seeing something doesn't necessarily mean it's real or that it's going to happen that line I'm sure you did your best. Unless she's unless she's worked it out. No, 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 no. She she does think that Harry did see them something. Just not the right thing. Very interesting line. Um Yeah, so it's possible to see incorrect futures inside the orbs. Which is very interesting. G going on Trollney's rea reaction. No vision of black, no of course. Trollney uh possessed a lot easier to understand here. Yeah, I gotta say, guys, the scene in the movie. I think it's because it's just so out of nowhere. It's like, uh, and, and, it's, and it's like her speaking quite fast. It, it didn't sink in what she was saying when I was watching it for the first time. I'd, I'd, I'd essentially forgotten that she'd said anything by the time we get to uh, the reveal of Pettigrew. But then again, that's probably the case in the book as well, because a lot happens between then and now. Um, but yes, it's a lot. It's, it's, she's talking for like it. I know she talks with a deep voice, a gravelly voice in the movie as well. It's just, it's just a little bit more calm, you know. Um, it's interesting that, that she's saying that 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 the that, that, that the follower or whatever will will be un, uh, unprisoned. Does that mean that Pettigrew sees himself as being imprisoned in Scabbers because he can't reveal himself, or is she still actually talking about Black? Either way, uh, at the end of it, she like says, oh, sorry, I dozed off, which is nice. And um, Harry actually does tell her everything that, 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 that just happened. And he says, oh, you must have fallen asleep as well. It's, ridiculous. Um, it's very interesting that she is not willing to believe him there. Because you'd think that a, a seer would be thinking, oh, maybe there's something here, here. But no, she's very, she's very dismissive of other people's visions if they're not what she expects to happen. Trolley's an interesting character in the book, guys. She really is. She's great in the movie as well, but there's a lot to get your teeth into with, with her in, in the book. Um, and yeah, see, uh, Harry thinks she may have been trying to make it. Oh, yes, that's right. So Harry actually does think that maybe she, like Trolley was just trying to make a dramatic ending to it because obviously she she plays with Harry. Not played, but uh, she, she's always saying the wrong thing to Harry, you know, and so maybe she thought... Ah, oh, this would be cool if this is the way I ended the lesson. So Harry still thinks that she's a complete charlatan. Yeah. Which makes sense, guys, because he, he still has not actually seen anything in the orb. Yet. In, in the movie, he actually has done at this point. Uh, but Big loses the appeal. Uh, Hagrid writes a, a note to the three. Doesn't want them to see the execution. Typically, they're going to go anyway. Uh, when Harry like says about how you know the, he would go, but he doesn't have the cloak and everything... Uh, Hermione like says, oh, right, okay, where is it? Underneath the one-eyed witch and just walks out and just goes and gets it, which is pretty badass, guys. I thought that was actually really nice. I've got a little note here saying that she pushes the portrait, uh, the, the portrait open, whereas I thought that when, when you're on the other side of the portrait, you still do ask for the door to be open rather than push it. But no, it, it says that she pushes it here. There's probably other examples of that. Um... Ron says he doesn't know what's, what's gotten into Hermione. This is a nice line, actually. Uh, when she returns with, with the cloak. And, uh, and Ron says, I don't know what's gotten into you. First uh, first you hit Malfoy, then you walk on, uh, walk out on Trelawney. And it very nicely says that Hermione looks really flattered by what Ron said. I love that. It's a really nice line. I do wonder the reasons for why it's Hermione and the and the way that she does it. And I think it's possibly because the exams are over now. And so now she's she's spinning all these plates, but now a lot of the plates have been taken off. So now she's refocusing on, on the main quest of helping at Buttbeak, 
What's the first thing to help up Bubby? Go and get that cloak. She's straight on it. And also the fact that she's back with her friends now. I really like I really like the, way, the, the fact that it's Hermione who goes and gets it. And it's just like, she doesn't even think twice about it. And it is, it's, it's doing dodgy stuff, guys. And she could have got uh, caught by Snape. Um, yeah, really cool. She says yeah, she just seems very energized now. Now that, that now that the exams are over. Examples Ron says were out of frustration. That's right. So yeah, the, the ones the, the examples that Ron says is a Malfoy getting hit and the Trelawney walkout are very different than Hermione going to get the the cloak because Hermione's going to get the cloak I think with a complete clear head whereas the Malfoy punch and the Trelawney uh, situation was both out of frustration with Ron with her friendships I should say the fact that she is massively overworked and the fact that she is essentially getting wound up by these two people that's why those happened whereas this was hyper focused let's get the job done Hermione which is very very different and so yeah the, 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 those examples that Ron say gave are pretty, uh, are different from this one. Wow, guys, I did not think that we'd spend an hour on the first chapter. I thought we'd breeze through it. Through it, but again, I love those exam moments. They were they were so good. Uh, so they go to Hagrid. Hagrid's not uh, crying. He just appears to be very much in shock. In the movie, it's very different. I feel like Harry. That that sorry, Hagrid is really putting on a brave face for the free you know when, when they arrive at the huts um because obviously harry shouldn't be there in the book as well whereas in in in, in the movie they just straight up just walk to hagrid's hut um uh but hagrid in the book he's like yeah he's trying to to pour like drinks and everything but he's just pouring them all over the work service and everything and so he's he's in shock he's he, he's basically he's basically someone who doesn't have any options trying to work out what to do next you know uh, whereas Ron is still determined that they are going to do something to stop it. Um, the executioner's name is McNear, yes. Uh, like I said, I had heard that he was a Death Eater in Gob uh, Goblet of Fire before. Uh, Hermione's bub blubbling again. She spent so much of this book crying, guys. And I, I can see why they would change that in the movies. Because she does cry a lot. And there's nothing wrong with crying, guys. But if 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 Hermione in the movie was crying a lot, I think it'd be a little bit more difficult to enjoy her character. You know, I think she's very very sweet, and I think it's very very natural that she'd be like this. But the crying is it, it's it's almost like a constant in this book. You know what I mean? Um, I do feel like they went too far in the other way with Hermione when it comes to the movies. And out of the two, I definitely prefer book Hermione. We've gone over that many times. Uh, but yes, she then like takes over the, uh, the, the the tea making and everything. And gets the milk jug out and blooming Scabbers is inside it. So it's really nice that, that it's Hermione to find, that finds Scabbers rather than... Because in the book, like Hagrid like, says, oh yeah. And it goes over to this like, lunchbox with some cheese in it. And like Scabbers is there. And like says, look after your pets, Ron. Um, whereas this is like just complete shock and like she says, Ron, it's covered. So it's like, what? It's, it's really nice. And there's no, there's no bit where like Hermione's like saying, oh, I think you owe me an apology and everything. I don't like that being in the movie, guys. Um, they're two at each other, they're two at each other's throats, I feel like in the movie, Ron and Hermione. Not that, the thing is, Hermione is barely in the movie, uh, if, if, you know, as, as in actually important moments for her. She's definitely taken a back step when it comes to her importance in this movie. In the movie, I should say. Or in the book, obviously she's she's in a lot more, you know, largely being exiled by her friends. But uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely prefer the way that this scene is done. And it's basically cut off straight away before they can even have that discussion with the, the group, uh, Fudge's group uh, and Dumbledore, of course, approaching the, the house. And so the hut, I should say. And so they sneak out. Scabbers is going berserk at this point. Um, and yes, as as they are uh, leaving uh, and Ron's desperately trying to hold on to Scabbers, they hear what is essentially the job. And yeah, Hermione likes it. I can't believe it. Um, there is no tease where Hermione likes it, like looks into the forest and says, oh, I thought I saw... Oh, never mind. Very interesting, that guy's very interesting, and the, the one of the, I think the first one of my very first notes in the next chapter is the fact that they hear uh, howling, wild howling, and think, "Oh, that's Hagrid." 
Um, I'm wondering, I, I, I'll be interested to see who, who, if the wild howling is something different than we actually think it is. Because the way that the movie at least suggests with time travel and everything is that butt break being saved always happened. Because Hermione and Harry are well, actually going on what happens to Ron in the book. He's definitely not going to be blooming taking. My God, we'll get to it, guys, next chapter. Um, because future Hermione and Harry always did go back in time. And so there is never a reality in this timeline where Buttbeak wasn't saved. So that means that that howling needs to be explained. Now, I don't think that howling could be... It can't be Lupin. No, it can't be Lupin. That, what I'm saying is, in, in the way that the movie portrays time travel, that howling cannot be Hagrid uh, in remorse. Not remorse, that's not the right term, is it? Mourning. Uh, that cannot be Hagrid mourning uh, Buttbeak's death. Unless time travel works different than I thought it did in the movie. Because in the movie, like I say, my headcanon and my understanding of time travel is that Buttbeak was never executed. And we see at, at the distance, we do see the distance, uh, the executioner chopping down, but we don't see Buttbeak there. And then later on, when it turns out that Buttbeak's been set free, the, the executioner frustratingly goes, ah, oh, chop, and chops a, uh, I don't know if he chops a pumpkin in half. I hope not, very rude. <laughs> it's definitely some veggie. Um, so yeah, in my head count when it comes to the movie is that Buttbeak had never and has never and will never have been executed in the timeline. It'd be very interesting to see if that, if that is not the case in this. Because that howling, if that is Hagrid mourning the death of Buttbeak, completely changes how time travel works for, for this universe, at least for me. I thought this was going to be the shorter of the two chapters, guys. <laughs> but I've really enjoyed discussing it. Wanted to give my thoughts on the uh, on those lessons. I'm so sorry about the tangents about uh, Red... Not Red Dwarf. About Star Wars and stuff. Um, but you know what I'm like at this point. I do try to keep these videos shorter, though. I'd be amazed if we hit five hours this time. So let's get straight on to uh, chapter 17. Cat, hat, and rat. That's not what it's called, Veggie. Why, why the hell did you just say cat, hat, and rat? It's called cat, rat, and dog. I'm an idiot. Okay, so as always, thank you, Jonas, for the wonderful side panel. And here is Raider Max's um, summary of uh, cat, rat, and dog. <coughs> Buckle up, folks. This is long one, lol. The trio stand stunned in disbelief over what happened. Before they can process that what the event... Uh, Prevent, uh, process the, the events. Scabbers again furiously tries to get out of Ron's hand. Harry notices Crookshank heading towards them and Scabbers jumps out of Ron's hand. Ron chases after the two the two animals as the two, two chase him. I like that line because it does kind of sound like it, that Hermione and Harry are animals as well. Ron chases after the two animals as the other two chase him. <laughs> Ron gets Scabbers back into his pocket. But as he does, a black dog comes bounding out and knocks Harry over. The dog grabs a hold of Ron and drags him off as Harry chases after them, but is stopped when he is bashed in the face by the Whomping Willow. The dog takes Ron into the base of the tree, um, tree breaking his leg and disappearing underneath. Horrible. Um, not, not knowing what to do, Harry and Hermione see Crookshanks appear, appears to, to hit a, a knob, a knot, sorry, uh, in the tree, stopping all movement, oh, stopping all movement of the tree. They head down the tunnel, not knowing where it would lead, but after a bit, they see light and head, uh, into an abandoned room, and they realise it's the Shrieking Shrack. Uh, the room looks like it's been torn apart by ghosts. They head up the stairs following the drag marks and kick open the door 
to find Crookshanks and Ron. Ron tells them that it was a trap and the dog was actually black who was and who's an animagus and is standing behind them. Black disarms Hermione and uh, Ron and Herm uh, Harry and Hermione. Uh, Hermione and Ron hold uh, Harry back before he could attack Black as Ron stands on one uh, on one friggin leg and tells Black that he'll have to kill all three of them if he's going to kill Harry. Strangely, Black ignores him and tells him to sit sit before making his leg worse and that there will only be one death tonight. Now, I've got in my notes that it's murder. Because in the, in the movie, it's I'm pretty sure in the movie it's death as well. But at least in the audiobook that I had, I'm certain it, I I know that it, that that, uh, that in my version, Black actually says there'll only be one murder tonight, which definitely I know there isn't a big difference, but they're definitely it's more exact, obviously, and it's it's definitely brutal as well. But then again, this entire chapter is more brutal, guys. So Harry emotionally bursts out at. At Black and physically attacks him. Black gains control after wrestling around a bit, claiming that he that he's waited too long for this. Before Hermione, uh, before uh, both sorry, both Hermione and an injured Ron join the fight, helping Harry. But Crookshanks joins uh, Black side after a brawl worthy of Monday Night Raw, uh, which is a WWE thing. And uh, Harry has his wand are. Uh, Aimed at Black's heart, Harry accuses Black, uh, and Black uh, accuses, and Black admits that that he killed his parents, but claims that Harry doesn't know the whole story. Crookshanks protects Black by jumping on his chest, and Harry contemplates taking out the cat as well as Black. Uh, Harry hesitates for a while, and they hear someone downstairs, and Hermione sh yells for help. None other than the Professor Remus John Lupin. Uh, comes bursting in and disarms everyone. Uh, confused, uh, confusion happens as, as not only does Lupin ask a strange question, where is where where is he serious, but also Black's response is pointing to Ron. Lupin picks uh, Black up and hug, hugs him. After an upset Hermione, then exclaims that Lupin was was uh, a friend of Black's, helped him into the castle to kill Harry, and was a werewolf, but only one of the, only, only right on one of the three. <laughs> he com compliments her uh, on figuring it out and informs the, that, informs them that the staff already know, hence why Snape made them do that essay. Lupin gets uh, the free, it's very interesting that Lupin knew about the essay, I mean he would do, wouldn't he? Of course he would. He probably asked the students in the next lesson. Lupin gets the, the free. Actually, he would have been the one marking it as well, presumably. Yeah. Lupin gets the free to listen to him and puts away his wand and tells them he found them using the Marauder's map and he was Moon, Mooney, one of the creators. After further explanation, it comes to a shocking reveal that Scabbers is not a rat but an animagus. I'm so sorry, by the way, I say that. And. The one believed to be, a, be, be dead, Peter Pettigrew. Thank you very, very much for for your summary, Max. Thank you again, Jonas, for these wonderful side panels. What a time to end a chapter, as well. I mean, when when we watching the scene, I had to stop. I had to stop when Snape came in because Snape hasn't come in yet. So yeah, it's it's quite a. And the, the Peter Pet. Oh, no, no, actually, uh, re, uh, Sirius has just said that it's Peter Pettigrew. Uh, and it's asking for him to come out to play just as Snape comes in. So that, that's where rewatching the scenes uh, um, ended for me. But now we go into my notes for um, for cat, hat, and rat. That's not what it's called, Veggie. Cat, rat, and dog. I'm an idiot. Anyway. Um, so yes, the, the three hear wild howling, and they uh, presume uh, Harry like says Hagrid like that. Um, I've already discussed that. It, that makes a big difference. If it is Hagrid, that makes a big difference to what I believe time travel is like in in Harry Potter. In in my in my uh, opinion, time is set, and Harry and Hermione 
have always gone back in time to save Buttbeak, so at no point has Buttbeak ever uh, ever been executed. It would be very interesting to hear what this an explanation for that howl. It really really will. Um, Crookshanks comes along and Hermione's like saying, "Go away, go away, Crookshanks!" And Scabbers is just going completely bizarre, and uh, Scabbers actually does escape Ron's grip. And I've got my note. I'm going to read my note here for Baton. Ron exposes himself to give chase. Now you know what I mean. It's because they're under the invisibility cloak. So he's exposing himself to not being invisible anymore. You're the ones with a dirty mind. Not me. He manages to catch him. Um... Of course, Scabbers isn't in that scene. Scabbers is so weird. Was Scabbers actually needed at all in the movie? It's just like a bit of comic relief, really, around Ron, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, the, 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 I mean, I still don't know the explanation of Scabbers. Even, uh, not Scabbers, sorry, Crookshanks. And so this is the bizarre place that we leave this chapter. Um... Do, 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 do. Ron exposes himself. Uh, the dog arrives um, r r arrives out of nowhere. And in the movie, Ron, weirdly enough, says, It's the Grim! That's a strange thing for him to say. Because a Grim doesn't attack you, does it? That's a good point. At no point have we heard about a Grim turning up and then tearing the person who's who's been cursed. Um apart and so in the movie he says it's the great run in his typical movie ron voice which is so different in here guys uh, he, the, the whole ron ain't here at all this is fluid hardcore ron the fact he's got a broken freaking leg like um like max said which i believe is a reference to a wrestler guys there is a wrestler called kurt angle Arguably the greatest heel of all time. Fant uh, his original heel run was amazing. Um, sorry, bad guy run, I should say. Um, but he famously won the Olympics with a broken freaking neck. That's the way he always says it. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, he won gold wrestling. Um, da -da -da -da, dog, dog, dog arrives out of nowhere. Ron gets uh, gets dragged off as always. Um, Harry gives chase. And it's very fascinating, guys, because it, it says that he's like knocked knocked in the head. And he's trying to see through the blood. Now, sure, uh, the movie's got a bit of a like dry scar there, but here he's like he's got blood in his eyes. Hermione's like calling out in pain as she falls to the ground. This is brutal, guys. This scene is this scene is violent. I'm I'm not surprised that they changed it. I am a little bit surprised that they made it so funny. I'll say that uh, it's it's definitely funnier in the movie than it is in the book, guys. There's no there's no humor to be had. Um, like, it's not like when Harry Knight says, that's not good, about, like, the, the, the um, uh, that was my David, uh, David? Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe impression. Um, even just him saying that's not good about the, the, the Whomping Willow is kind of funny. But then you have, like, Hermione and Harry, like, going, whoa, what an adventure we're having. Oh, man, my brother sent me a really funny video. I can't remember, I'm sorry, guys, it's like a guy, like, doing, uh, Typical English kids in 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 adventure movies. It's probably on YouTube. I'm gonna look. I, I, I want to try and get the name of it. It was actually very funny. Um, child actors in ad, adventure movies. I gotta say English because it's it, all British at least. British. Yes, there is. Okay, so if you type... Oh, it's got a million views. So you probably... So you, you may have seen this before, guys. But if you type into YouTube, British child actors, I'm hoping it's the right one. Yeah, it's like around a minute long. It is, yeah. And it's like all oh, these like, stereotypical lines. It says... Uh, it's like, like, I, can't, I can't do it justice. But it's by... Well, it's, it's been posted. I don't know if it's actually by this person. But it's been posted on YouTube called fin, Finlay Christie. And the video is called British Child Actors. And it was posted three months ago from this recording. 
and it's basically like this stereotypical lines and acting performances of of children of English children of British children I should say in um in, in like adventure movies and everything and it it's it's amazing. <laughs> he actually says Daddy Redcliffe in, in, in the uh, description. There's definitely a lot of Harry Potter references in there. But one of them, the, the, the bit which made me laugh the most. I mean, the whole thing is hilarious. It's actually a really funny video. But there's one bit where it's just him like going, Whoa! And that's so true. <laughs> it's so true. Like, in, like, in, like you know, kids like, like having to look a little bit worried, but not looking too, like, they're going, ah! Like that, they have to be going whoa, like that. That's that's essentially what this scene is like in in the movie, guys. Uh, I need to watch. Uh, you know what, guys? I'm I'm gonna pause this real quick because I need to watch this real fast. Oh, it's amazing, guys. It's a short as well. It's it's YouTube short, which I don't tend to to, to watch, but um, it's worth it. It's it's very good. But when you're going whoa, yeah, that that is basically what they did to this scene in the movie. Whereas in the book, it's brutal. Hermione's like got her like a a a a lacerate, not lacerate, like, a cut on her shoulder, and Harry's like bleeding from the face. Ron is trying to stop his leg from from getting dragged in, in, into the tree, and like breaks this. It, there's a loud snapping noise and breaks Ron's leg. Uh, sure, later on we have Ron in 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 in, in like in, in in the cast and everything, and like uh, you know, Dumbledore like puts his hand on his leg and goes oh like that. But imagine that scene, guys. And later on, it like says when he finds Ron, it says that his leg is in a strange angle. It's like oh my god. There's something that you don't want to look up, guys. In a video called Sid Vicious breaks his leg. That is a video video which you do not want to watch. There's a wrestler called Sid Vicious. Oh my god, I can't unsee it. It's horrible, guys. Uh, it's a wrestling botch, as they say, but it's brutal. Just jumps off the top rope. Psycho Sid. Psycho Sid? Was it? Would it be Sid Justice? No, it was Psycho Sid. And his le his leg just folds. Oh, God. I even talk about it. Stop talking about it then, Veggie. I'm sorry. If you're eating, I apologize. But this is brutal, guys. This scene is horror. This scene would be scary if it was book accurate. There is no joy to be had. There is no... Whoa! <laughs> so I keep doing that. <laughs> I really like that video. I need to watch it again in a second. Um, but anyway, that's that. So that scene is not fun at all. I've got written down right here. Uh, Ron, ha Ron, uh, I think he's I think he's using his leg to try and stop. Or maybe it, maybe Black is just dragging him straight through. Obviously, we know that Black is not completely... F uh, con con you know, his marbles aren't completely... There? I don't know. <laughs> when, when, when he is, uh, when, when he is the dog. Definitely not funny, I've got down here. Actually scary, yes. Uh, Hermione s suggests getting help, and Harry says that there's no time. Absolutely with Harry here. For all they know, Ron is dying now. And so, yeah. But, you know, Hermione, Hermione is scared, though. And and, and this is book Hermione, is that, that, that she is, like... I mean, in the scene that we're going to be coming up to, she, for a lot of it, she is just in the corner, just freaked out. And so I can absolutely see why they'll change some things like that. And Hermione saying that we should go for help. I, uh, yeah, In this case, he can't go for help. Absolutely not. So, um, as Black congratulates them later on. Um, Whomping Willow, much more dangerous in the book. Uh, can't get near it. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get near it. But like as soon as you get like an inch towards it, it's like swish, swishing straight at you. So this is like a barrier sort of thing. This isn't just like a tree trying to get revenge or anything or just like naturally swinging around this thing is this thing is serving a purpose at this point uh, and crookshanks makes the blooming tree stop which is something i mean the tree never stops in the movie obviously it just keeps on swinging and they just get incredibly lucky just fly straight into the hole um do they get lucky i think so uh, so yes, Crookshanks knows the cheat codes because he's friends with the dog I, again i got this question of why why would Unless Black knew that Crookshanks was was Hermione's, I don't know. We we shall see, guys. I'm in, I'm looking forward to learning. And Crookshanks leads uh leads them straight to what Ron in the uh, Shrieking Shack. Um, not not because in the book in the movie it's like Ron going Aah! like that. Not whoa. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's my favorite bit of that video. What's it called again? British child actors. 
it is uh, it's a short so it doesn't say how long it is but it's around a minute long um Yes, Ron's leg is at a strange angle. Let's not talk about that anymore. Right, uh, Black's description. So it like says how like, the skin is like stretched over his skull and everything. Yellow teeth. Um, it looks like a corpse if it wasn't for the, the glint in his eyes and everything. Uh, Expelliarmus is both Hermione and uh, Harry at the same time. I'm wondering, is that the first... Nah, this is going to be one of these things where I'm going to say something stupid. But I can't think of another time in the movies where that happens. Where it's multiple people at once. Hang on, doesn't that happen in, in Fantastic Beasts? No. Yeah. I, my, I'm, I'm having a brain fart, guys, and I can't remember a, a, a single spell affecting two people. But in a second, Lupin does it on three. Well, no, technically not, because Hermione's holding two of them. Anyway, we're jumping ahead. We're jumping ahead. <coughs> Hermione, hold on. Expelliarmus catches the wands. I do say here, so does that now mean that, that he owns them? But I'm, uh, the rules around uh, who owns the wands, you know, who is like, like the keeper of the wand, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, isn't it? Uh, I do speculate, would Harry have actually just straight up killed uh, Black at this point if he hadn't been disarmed? I think he would have been, because we have this wonderful internal dialogue here and external dialogue as well, um, which, you know, because the movie scene is, I mean, the movie scene is perfect. The movie scene is perfect, and it keeps at such a pace to work to make you think, oh god, any second anyone could get blasted. Um, so it, it was fantastic. It, it's fantastic how they did it. Um, because we have more time in the book, we do get this wonderful dialogue that comes out as well. So both of the book and the movie are just done perfectly, I think. Um, Hermione's holding uh, holding Harry back. Ron gets up and is leaning on Harry with one broken freaking leg holding him back as well. It's awesome. This is this is my this is my I'm starting to get a bit of an issue with um, this is nothing to do with the actor guys at all. But I'm starting to get a bit of when it's Ron always going oh Harry oh, like that all the time in the movies. I mean, Ron is standing on one leg with the other leg hanging down to try and protect his friend. That is freaking badass. And we don't have any of that. We, uh, we, I think we probably get... Oh, the, the chest thing was badass as well, of course. But Ron is a badass. And we don't see that much in the movies. Um, And this is just a... a I've, I've got no other word for it, guys. A badass moment for, for Ron. The fact that he has this broken leg and he's... Oh, God, he's seen so many... I'm not surprised he's passing out. Um, just amazing. A absolutely amazing. There's no... In this bit. Sorry. That's my Ron face. Uh, yeah, movie Ron. It, it, it's starting to be... Oh, it's a shame because in the book he's so cool at this point. But it's, instead we have, you know... It's still great. I really like comedy Ron. I guess that's the worst way of putting it. Comedy Ron that, that we have in the book, in the movies. Uh, but in the book, he's a badass, though. With his big feet. Um. <clears throat> Black tells him to... Oh, yes, so yes, like like uh, like Max said. Um, Black straight away like says, Lay down, you're, you're going to do your leg more damage. First teaser of Black Me a Good Guy, and that's and that's early in this scene, very early in this scene. The fact that we're thinking, oh, well, why, why, why would he care about Ron? Or is he is he mocking? Is he mocking the fact that that what he did to Ron's leg? It's like, yeah, oh, you're gonna damage it more if you do that. You know, it's very nice. It's very nice that we have that little subtle line there already saying, hang on, maybe Black actually cares about these guys. Good night. Uh, and like I say, I'm pretty certain that in my audiobook it said only one murder here tonight. There will only be one murder here tonight, which is definitely more accurate, but more brutal and again, scarier line. It actually is. Uh, Harry's goading Black about uh, only only wanting to uh, only wanting to kill one of them, and like says after all the Muggles, after what you did to all the other Muggles, what what's the matter? Gone soft in Azkaban. <laughs> Good line, very good line. 
Uh, Hermione uh, is desperately trying to calm Harry down. I do think... <clears throat> I guess Hermione is just desperate for uh, for to find a way out, and so is just trying to keep everyone from physically fighting, or you know, magically fighting. I should say, you know, actually fighting. I'm saying, so him, so her trying to calm Harry down is very interesting. But again, she she's looking out for him though, as as she's looking out for Ron and Ron. Um, and like, and Harry exclaims to her, "He killed my mum and dad." And just lunges straight at Black. I gotta say, guys, a lot of my notes now going on from this point are literally lines from the book. Because the dialogue in this scene is brilliant. It just is. And so I, it's a lot of quotes. Um, that Harry had forgotten about magic. Forgotten he was a short and skinny 13-year-old. And that Black was a full-grown man. All he knew is that he wanted to hurt Black as much as he could, and that he he didn't care how much he got hurt in in return. Right, I love it. I love it. Um, oh man, guys, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be blowing tearing up about I mean, quotes like that, but that is a descript. You can feel his emotion in that line. I think it's great. Um, I do question where Ron's wand is in the movie because I don't think that's that, that Black even disarmed him. He may have disarmed him actually, but it's certainly not shown at any point because uh, Black has Ron's wand in his hand as we get that wonderful moment in the movie where the camera. Like, uh, sorry, I'm I'm getting I'm confusing things. In the movie, Black is not holding a wand. In the book, he is holding Ron's wand, and so he's disarmed Ron, which makes complete sense. Now it's very possible that a movie. Sirius had disarmed him as well. Um, but then Snape comes in and Expelliarmuses and he doesn't get another wand out. I don't think he... I'm pretty sure he goes to pick up his wand after Harry blows Snape away. <laughs> to put it mildly. To put it drastically, I should say. Um, da -da 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 -da. Maybe it was the shock of Harry doing something so stupid, but Black didn't realize, raise his his wand in time. Again, that's Harry's mind. Because presumably, uh, Black is probably about to do that. Like, whoa, hang on. He must be. But but it's, Harry thinks that he's got the jump on on, uh, on on Black because he's doing something so stupid that that that, that he's uh, outpaced Black and Black can't get the, the wand up in time. So he's expecting to get blown away at this point. Um, Harry is. So yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Whereas I presumed, I mean, I don't, there is not a situation. I don't. He, Sirius definitely would have died before hurting Harry. Or well, not hurting, because he does hurt him in the book, in the book, before uh, killing Harry. Definitely. But we, we, to, we, to restrain Harry, he hurts him right here. In fact, Black grabs Harry by the throat. He's actually starting to choke him a bit. Not, not a full-on choke. I think he's just trying to restrain him, you know. And then this is line, guys. And I, I may have this wrong because I, I, I posted on Twitter briefly, and um, it, it says something like Harry sees Hermione's leg come flying in, or something like that. And that Ron jumps on uh, onto Black's wand hand, which is very interesting. It says wand hand, guys. I mean, wands can't be hand specific but it's just you know his his uh his dominant uh wand hand i guess it means by that and yeah so because of that guys all i can imagine is obviously harry like on uh, like on top of black getting choked and like um rod like wrestling around with with uh, with black's wand hand and then hermione stood up just kicking the crap out of <laughs> i got it so clear in my mind guys it's such a funny book hermione as well um, just like giving him, like just levering him with boots, and just I, I, I would pay so much money to see it. This is the moment which I was talking about at the start of the video, saying I would love to see this in the movie, guys. This moment, which I hope is going to be the HBO special. I haven't even mentioned it on the channel, have I? Serious, I should say. Uh, yes, I would love to see Hermione just kicking the, <laughs> just absolutely decimating series with 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 kicks. It does remind me of Bottom, and I've, I mentioned this before on the channel, guys, but my favourite sitcom of all time is Bottom. It stars the guy who who was meant to play, um, uh, oh god, oh, Peeps. Um, 
and Adrian Emerson is the other guy. But it's Rick Mann and Adrian, Adrian, Adrian Emerson. It's not for everyone, guys. It's extremely crude. It's about two absolute low lowlifes. They're the scum of the earth. Bottom, as in like B O T T O M. But it's my favourite sitcom of all time, guys. The performances in, in it are just so over the top. And there's lots of fight scenes. And the fight scenes are hilarious. And they're always, like, ridiculously over the top. And there's, like, there are ones where there's, like, people on the floor. And, like, Richie and Eddie, who are the main characters, are just, like, like, like kicking and everything. Like, throwing, like, ridiculously huge punches in and everything. And I just imagine this scene looking like this. With Marty just kicking the crap out of Sirius. I would pay to see it, guys. I love it. So, yeah, here I do speculate about the, the wand hand. I think it's the first time we've specific. I think it's the first time we've heard about wand hand, you know, but it can't be sensitive to which hand. I think that if you're if you're up against it, you would be able to put the wand in the in the other hand and and uh, and do it. I would be left-handed, guys. You know, I'm actually ambidextrous, kind of, as in I write with my right, but when I throw the ball for Woozle, uh, if I was to, to play badminton and everything, I would always be on my left. And so I think with wands, it'd definitely be left. I'm not sure if that was an option in Hogwarts Legacy. I'll have to look up. I, I, I think I've got it on the left, don't I? No. Anyway, let me know which hand you would be. Um, oh, I want to see that scene of Hermione just kicking the crap out of Sirius. The thing is, it doesn't say that she's specifically kicking, but it does say that, that Harry saw her leg, or at least her foot, come flying in. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, Crookshank stops Harry from getting uh, getting the wand. Harry tries to kick Crookshank. So Hermione's lip is now bleeding. This is a brutal fight, guys. Um, Hermione, a thirteen-year-old girl, like you know, I know there's two other guys, you know, thirteen-year-olds with her and everything, but she shouldn't be fighting like Sirius. Luckily, you know, Sirius is a good egg. We, we shall find out, hopefully, unless it's different in the book. Um, uh, once Harry does get the wand, uh, Hermione and and Ron like back off. And then we get the line, are you going to kill me, Harry? Uh, and I, and there's no laugh, there's no smile. Uh, at least the way that Jim Dale, which is the version which I listened to for this time, uh, he, he sounds exhausted as he's saying it. There's there's no smugness about it. And we discussed that line, either last time or the time before, where it it, it, it seems like Gary Oldman is really trying to play, play the line of I am a villain or... I'm insane, or I just don't believe that you'll do it. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's it's a very interesting performance by Gary Oldman, but here, um, it's it's are you gonna kill me, Harry? It's just like destroy, you know, in the same way that he was probably saying. Um, um, oh, one moment. Sorry, guys, that was my phone charger arriving. You know, what I said about the phone charger at the start of the, at the start of the video. That's been the nice arc of this um, of this video um, um actually you know what no <laughs> right so i'm sorry guys i'm a straight route um do 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 do. Uh, hermione's lips bleeding black uh, harry uh, hermione and ron back off are you gonna kill me harry uh no laugh or anything um you kill my parents i don't and he says you kill my parents in response to that, and and Sirius says, "I don't deny it, but I, I, you, you, if you knew the whole story, and this is one of those frustrating moments, guy, moments, guys, which we get in a lot of movies where you just, the guys, instead of just saying a sentence and summing it up, and in, in one moment where people at least back off and say, oh, hang on, there's something going on, they just keep saying, no, no, you have to understand, if you just let me speak, if you just let me speak, that's the one, that's the line which you always hear in TV shows, if you just let me explain." No, just explain. Don't say if you let me explain. There's that moment in Fantastic Beasts, and it's a, it's a little bit more understandable because obviously um, the way that the actor plays Newt Scamander plays him as autistic, and it and it, it it's definitely in the script as well. I think um, when he's trying to when he's trying to explain to Tina that he isn't engaged to uh, Alita Lestrange, Lita Lestrange, sorry, um, and he's like, and and he's just like. Oh, if, if, if I could just say... No, no just say you're not going to get married to and, and my reaction to that in, in the uh, Crimes of Grindelwald is like, just say it, Newts. But that's also because I love Tina and Newt, so... Anyway. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So like I say, guys, this is largely quotes going on. So, um, you never heard... You never... Oh, this line from Harry 
to, to Sirius. You never heard her, my mother, trying to stop Voldemort killing me. You did that. I love that line, guys, because that just shows how much the Dementor... Because obviously, I'm pretty sure that, that Harry has heard prior to this book, that, you know, her, his, his mother's screams. Um, but how much the Dementor has actually genuinely affected Harry. Like, you know, his psyche is actually really quite broken by it. The fact that, that he's saying, you haven't heard it. I have heard my what my mother react to what to what you did. Wonderful line. Uh, Crookshanks jumps uh, jumps on Black, uh, and uh, Black is actually trying to shove Crookshanks off, uh, which which Harry in his mind f f explains. He, he he what's what's the term? He he gives he gives himself Harry gives himself an explanation of why Black is doing that in in a moment, but not just yet. <laughs> Uh, so yes, uh, so inside Harry's mind, it, it says um, that that Crookshanks is in league with Black, and if uh, if it if it was prepared to die, trying to protect Black, that isn't Harry's business. Uh, if Black wants to save it, that only proves that he cares more about Crookshanks than he than Harry's parents. This is proper dark. This is proper dark side against Star Wars reference. Dark side um, Harry here, guys. Um, and I feel like that. I feel like it's been written in this way to show a comparison to what Voldemort did to Lily, being the same as what Harry is about to do to Crookshanks and Sirius. It's very good, guys, and it's it's subtle and it doesn't scream out. But there there is this moment where Harry has just said you about the time where where his mother was killed protecting him. And now he's thinking, I don't care if the cat's there, I'm going to kill that and black. It's showing that him and Voldemort... Is... There is comparison there. I'm not saying it's the same situation in the slightest, but there is a comparison. And it's essentially saying, it's basically putting Harry into the same situation that, that Voldemort was physically. Not, I'm not saying about backstory, of course. But yeah, that, that was very interesting. Um... There is a short pause though when Hatton Harry does, doesn't doesn't go to do anything and, and he just uh, I think it says that time slows down an extent and everyone's just panting and just like trying to like trying to like you know chill the situation and Harry, Harry there must be just a million things running through Harry's mind at this moment. Um, again, Sirius isn't just explaining, but in a way, uh, I you know what I do theorize that I feel like the reason why Lupin and Sirius don't bring it up at this point might be because as soon as they say because it could be Peregrine as soon as they say that Peter Peregrine is going to run there's no two ways about it that he's, that, that he's just going to sit there and think you know what I'm going to bide my time no as soon as they say Peter Peregrine is there we're going to kill it kill, kill him Peter Peregrine would attempt to flee so maybe that's why he's not just straight up saying Peter Peregrine there let's do it uh, maybe so yes, they hear uh, they hear noises downstairs, and Hermione immediately calls out to them, which is very interesting, guys. She she does assume that uh, that they, they are going to be a friendly, or maybe she's just hoping for all God's hope that that that, that, that it's going to be a friendly. Uh, Lupin then does arrive. Um, uh, Hermione's holding two wands, uh, and uh, Harry has has his his one back, obviously. And Lupin does one Expelliarmus and catches all three, which is pretty badass. Lupin's awesome in this scene, guys. I I do appreciate his approach to this scene. Um, and yeah, the first thing he says is, "Where is he, Sirius?" Good line. Good line. Completely froze. Reading that for the first time must have been. Hang on, wait, what? <laughs> that is a good line. Um, it's a big change compared to compared to the movie as well. But again, the movie scene is so fast paced and everything, which I just love. Um, and Sirius points at at, Bla at, at Ron. Sorry. Um, and Lupin says, "Why hasn't he shown himself until now? Unless, unless you switched, unless you switched without telling me." I'm, I'm looking forward to this context, guys, because obviously this whole setup has been very, very different. And so that the, the wonderful teases of, of the explanation, which I'm hoping is going to be coming pretty soon. Uh, he then lifts 
Black back to his face and and embraces him like a brother, as it words words in the book. Again, the in the movie, even Lupin, the actor is playing is is, is on the tightrope of. I, I'm a good guy in this situation, but I need the audience to understand that I that I, I that I am a threat as well. And so, just the way he like says, "Oh, Hermione Granger, you really are the great." Just he looks evil as he's saying it. It's just uh, the, the acting in that scene is just wonderful, guys. But here, Lupin is pretty much immediately starting to defuse the situation. I've got down here. Uh, Hermione shouts, "I don't believe it!" Uh, I've got, "I don't believe it!" Uh, says uh, Hermione Meldrew. People outside the UK may not get that. Actually, that, that, that's, not, that's not true. Because a lot of you guys say that you watch British sitcoms. I'd imagine that you mean, know what I mean when I say Hermione Meldrew. Right? When, when I say, I don't believe it. If you've seen Father Ted, you'd know it. If you've seen all, if you've seen all of Father Ted, you'd know it. Because there is an there is a episode with that actor on. Richard Wilson. Why wasn't he in Harry Potter? He should have been in Harry Potter. That would have been good. Yeah, he could have played. He could have played a Death Eater or anyone. Maybe he is. Maybe I'm just forgetting. Richard Wilson, Harry Potter. Oh, hang on. What? Wait, what? Richard Wilson is an English musician. No, he's not. He's an actor. There's pictures of Richard Wilson in some sort of robes and everything, but this cannot be Harry Potter. Unless, unless he shows up in the next thingy, Bobby. No, no, it doesn't look like in, in uh, Harry Potter. I was gonna say unless he's in the final Fantastic Beast, in which case I should not be looking this stuff up. Ignore me, guys. Richard Wilson is not in Harry Potter. So now I can get back to book review. I'm so sorry, guys. This is why these videos are so long. So this is where we have a big... This is a big change with this scene, guys. Just the way that Lupin approaches this situation is just so cool, you know? So Hermione's, like, going nuts. Like, yes, like, she's, like, horrified by the portrayal that, that she believes is going on in front of her. And, and Lupin is, like, saying, Hermione, Hermione, calm down. Um, and Hermione replies, I didn't tell anyone I could, I, I've been covering up for you. I love it, guys. I bloomin' love this dialogue. Um, which makes a lot of sense, of course, because she worked out long ago, didn't she? She says, isn't it obvious when she was in her first breakup with Harry and Ron in this book? Um, and she says, like, how, like, how she's been, how he's, how he's been, He's been helping Black into the castle, uh, and that he wants to kill Harry, and that he's a werewolf. That's that's the way that, she, that, that the werewolf flying is is said. Um, and Lupin's reply is so different. It says, uh, "Not up to your usual standard, Hermione. Only one out of three, I'm afraid." So so cool. And it and it does say like when when the werewolf flying is said, is that Lupin doesn't doesn't really react. It just only just says, says that that he that he just looks a little grayer than normal. Uh, but but he's not but he's not it's like he's not like annoyed at the fact that Hermione has said it, um, and yeah he says but I will not deny that I'm a werewolf. Uh, Ron tries to get up and Lupin immediately like goes to try and help it help, uh, help him or like you know, you know make sure his his leg is is supported and like Ron straight away says get away from me werewolf. It's so cool guys this is bringing back the prejudice and we're all just Ron Hermione. And, and Harry and the readers are thinking, ah, werewolf, bad. And that's where the prejudice of Lupin is just so freaking good, guys. But then again, Hermione didn't, though, because obviously to this point, she's been saying, I've been covering for you. So she doesn't think that because he's a werewolf, he's a bad person. But she knows that being a werewolf would be very bad for, 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 for him if other people knew. Um, but they are, like, the way that he says, get away from me, werewolf. It's not like, you are now a person to not be trusted. But obviously, obviously that, that's based on, on the other things that have happened in the scene as well. 
but yes, there is. I, I, I personally think that there is this hint of he's a werewolf. Okay, in that case, he must be bad and cannot be trusted, you know? And that's the heartbreak of Blue Pink, guys, you know? It's like, I'm pretty sure that he, like, says um, at the end of the movie that, that he expected it to happen and that, you know, people like him can't stay in one place for too long, you know? Won't stay, you know, get sh pushed out, essentially. Um... So yes, Hermione is actually known since the Defense Against the Dark Arts lesson with Snape, which is very good, guys. That was a that was a dramatic. I don't know. It was when when she got the essay, and so maybe it wasn't during the lesson, but it, but it was that area of time uh, when she when she had worked it out, and that was when, when Ron was still defending her and everything. Um, oh yes, yeah, so so yeah, Hermione like said, explains that 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 she's been knowing that that she's known ever since the the events against the dark arts lesson with Snape and Lupin's reply is oh he'll be delighted um he assigned that essay hoping someone would recognize my symptoms which is probably true i do still think that there is a small i do think that there is another reason i think the other reason might be because he wants to tool up um Harry and anyone else that may, may may be endangered by Lupin. So if the S hits the W or S hits the F. Yeah. Or either. Um that they will be at least a bit more equipped on knowing what to what to do then. If if they're caught in a bad situation with, with Lupin, um then they'll know what to do. Now, granted, the information that we learned in the Dark Arts lesson is about recognising the symptoms and understanding the difference between Animagus and uh, werewolves. Um, presumably, you can have an Animagus that is a wolf. Yeah, of course. Why not? And then, of course, you have the different, the other different type of character from... Um, from... Uh, oh, Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, but... but, 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 but. Lupin asks Hermione if she had checked the lunar chart to see if it matched up with it, with his illness, and she said, "Yep." <laughs> um, and that's uh, and and also that if she had noticed that her that his boggit was was a moon, and Hermione says, "Yep, I, knew, I noticed both of them." And so yes, Hermione is very uh, very very smart I guess is the best way of putting it and this is when we get the line of Miss Granger you really are the smartest witch of your age that I've ever met or something like that um, which I love I, I love that line um, yes you really are the cleverest, uh, cleverest witch of your age I've met I'm not uh, oh yes and, and Hermione actually replies to that line Hermione actually says I'm not if I was clever I would have told everyone what you are I personally see prejudice in this scene, guys. You know what? I've definitely had comments before saying that Lupin's story arc is essentially... When I spoke to my brother after watching President of Azkaban, we both agreed that there is a sense of potentially that Lupin is representing... I know he isn't, but representing the prejudice that homosexual homosexuals have had in the past and obviously still now although back in the late 60s it was legal in the uk um and since then i've had other people saying it is the shunning that aids uh people with aids uh historically got back in the day as well um i i and Judging Hermione here is rough because obviously she she said that 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 she could have told everyone and should have told everyone that he was a werewolf, but she still thinks that she that 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 Lupin is in with Black again. Lupin and Black have not just explained that uh, not just said in a short sentence. No, Peter Pettigrew is the one who did everything. Let's get. Him. But again, they don't want they don't want him to, to to run for it. So, anyway, that I love Lupin's character, guys, and there is that feeling of prejudice against him, which I, I just makes me love him so much more, and that's why I love Tonks so much as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty beautiful in my opinion. Uh, they already they already do at least 
the staff do. Oh yes, so, so yes, uh, Lupin s explains that that uh, that people do already know. At least the staff all all know, and that some of the staff were very reluctant w when it happened. I would imagine that isn't just Snape. I would imagine McGonagall would be up there as well. No, because she would have been his teacher. Would she? No, she would have prob. Would have McGonagall? No, it depends when he became werewolf, though. That's a good point. I'm hoping that gets explained. I'm sure it will do in the books, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, although he would have been called Mooney at school, though. Or at least when the Marauder's map was made, which may not have been at school. It probably blooming would have been. Wow, guys, I'm looking forward to find out, for finding out all, the, all this stuff regarding Lupin and the Well stuff. Obviously, no spoilers, though, please. Uh, there do, do, do. I wasn't sure this this was the case, but it definitely makes sense. Oh, yeah, that, 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 I, 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 that's me saying that, that I... I I didn't really know that was the case, but it definitely makes sense from a security standpoint, and also scheduling, like like loop, like uh, like um, Snape taking over the domestic starts lesson. That may have been written into the schedule at the start of term. Yeah, you know, the fact that at this point Lupin is going to be uh, unavailable, so can 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 you fill in? Um, Lupin is just explaining everything very very calmly. Um, he still hasn't given Harry the important information. Uh, he's like, you know, teetering on his part. But here's my note about potentially doing that because they don't want uh, Pettigrew to flee just yet. Attempt to flee just yet. Even if he's, even if he's a trapped rat, literally. Cornered rat, sorry, not trapped. Um, Lupin gives uh, Harry, Hermione and uh, Ron their, their wands back. And that is a... that That is the moment where the tension just completely starts to relax because it's like okay obviously there must be something more going on here um and lupin says that he he's, he used the map which is nice because i i didn't pick up on this in the movie at all but he he's been keeping an eye on the map because he's expecting uh black to make his move but then noticed what was going on with hermione ron and, and harry regarding Har uh, hagrid's hurt and then saw black and then saw pettigrew oh no saw pettigrew leaving with them from the hut it's it's cool guys and he explains why he was called mooney as well or that you know, he explained that he was called mooney and that he's one of the uh, marauders again this stuff never gets explained in the movie but but you guys filled me in on that sort of, sort of stuff like long ago Le padfoot uh mooney uh wormtail and tongs at no point is that exclusively explicitly explained at all uh, in, in the movies i'm 99 percent now i'm sure that is the case um, we find out that the, uh, that the map actually overrides the invisibility cloak, which kind of makes sense considering it's being made by, by, by three friends and one of them may be using the invisibility cloak during a, 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 some shenanigans. Uh, and this is when Pettigrew appeared on the map, uh, when, um, Lupin sees it. Both versions of, of that are great. Um, and and that and that's Lupin even saw a black like starting to attack them as well. And so I I, I really I think this is excellent. It, it's great to have this explanation because again the scene in the movie is so good and so high paced you just can't explain it. But to have that explained now it just makes complete sense now. And now I can now watch the movie again and thinking oh wow Lupin's keeping an eye on him at this point. Very cool. Presumably he's been keeping an eye on Harry for a long time. Um, Lupin very politely asks to see Scabbers to Ron. Um, and Black then does say that it is Peter Pettigrew. Um, at this point, there is no um, wait. I've done my waiting 12 years of it in Azkaban. That has not come out yet. I don't know if it will be in the next chapter, but I was, I was kind of surprised that, that hasn't uh, hasn't aired yet. Especially as Lupin has actually really diffused the situation at this point in, in the book. But... It's just wonderful, guys. Absolutely brilliant. Now, let's move over to the book club. This is going to be another chunky one, guys, but I don't think we'll push five hours, although the book club does usually take a while, and so let's get over to it right now. Okie okay, dokie, guys. So it's this time of the video game where we go over to the Harry Potter book club. Like I say, this is a blog which is uh, posted over on the Patreon, and you can like uh, leave your thoughts and so on. Uh, there are some rules and, and regulations that you have to follow, but they're usually quite laid back. I gotta say, this time I have um, had a couple of uh, 
a message saying that I need to uh, I'd be careful with a couple of comments guys and so unfortunately there will be one comment which I can't read and uh, one which I can only read the very start of I really am sorry for that for, for those who, who left the comment but I, I'm going I haven't read them but I'm going on uh, basically people's uh, like you know, what they recommend for it so the reason what for it apparently is that they might mention stuff that happens in future chapters and I think the reason why this has happened is because Chapter 17 ends at such a big moment that it's hard if you're reading through several chapters at once to really remember what's in what's in which. And so I'm sorry if I'm not able to read your, your comment out here. Um, but uh, yeah, so if I'm wrong, we'll read it next time. But if not, we'll, we'll be covering it anyway. If it, if it is covering stuff in the future chapters, then, then we'll be covering it in the future anyway. But I just wanted to say that now. And so... Um, let's get going and so uh, like I say guys you can leave your comments here and uh, and I read them out in the video you can reply uh, with spoilers because I never read the replies and so I only ever read the, the comments at the start at the top and so if you want to have a discussion with the person that's left a comment you can do that being said guys if you ever don't want to have a discussion with people when it comes to giving your thoughts in, in these videos you can DM me on the uh, direct message me on on the patreon and so I can read out your summary there without the worry of people replying to you if, if if that's a concern to you so i'm gonna have a quick little bit of hot chocolate a couple of book clubs ago i decided that we're not going to be rushing the book clubs anymore because at one point i was trying to get them done because it obviously takes quite a while but because of that i was becoming exhausted and so i think if we just take them relaxed and it gets completely when it gets finished guys this video is already over two hours long That's the two hour alarm goes. I don't know. I don't I've no, I've no idea if you could even hear that. Um, but let's get started with Jacob's comment right here. So um, this is my favorite book. However, as a teacher, this chapter is really frustrating to me. Hermione exam timetable is 9 a.m. Arthamancy and 9 a.m. Transfiguration core subject. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, 1 p.m. Charms core subject. 1 p.m. Ancient Ruins. This means no student would be able to take the Ancient Ruins and Arthamancy exams because all students have to take the Charms and Transfiguration exams. Is the, now you, you probably know this better than me, Jacob. But is there a possibility that we only hear about the exams that? our heroes are taking and there are duplicates of those exams happening at, at other times for example i think this might hmm. no because that's not a core subject because if it is as it is written here the core subject lessons transfiguration would have everyone from the year in in that one exam and I know that is how a lot of exams are run, but these are practical exams. So I'm wondering, just because the way it's written, we don't hear about the fact that there are other what others of these exams running, but for Gryffindor... No, you're right. <laughs> it, it doesn't... I'm, I'm trying to rationalise it, but yeah, that uh, that is a tough one, actually, yes. Um, we also know students like Percy must have had full timetables like this. So do they all have time turners? It's a possibility. I mean, th th there's no reason to not assume so. When Percy was giving Harry advice, he didn't say anything about choosing, you know, scheduling and everything. Um, I just wish a little more thought was put into why Hermione needed one of her timetables one as her timetable does not make sense from a school viewpoint Jacob I can understand you being a teacher that must be very frustrating that that must be just absolutely so obvious to you and yet to like schmucks like me and, and, and other people it's just not something which which we really thought about but because it's it, because it's significant to your job that's very interesting. You know what? These books, from a teacher's perspective, must be fascinating. Because we talk about, you know, professionalism a lot, guys. I'd imagine, Jacob, you agree that Hagrid should not have been doing that exam. Um, but then again, that exam itself must have been predetermined that it was just going to be Flubberworms keeping him alive. 
Well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe you changed it on the day. I'm not sure. Jacob, great comment. Great to hear from a teacher's perspective. Jake, what sort of system does Toronto use for the order of which people take the exams? Very good question. Well, I do speculate that she chose Harry last to, for, for the drama. Most likely to see the Grim. Feels very contrived to have Rom and then Harry at as the last two people to take to take it just before her trance. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's too bad. I mean, if Ron hadn't been the penultimate one, for one, we wouldn't have heard about his massive fate. Um, I don't think that would have changed that much if Harry, if if Ron had his, and then a couple of other people, and then it was Harry. Harry being last. Oh, how about this? How about this, Jake? Maybe Tronley did see a vision. She didn't know what it was and how it was going to manifest, but it was important for her to have Harry last in the in the exam. Ron, on the other hand, I'd imagine it's probably coincidence. Unless, oh, unless this is interesting. Unless she worried that they would tell each of t tell other students of what to do in the lesson, which Ron did. Ron told Harry. So maybe to limit it, they she chose Ron penultimate, so only Harry would hear. You just make stuff up, dude. Um, Neville being first because he would be sworn to secrecy because of the accident thing. Pravati wouldn't be telling anyone because Pravati can do it perfectly. So maybe Ron and Harry, the fact that they're not very perceptive to it. She chose Ron penultimate because she, he would only be telling Harry the cheat codes. And Harry last because she sensed that something important would happen because of it. Maybe. God, it gets you thinking these these, these comments, don't they? That's a great, great point, though. And yet, and yet again, with and yet again, we have Harry making up a prediction, but Big flying away, head head intact. Good way of putting it. And Trelawney is not only disappointed how heartless of her, but pe pe penalizes him for for what ultimately comes true, as you know from the movie. Well, I don't know if she spe specifically penalised him. She says at least she tried. So you, yeah, that, that would suggest that she's that she penalised her actually. She should retro, retro, retroactively award him marks, honours, once the news gets out. Trawley won't do that. Trawley will say, ah, if I hadn't given these marks and he would have done the bomb de blah, blah, blah. She, 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 she is not someone who's going to admit being incorrect in anything you know she'll take credit for things just happening coincidentally there is no way she's going to take credit that she's going to admit that she's wrong i don't think that's in, in her dna to be honest um at this point harry and ron are, are already more psychic than truly no wonder mcgonagall thinks so poorly of her well i I wonder if she, if Trelawney, if McGonagall does think poorly of Tr Trelawney, or of the subject itself. I don't. Much like Hermione, maybe McGonagall could never do it. Maybe she was never very good. This is getting into. To, to conspiracy now, but maybe McGonagall was never very good in divination. And so thinks it's all a, a bunch of waffle. Hermione, the same. Couldn't do it. But then again, Ron and Harry, it's in Jack at this point, in the book at least, in the movie he did. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> maybe, I mean, I... I, I Part of me almost feels sorry for Toronto because I do think that she thinks she, that she's doing it. But, um... And she gets a lot of stuff right, but then again, you... you, sp you what, what do they say? Like, a wide net catches a lot of whatevers? I don't know. <laughs> That's probably not a saying, but you know what I mean. She words things in a way where, um... Something bad will happen on this day. And it could be some horrendous, earth-shattering event. Or it could be that you break your pencil. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. Um, 
I like to think that she's not a charlatan. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much for your comment, Jake. Uh, Josh, I remember... I don't know why I'm shouting, sorry. I remember reading these chapters for the first time as a kid and being speechless at the plot development. They're, these are great chapters. The movie does a decent job here with a few obvious exceptions. I think that's fair. I think I think the room I think that all the stuff that is inside the Shrieking Shack is still nigh on perfect in the movie. But let's see let's see let's see your comp you see your points. Uh, once again, Ron and Hermione getting painted as though they hate each other, other other bickering about their argument are discovered is found. Not to mention they gave Hermione Ron's best moments at this point in the movie. Yeah, I mean, Ron's best moment. What the... You, you, you're going to have to go through us. Fine. I'd imagine that's probably what you mean, isn't it? Yeah. And, and the bickering, I just... It, at that point, I was kind of... kind of Bickering between friends is absolutely nat natural. But sometimes in a movie or in a, in a TV show, it can be so much where you think... There's no way these people would be friends. You know? Um, so, so the bickering after Scabbers was found... Um, yeah, it's weird. But then again, Hermione is barely in the movie as well. Maybe she's in it as much as uh, as the rest, but I, thinking back of scenes in Prince of Azkaban, I always do feel like she is a kind of background character in this until until the time turner. And that's when, because I, I like said in my movie reaction, well, she's been having this adventure this entire time, you know, it, it felt like she was detached. I know I shouldn't do this, guys. I wouldn't do that out, out and while out and about, but I ain't got a plate to put it, but put my uh, my spoon on, so I'm having to do that. I ain't got any snacks today. No, that's all right. That donut, I was, I took me way too long to eat last time. Not donut, cookie. Right. Uh, the backstory is just gone, which is frustrating because it makes sense of so much for both Lupin and Snape. Sadly, this tends to get worse with, with, with the fu future movies. Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see that in the in the next, but in the next chapter. Josh, thank you so much for your comment. It's great. Catherine, I love how Hermione looked flattered by Ron. I know it's great, stating that he didn't know what was going on with her. It's pretty cool. And if if he'd said that before the exams were out of the way, I think her reaction may have been slightly different. You know, but then again, she would. I don't think oh, she probably. I don't think she would have gone off if the exams weren't over. I feel like the exams being over was a big a monkey off Hermione's back, as they say. Also, the movies um, butchered the, the brilliance of Ron. <laughs> Looking forward to this. No, he is brilliant. He has always been my fave of the trio by far. Who's your cur cur who's yours currently of the trio? Okay, no, you're right. Uh, it's comedy, Ron. It's comedy, Ron. It's comedy, Ron. That's what Ron is in the movies. He's the um, yeah, and I do feel like they did that to allow Hermione to be more competent. Is definitely not the word because she's incredibly competent in the book, particularly this one. Um. To be more stereotypically brave. I think it's probably the better way of putting it. But I don't think you should ever, particularly when it's from a, a, a another source, guys. Like like from the books, I, I mean. You should, to make someone more mature and braver and not crying all the time and everything. If your only way of doing that is to take away from another character, that's where I have issue with. Ron getting to his foot to protect Harry, I'm, sh I'm sure that's what that previous comment was referring to. Um, that's so badass, guys. It really is. Uh, right. So, uh, so Ron has always been your favorite. Uh, your favorite from, from the trio in the books. Who's my current favorite out of the trio? The thing is, is that I'm really enjoying this version of Hermione. And she has gone through it, this book. Uh, I'm going to say for this book, it's Hermione out of the three. But that could change by the end. And obviously we do our favourite character at the uh, uh, at the end of each book as well. 
Uh, out of the three, I think Hermione. I really draw, I, I appreciate the efforts that she's gone to in this book, despite you know the fact that she's willing to hurt to, to end her friendship with people just to make sure that they're safe. It's cool. Particularly the bit where she basically says to Harry, Harry, if you use that map to get to Hogsmeade, I will go and tell McGonagall. It's like, jeez. Just straight-faced. Knowing that, that Harry's going to hate her more because of it. I think she's great, guys. Right. Thank you so much for your comment, comments, uh, Catherine. Dara. What do you think of Crooks, Hermione's cat? Looks... I love how he sees through superficial things. Also, Harry, Harry, you attacked a teacher from the film, and Harry killed one. Oh, okay. Well, that's on the film. Okay, so that line doesn't happen in the book, is what I'm, I presume you're saying, Dara. That's a good point. Well, he did. He kind of. He kind of didn't kill. Um. What the heck, Quirrell, did he? I, I don't think he did technically kill Quirrell. I feel like Quirrell killed Quirrell. It's a Brett screwed Brett reference. Um, um, yeah. It's a great point, though, Dara. Um, I don't know about Crookshank's stuff. Still, Dara. And so I, 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 I'm, I, I'm hoping for a little bit more explanation. I'm sure it will happen in, in, the, in the coming books. Again, we, we left this chapter at such a bad point. But he's clearly defending Black, who I know is obviously uh, not a, ro a wrong one. So thank you so much for your comments. Anna Murray? Um, I love learning the Marauder's backstory and the real history in it. it. I feel it actually rounds Lupin, James and Sirius and Peter's personality. Well, so far we've only had Lupin and I completely agree. It, it really, it, that was so, that started the ball rolling, you know. A lot of other people would think, oh, Mooney, so that means that there's three others. Who are the other three, you know? It's very clever. Hmm. Okay, Flor Florin, um, I have been advised, and I, I apologize for this, I have been advised to only read the start of your comment. I am sorry if that is incorrect, but I did get a, a second opinion, and both of them said, it's not intentional, but you may be mentioning stuff that, that, that will happen in future chapters. So I'm only going to read the start of, of, of your comment, if that's okay, which I have on a separate thing over here. So, um, Veggie, what do you think about Sirius... Uh, about serious portrayal in 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 the book versus the movie. Um, Gary Oldman's performance is amazing. It is brilliant. That, but the book we just get so much more time. And when like when he's like saying I, I've been waiting twelve years for this or whatever. I've been waiting so long for this, I'm sorry, he says in the book. I feel like they got the appearance pretty spot on. He, I think in the book he's meant to look a little bit more zombie-esque. Um, just because of the, just the stress and everything, obviously. Uh, the voice the voice does specifically say that in the book uh, that it, it, it sounds like he hasn't used his voice for a long time. That's not really there. In, in the book, his voice is crackling a bit, but I would put that down to him just being mad more than anything. Or, you know, what I believe to be mad at that point. Um, I think that Gary Oma did a fantastic job. Uh, I, 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 You know what? I need more of this scene. I need more of this scene. The fact that he's worried about Ron's leg and everything, I think it's just brilliant. That's our first glimpse of, hang on, is, is he a nice guy or is he mocking Ron or... Is he just doing it instinctively? It's very interesting. I think they're both brilliant. And I'd love to he hear your thoughts, but I can't... I, unfortunately, I've been advised not to read the rest of your comments. I'm sorry about that, Florian. Uh, but hopefully we can cover uh, y y your, your, the rest of the, your, 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 me your message in, uh, in the next video. So there's that. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, Stephanie! Hi, Veggie! I love the book clubs! Thank you very much, Stephanie! Just for some context from the previous chapter based on your reaction, the reason... Oh, here we go. <laughs> the, the reason Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff are so happy Gryffindor won um, the Quidditch Cup is because Slytherin had won it about eight years in a row. 
And after the previous match, Slytherin is in first place with Gryffindor in second and Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff no, have no hope in winning. It, but they're trying... They're tied to slipping hole in the cup for so long. You know what, Stephanie? That is brilliant information. Thank you so much. I feel like the book could have done more to make that unequivocally the case. Because at the end of at the end of Philosophy Style, we don't hear. Oh, and Slytherin apparently won the Quidditch Cup again. And at the end of the Ch Chamber of Secrets, we don't hear, Oh, turns out the Slytherin won the... So that means that Draco has a... They're one and one, guys. Draco and Harry... Now, Draco would have been out with injury for a while. In Chamber. As, w as he was this year as well. But Draco would have been on the team when they won the Quidditch Cup. There should have been a moment late in... in it would have had to have been very late. It would have had to have been, like, as they're leaving the school, where Draco smugly is talking about how great he was in the Quidditch team how because Slytherin won. I feel like Snape said to McGonagall. I'm pretty sure that McGonagall said that Snape has been mentioning the fact that they've been winning so many so, so long. No, I feel like Snape was mocking Gryffindor rather than saying that Slytherin had won so many times. So I'm not sure how how often this is been explained. But for me, I didn't pick up on that, and it was very possible that that is my fault, guys. I I, I struggle to take in information a lot of the times. Uh, but I do feel like they could have made it absolutely clear. Like, maybe even in, in this book, like, saying, leading up to, to the Quidditch final, saying that, that that Harry doesn't want to see um, Draco, like last year, being smug about being on the team that ended up winning the House Cup. The, the, the House Cup. Quidditch Cup. I always make that confusion. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry that, that, I, that I missed that, because that is crucial, and that does... That does negate a lot, probably a good hour of the last video of me ranting on like an idiot. I'm sorry, guys. I I, I know I keep apologising, but I, I want these videos to be how you like as well. And so, um, and I never want to come off as being nasty, like ever. Um, apart from when Hufflepuff lose. So that's great. Thank you so much for, for, um, for that info, Stephanie. I've always liked thinking it's a true sport rivalry and not because Slytherin are the evil house and Gryffindor are the hero house. It's like once the other two teams are out of the race, they just want to see someone new win to shake up the games. Well, I, that's how I always do it. Uh, during the NFL, guys, um, uh, or, no, I, I would absolutely back the Cardinals, yes. So in the NFL, guys, the, the Rams are in a division with the uh, the 49ers, who have obviously won Super Bowl many times. The Seattle Seahawks, who have won it a couple of times since I started watching, in fact. Um, I think that was their first well, uh, uh, NFL championship. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was. Oh, what success a, an expensive stadium, which is designed to make it unfair for the other team, guys. We'll get you. <laughs> you can see where it's coming from now, guys. I don't like the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. They have a stadium which is purposely designed to make the, the game unfair for the uh, visiting team. But that's a side. Sorry. Um, so, yes, they've both won the championships. The Cardinals, I'm pretty sure, have not ever won the, 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 the uh, uh, Lombardi Trophy, which is the uh, Super Bowl championship. Um so, but and and if they were in in the in the NFL, I, if they were in the Super Bowl, I absolutely would want the Cardinals to win. But then again, I really like the Cardinals. I very I was very nearly a Cardinals fan when I when I when I signed up to the Rams, <laughs> the year that the Rams went one and one and uh, fifteen, sixteen, one and sixteen. They won one game all season. It was the first year that I started to support them. And then last year, they blooming won the Super Bowl. I was a happy bunny that night. 
Um, so yeah, uh, and and you're right with sports rivalry. Like, um, what's a famous sports rivalry in? Um, it's like 49ers Cowboys. There's no good guy, bad guy in that. In fact, I'd say they're both bad guys in <laughs> those teams. I'm sorry if there's any Cowboys fans. I know they're very popular. They're the most popular team in the, in, uh, in the NFL. Hmm. Not as popular as Manchester United, though. Oh, actually, probably they probably are now, because Manchester United have gone off the boil, haven't they? I mentioned Manchester United because uh, Spike from Buffy mentioned it last episode. <laughs> they're very in a very English little bit of dialogue they had. So, Stephanie, this is a great comment. I love Crookshanks in the book. I get way, I get why they didn't want to bother with getting a, a well-trained cat, but I just love seeing the pieces, um, pieces come together and how involved Crookshanks becomes in the next two chapters too. Interesting. Can't wait for you to reach the end. This is one of my favourite adaptations despite the differences difference and i can't wait to hear your opinion stephanie i still think prince of azkaban is fantastic the thing is guys when it comes to discussions discussions are often about things that you don't like as much like i could like i could say you know I love the scene where I love the scene in the movie where this happens. But when I feel like the book did it better, there's a lot more discussion. And so sometimes it may sound like I'm talking down on the movie. I still love the movie, guys. And it added in some absolute cracking stuff. You remember um I'm pointing over there as if it's, as if it's there. Actually, Bloomin' is, because that was in Oxford, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. The bit with the toads uh, at the start. Powerful, powerful, but toil and trouble. Tr I'm getting the lyrics completely wrong there. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Somewhere, something th this w this way wicked comes. You know, the song. What an addition, guys. And that is not in the book. That, that Whoever made that decision is a genius. That should have been the tune for Harry Potter. That should have been in all the rest of the movies. It's about the um, the witches from Hamlet. Are they witches or are they hags? The only version, not Hamlet, Macbeth. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm actually not up on my Shakespeare. This is my brother is because he's an English teacher. Um, but um, the only version of Ma uh, uh, of Macbeth I have seen, and I didn't realise it was. Uh, Mm. Throne of Blood. Uh, I was watching an old Japanese uh, black and white uh, samurai movie. And I was enjoying it, guys. It's quite creepy. It's quite dark. It's all about... Uh, it's it's very creepy, actually. What year is it from? Throne of Blood is, is its name. And it was from... It was not from 1948. There is no way. 1957. There we go. That's a little bit more doable. 1957 Toho movie. I was thoroughly enjoying it, guys. Really, it's very, very creepy. And it's and and there's a scene where like it has three spirits. Japanese Japanese have a lot of spirits in their in their um, in their fiction. Uh, and I was I was thinking, oh, that's, that's a little bit like the the, the, the witches from Macbeth, because I've seen like Blackadder and things like that, which have the three witches and everything that 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 uh, tell Macbeth that he will be king and everything. Um, and so I was thinking, oh, this, that's that's interesting. It's quite similar to that. And I think I was talking to my brother, and I said that there, there were these scenes which reminded me of uh, of what I know about Macbeth. But then uh, spoilers for Macbeth. I'll say it certainly, but but then. But yeah, uh, but and I was saying to my brother, but but then like loads of uh, loads of trees start to, to 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 start moving, and that was just weird. And my brother said, no, that is Macbeth. <laughs> that is literally what you watch was Macbeth. And so I was watching a movie called Throne of Blood from 1957. That's good, guys. If you like your old movies and you're okay with subtitles, which I was, I, I am as long as I'm able to pause, you know, um, it's good. But I didn't realise until after I'd finished it that I was actually watching Macbeth. <laughs> Just the Japanese version of it. So I don't I don't know much about Macbeth, but I know that. I think they are traditionally known as um, witches, but uh, they might be hags. I'm not sure. 
Either way, that's enough about Macbeth, guys. I'm sorry, I'm getting so... Are we still on Stephanie's comment? I'm so sorry, Stephanie. I'll cook tracks in the book. This is one of my favourite adaptations. Yeah, no, absolutely. The movie is still brilliant. And I, 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 I really do hope that when I'm waffling on about stuff, um, that I don't seem too... I don't think I did come off as too negative, guys. I, I, I actually don't think I am. You know what? I'm brilliant. <laughs> yes, I'm an idiot. Almond milk, hot chocolate completed. What did you have for lunch today? You know, I, brilliant. Guys, in this late stage in the videos, I like to put in a little Easter egg. <laughs> in a way, if you had an Easter egg for lunch, let me know. Um, a little thing where uh, when you make a comment on this video, I want you to start by saying something, but without context, you know. And so this time, I want you to start your comments with whatever you did or are or are planning on having for lunch i had oh I, I i pulled a strange face then <laughs> um, i had um uh there's a there's a shop in the uk called boots and boots do very good um it's like a pharmacy but they do very good meal deals for lunches and everything and so i got um it's very nice it's a vegan chicken style s chicken salad sandwich very nice. I had some uh, large hula hoops. I thought they were normal ones, but it turned out they were large. I prefer the small ones. Uh, I don't know if they have hula hoops anyway. They're like cr crisps that are round and you can put them on your finger, pretend they're rings. If you're bored. <laughs> and um, and a, uh, a Alpro, I'm doing an advert here, a, a, a vegan yogurt. Uh, peach. And that is, and a few crisps. But no, 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 no those are hula hoops. Oh, and I had a coffee mocha in a bottle. So I've actually had a cold chocolate drink and a hot co chocolate drink back to back. Um, right, so let me know what you had for lunch in your comments, but do not give any context for why you're saying it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, let's move on. Maria? I would love to have seen um, a montage of the third year examinations in the films. Oh my god goodness that would have been good seeing ron laughing his head off as harry after the harry cheering spell exactly what i was saying earlier on watching the hilar hilarity of lupin's obstacle course um with the grindelow uh paddling paddling pool there we go and hermione's boggit again in by strokes back i know it was probably if you watch it by strokes back guys you'll know the moment i'm talking about <laughs> if you haven't seen it already i know it uh, was uh, probably a, a bit too silly to be shown near the end of the film but learning about these aspects of Hogwarts are my favorite things about the series again yeah Mar Marianne Hogwarts is is arguably the best character in Harry Potter so I completely agree with you there it would have been wonderful maybe for the HBO series um I would love I, I, would, I would I would also have proven pardon me hot chocolate it would also have been proven to the viewers how good Harry actually is at defense against the dark arts. Makes a lot of sense. With him achieving top marks for his exam, it proves how capable he really is. What is your favorite ex examination to hear about, Veggie? Great question, Marianne. I appreciate it. And you know what? You're right. You're right. We don't have many times where... Well, do we have any times... Where Harry, oh no, apart from the flying lesson in the first movie, where Harry is shown to be very good at a subject. Now I know in in class, I don't mean him being able to defeat his his boggart in the in the in the form of a dementor, you know, in extracurriculum. I mean actually in the class where Harry just happens to be the best at something. We don't get that because it largely is Hermione is the best at nigh on everything and i do not mean that as a bad thing guys that's part of her character but she's desperate for, for knowledge which is why i earlier on i speculated if she was actually like this before or if this is purely because of learning about uh, the wizarding world um yeah uh what was my favorite examination to hear about I mean, the assault, the assault course is pretty damn awesome. 
the cheering one was amazing as well. I'm gonna go with the assault course. I think this. I think. I think it's probably the same as you going on the rest of your comment, but I, I think it probably is. I the assault course, and also I love Lupin, but that would have been great. I mean, you know what? Having showing showing Harry defeat a bog. Uh, uh, nah, yeah, maybe. Showing Harry defeating a Dementor, a Dementor, in inverted commas, uh, at this point in the movie would have possibly taken away what happens at the end. And, you know, obviously we didn't have him taking it out what he thought was Dementors in the, no, that's different, in the, uh, in the uh, Quidditch match. No, that's, that's completely different. It's Draco and gang. Great comment, Marianne. Thank you so much for it. Embran, besides a bit on these chapters, which I don't really have much to comment on, next one for sure. This is a long comment for that because <laughs> you don't have much to say. Besides a bit, I start to. I, I'm not. I'm not criticizing. This is fine. I start with a, a remark on, of, of, on one of the things you said in a previous video prior to the book club. I apologize. I have to, to soothe your distress. Regarding regarding is a great way of putting it. Regarding Cho's broom and Ravenclaw, I don't take he, heated don't take heated coach or player comments like that to heart. It might seem as a, a reader as a reader cruel, but in my view, harmless pep talk for the team. I I guess that is possible, Embron. Yes, I with things like there's no way they're gonna win or that sort of thing. Yeah, um, I mean, surely during whatever team sport in real life, the coach says blatant stuff like that during training and before entering the field as well. Coach is probably not. Would a coach say, "Don't worry, we're gonna win this easy"? I don't know about that. Players, sure, I can see that. Hmm. I was thinking about a really interesting question about Quidditch recently. I cannot think of what it was. I came up with a conundrum, guys. Yeah. Because it's point-based, the first game of the season, two teams could agree to score a billion points each and then let one team win and give up those points in the final just to guarantee that they're going to be in the final because the fact that the points are overall um that's why in real sports you don't have that guys the fact that you know the overall points are are significant in fact that's why the blooming you know uh you know nfl the xfl is back which is um Vince McMahon's old thing i think the rock actually owns it now um, and I decided to get into it a bit because St. Louis have a team. And St. Louis is where the Rams used to play. And so I'm, I, am, I, I am a Battle Hawks fan now. And the reason why they didn't get through was it wasn't because of wins or losses. It was because of points scored and points taken in. It just seemed, it becomes very, very murky, you know. And so they ended up, what, 7-3 and three wins and losses. And a team that is 4-4 four and four is going through to the finals instead of us. You know, it's a bit weird. Anyway, I'm getting completely sidetracked. I'm sorry. Um... On means, on on meaning with serious. Honestly, that quite a mocking bit. I thought you'd come and help your friend, ending with making ev everything much easier. That's true. He does say that, guys. I, I actually removed that part of of uh, Max's um, intro actually, but he does say that that he knew that that he, that Harry would come and and try to help Ron. Um, and not go for help. That'll make things easier. That is a line that, that he says. Definitely has a sinister side to it. But obviously not. Uh, followed by there will only be one murder tonight. Thank you for confirming the murder thing. With an added grin. It's true he does grin. Shows his yellow teeth. Instead of Lupin say, saying it. So much. So much evil. Well Sirius does say it in the movie. But he says only one will die tonight. I believe so. Um, much more than the moment on the ground that left such an impact on you, Veggie. Yeah, it's true. Um, I don't mind it, guys, because 
the, the scene where Harry grabs uh, Sirius and shoves him down, and then we have Sirius basically laughing in Harry's face. Um, it makes it it gives you panic watching it, thinking, "Oh, what, hang on, why is he laughing? What's going on?" And then you have the it's a long zoom in camera angle, and then suddenly the door bangs open. It's beautifully shot. That whole scene, like look, you're looking up at Harry, then back down at Sirius, and then behind Harry is Lupin comes come ch charging in. It's brilliant. Um, it did have an impact on me. <laughs> I ain't gonna help me, Harry. That's my impression. Um, I always saw that movie moment as slightly deranged person mocking a child. Absolutely nothing more. But those lines, it it defines the psychopath Sirius is made out to be. Absolutely scared me as a child more than. Barty Crouch. You know what, Embran, I'm going to pause your comment right there. The reason why I, which I brought, which I brought up was, we know that Sirius isn't as insane as it actually is. So, he's not exactly doing everything he can to try and reassure Harry, because he looks incredibly evil in that shot. <laughs> it is a great shot. Do people find Barty Crouch particularly scary? I'd imagine they probably would do, wouldn't they? Barty Crouch Senior. Junior. Um Can't believe that. Um uh, what the hell's his name? Oh come on. Trigger from Only Bills and Horses. I saw him in a play. Um it's not Robert Llewellyn, that's Crichton from Red Dwarf. Come on, Veggie, you know this. It's a triple barrel name. Roger Lloyd Pack, there we go. I still cannot believe he's in Harry Potter, that's amazing. Um, I am completely lost. Much more than the okay. I always saw the moment slightly deranged person. Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Sorry about pausing your comment. Okay, removing uh, his cover or even Bellatrix, apart from Hermione's torture, grabbing Harry's throat, saying, "I, I, I waited too long for this." That's so true. The struggle, cat on on the chest. Protagonist wants to kill both. Man, talk about cinematic potential. Yeah, I mean, I still think the movie did it really well. Um, the longer a scene like this goes, the less tension there is in an action scene. You know. Um, so I I don't mind the the pace that they chose. The pace was electric in the movie. Um. The scene is brilliant in the book, though. I can't, I can't fault either. I cannot fault either. I think you're the only one that is distressed, distressed over you eating and drinking during your reactions. Thank you so much. It's hours on end after all. Yeah, you're telling me <laughs> because you are on camera and you raised like that. Um, it's be, be being rude. Don't. Let it bother you. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Embrin, yeah, I appreciate it. That's very, very kind of you. Now, the reason why I do say it is because I know in a microphone it can be a bit... You know, people have earbuds in and everything. They're hearing me go... Rah, 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 rah. It can't be that pleasant. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. That is very kind of you. Very kind of you to say. Uh, don't let it bother you. It's not like we can't understand your speech or stuff, stuff spraying. Depends what I'm eating. <laughs> how, how, have a good day. You sh you sure? Bright and mind, Embran. That is so sweet. Across last month, both of my grandparents passed away, so I especially needed that. Expect artwork from me in the future, and of course, one including Cornish Pixies. First YouTuber I created to do that for. Embran, I am so sorry for your loss. Both grandparents in the last month. Oh, man. I'm so sorry, Amber, and that must be heartbreaking. I I never knew my grand... My, 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 my granddads. They were both... They, they both died before I was born. But both my grandmothers... Um, both my grandmothers uh, passed away before I was... I think... I think... I, before I was ten, um, but to lose both so close that 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 is heartbreaking, Ember. And I am so sorry. I really appreciate this comment. I'm so glad that I can brighten your day. Um, 
I love the rest of the comment as well. It, it's so nice to throw these ideas back and forth like this, you know, like, and, and you're going over stuff in previous videos, um, like I say, and you make some fantastic points. I, I would love the artwork of the Cornish Pixies. You know how much I love Cornish Pixies, guys. They are my number one, I think. It's, it's, they're, they're more bow truckles, guys. It really is. Fristrals as well, but there's something just wonderful about the Cornish Pixies. Here's my Cornish Pixie collection. I do have to say, I do have enough parcels to do another book, uh, not a book, sorry, another, um, box, uh, uh, another gift opening. Um, so I might have more after that, but, um, because everything has been so quiet on the channel, I haven't really been, you know what, it's two things. One, I haven't had time to, to, uh, do, to do an unboxing, but also, I think it would be inappropriate for me to be posting gift, gift reactions whilst, like, not getting my Crimes Against Grindelwald video out, or getting these book reviews out, or doing other things on the channel, you know? It would seem a little bit, um, it would be bad form for me to say, hey, I've been sent all this stuff, but not be getting you the usual stuff at the time, in time as well, you know? So I know that people, people that, that we've, that I've read comments out of already, uh, have sent me parcels that have been you know, sitting downstairs staring me in the face, and I cannot wait to open up. I gotta say, I think I know which one. Well, I think I know what one of them might be. I got a theory. We'll talk about that in the video, but um, in the, in the video when, when I record it, hopefully that'll be sooner than later. Um, but yes, I love Cornish Pixies. I would love that picture, Embrent, only when you have time, of course. And I'm so sorry for your loss. That is uh, that is hard. Bless you. Um, and. Yeah, I, 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 I really appreciate this comment. You guys mean the world to me as well. It's the best part of doing these book, book reviews is, is hearing your feedback and your comments. Even if you're not on the Patreon, guys, just reading the comments on YouTube as well. But this means a lot. Thank you, Amber, and that's very, very sweet of you. Um, a Slim. Uh, you're likely to get a lot of people mixing things up in, in, in this book club. I know I certainly... come conflates the chapters in the shrieking shack in my head slim i'm sure that's what's happened there is another comment coming up which which i'm not gonna be able to read any of apparently which is unfortunate but i hope i hope you understand when, when we get to that uh ron is the only person to disobey trolley's instructions not to talk to about their uh deviation exam and a few hours later later he gets his leg leg bitten and broken by sirius he certainly did have a horrible accident, didn't he? That, I was going to say, because he does use the word accident. The thing with the leg probably was an accident. I mean, we'll see. I I'm hoping, seriously, because there's that great bit. It's a wonderful shot, just after the Shrieking Shack uh, in the movie, where it's like the long corridor heading out or from underneath the uh, Whomping Willow. And like they're they're walking along, and like Ron and uh, Ron is being carried by Sirius and and Harry, and and uh, <laughs> Sirius and Harry are just like having this lovely conversation, like really heartwarming conversation. And Ron is just staring down the camera like that, and he does say, I think I think that at that point, like says, oh yeah, sorry about the leg. Once I get a bit of when I once I taste the blood, it can't. I think he says something about the fact that once he tastes the blood, that then he can't control himself something. So that would make sense. Gordon Blooming Bennett. I thought that that was only Neville that the, that the accident was going to happen to. Because again, but and Ron Ron was the one who mocked it as well. Oh, Slim, I think you're onto it. I I I, I think your comment has legs. No no offense, Ron. No pun intended, but I feel like your comment has legs. I, I that is a great call. Uh, any comparison between Hermione and Neville's boggets is deeply flawed to me. In my opinion, McGonagall is simply a manifestation of Hermione's fear of failure, whereas Neville is frightened of Snape as a person. Interested to know you, if you think differently. I I do agree, Slim. I think we talked about this briefly earlier on. It's I don't think it's. I don't think that the McGonagall selection, let's say, that Hermione has made, not the Boggart, uh, is completely. It could have been anyone. I can't say that. I was going to say something that Hulk Hogan accidentally said once, and I can't say that because it's very rude. I probably could. <laughs> I'm going to move on. <laughs> right. So um. Um. 
I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Hulk Hogan, guys. Uh, as a person, as a, as a human being, I'm not a fan of him. Uh, as a wrestler, I can't deny that he was extremely good at what he did, though. A lot of people say he wasn't, guys. I completely disagree. You go back and watch the crowd during his matches. He knew what he was doing. He was very good. Stuff he said recently, that's not that good. Anyway, let's move on from that. Uh, but he once said something about being the right guy at the right time. But he accidentally said something slightly different. Accidentally. Um, I don't think that McGonagall was just the right person at the right time. I think that Hermione probably does think very big of McGonagall. Okay, let's put it like this, Slim. If, if, if Hermione's bogget was Snape saying the same things... She would be distraught, but in a completely different way. It being my, no, it being a McGonagall, I think, is significant. Um, now, are, are we talking about? Are we talking about if Lupin would have should have allowed it? Oh, that's a good point. Okay, okay, brilliant. Th this is a very good point. The issue with with Neville's bogget is how it's defeated. That's something that we haven't brought up to this point. That is actually very true. It's about the way that the Boggit is defeated. That's the issue. That That's why it became this big joke. Sure, the Boggit appearing as Snape is is an issue as well. But to humiliate the Boggit, how would have... What do you reckon Hermione would have done to... To McGonagall as the Boggit? God, I have no idea. I have no clue. I have absolutely no clue what her what her remedy would have been to defeat the Boggart. Wow. It could have just turned into McGonagall saying, Only joking! Waka waka waka! I doubt it. That would have been good. Imagine Maggie Smith doing that. <laughs> Great, great point. I, I appreciate that, Sam. Hagrid's hopelessness and sorrow goes through me like a knife every time. Re very realistic. It is very realistic. And it's not really there in the in the movie. You have him crying whilst throwing stones, which is a great scene. Not not in the book. Um, but when he knows what's ha what's going to happen to Buttbeak, he, he seems down. But he, he doesn't look like the world is ending, you know? And that's almost what I get from the way that he reacts in, in, in the book, you know? Uh, I love Sirius, but my god, the man is a drama queen. There'll only be one murder here tonight. Just tell them who you try to murder. Yeah, exactly. It's true. It's true. But, you know, this it's a trope. It's a trope. It's a trope. You gotta be no. If if you let me explain, if you just if you just give me a moment, if you just give me explain a moment to explain, if you just give me a moment, you gotta just said it, dude. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is such a movie trope, guys. You know one TV and movie trope which I can't stand, and I think I'm the only person in the world. People getting out of cars without checking their mirrors. Does my head in and i'm not just talking about the passenger side guys that's dangerous enough with cyclists and, and motorists but the blooming pa path size uh, the, the pavement size uh, what, what do you call them what do you, americans call pavement sidewalk the sidewalk side i'm gonna break my jaw doing that um you don't have cyclists on there you gotta pee pedestrians Dogs? I hate it where like a car like pulls up. I hate it when they don't indicate in as well or indicate out. Even if they're in a rush, they, it doesn't take long, dude. But when they, when it happens on air, it's so, so rare. In fact, I'm not even sure if I've even ever seen it. Where like a car like pulls up and just before the guy get the, the, or the gal, uh, get, get out of the car, they look in the mirror and then get out. Like a smooth transition. Does my head... How are we talking about, like, we're over three hours long, guys, and I'm talking about getting out of the car without looking in your mirror. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I went to the hometown of Reginald and Mary Catamole a few days ago, but I don't 
And it, if you follow me on Twitter, it's not Stratford upon Avon. It's near. I was in Stratford upon Avon. Okay, this is more Shakespeare talk, guys. Shakespeare, uh, Sh uh, Stratford upon Avon is Shakespeare town, guys. That's where he was born. In fact, his house is still there. Where, where the house where he's born in, I should say. Um, I was in Stratford upon Avon, but 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 before and after then, I was I I was in Evesham, and I, I I think it's actually mentioned by Umbridge, in in the movie that that Reginald. Catamol and Mary Catamol are from Evesham. It's a nice place. Nice place. It's a very nice churches. Very picturesque churches, I should say. Um, I think I took a picture of one. Um, yeah, so I was in their hometown recently. Because when, when, when I am going to these unusual places, it's not that unusual. Oh, there's Shakespeare's uh, uh, the house where Shakespeare was born. Oh, dear. There you go. Um, I've also got a statue of him there as well. There he is. There's a shock just behind his knee there, which sells Harry Potter stuff. I was looking for the mirror. I didn't go in. I should have gone in. I should have gone in. And when I posted this this picture saying I, I appear to be in Stratford upon Avon on Twitter, that shop tweeted saying welcome to Stratford, which is very nice. I, I should really reply to that. I, sh I should reply to that. Uh, but then I went to Evesham, and this lovely building, it's like, it's like four or five, like, church-esque buildings all next to each other. Very pretty. Very pretty. So yeah, that is Evesham. And so when, when I was going there, I thought, you know what, I bet so, some, something was filmed in Evesham, Harry Potter. So I typed in Evesham, Harry Potter. Only thing that came up was the hometown of Reginald and, uh, Mary Catamon. I would imagine you know who I'm talking about. It's the guy that Ron dresses up as in Deathly Hollows and the woman that they say from Umbridge. Oh, I am so sidetracked, guy. I, I, uh, uh, Slim, I am so confused. I don't know where I am now. Uh, I love serious but you drama queen. Wonderful. I don't think too harsh about Ron for his werewolf comments. People who grew up in the wisdom world tend to be very prejudiced towards certain beings and werewolves are one of them. Brilliant. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm looking forward to more information on that in the books, in fact. I'm, I, I, I'm looking forward to the scene with Lupin at the end, leaving, leaving the school. I actually, that must be in here. It must be in this movie. It better be. This book, sorry. Um, I love the fact that you, that you had a premonition that I was going to bring that up. You must be Toronley. Um... When Dumbledore wouldn't listen to Snape about his concerns, Snape set an essay hoping the students would realize, realize and out Lupin. Very sneaky. I do think... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sold on this theory, guys, but I do think there is a small amount, a small chance that he was... that, that Snape was giving them the tools to, to at least stand a single chance against a, a werewolf. But I, I think... No, I, I think you're probably right. Um, if given more time to decide, do you think Harry have killed or hurt Sirius? Well, at this point, he doesn't... At this point, the, the, the killing curse hasn't even been mentioned, has it? That was first mentioned in Goblet, I believe. Cruciatus, definitely. Um, and the other one. Um, what is the other one called? Cruciatus? I can yeah, and the other one. Those are definitely, no, the Killing Curse is definitely first mentioned in, um, well, you know, how to do it. So presumably Harry doesn't know how to do it. Now, that, that being said, there are other ways of killing people with magic. Um, at one point, definitely. At one point, I did think whilst listening to it, it's, it, it, it's just after he got disarmed. I was thinking if Harry had his wand, it would be, and knew how to kill S Sirius he would have done it. So yes, I do. I, I I think he would have done. His internal dialogue was so well written and his external dialogue was so well written in that moment. Uh, Slim, great comment. Thank you so much. Got 12 replies there. Aren't you popular? Uh, Simon. Greetings from Nora Batty's Wrinkly Stockings. That is a Last of the Summer Wine reference, guys. Um, uh, have you... 
have to say, Ron called it on Hermione's boggit, and we finally get to see Trawley's power 100% accurate predictions so long as she doesn't know she's making them. Well, there you go. That's it. She doesn't She doesn't know she's doing it. Nora Batty. Yeah, there's a there's a TV show. It's, it's ending now, I believe, called Last of the Summer Wine Guys. It ran for decades. Um... And there's a character called Nora, Nora Batty in it, but yeah, it's uh, it's good. A lot of uh, older actors show, showed up on it. Um, comedy, I should say. I think I think I did. Sorry. Got a good theme as well. <laughs> Have to say that Black is not it, it is is a lot less unhinged than in the film. So you get a few hints he's not mad, and how I'm I, I'm and how I'm Earth on the movie version. Does everyone get past the willow? Un, un. This is okay. I'm sorry, my reading's going a little bit undecapitized. Oh, undecapitized! I see what you mean, especially on the way out. I guess you could say that maybe Sirius has done something previously to the tree, like put a spell on it, although he hasn't got his wand. Or maybe use some sort of alchemy. That could be it. Um, biology, I should say. Um, to make it so the tree won't attack him. Maybe he's holding something. like It has like a shrub on him or something like that. So the, 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 the shrieking... Sh not shrieking Jack. The, the one being willow won't take him. Attack him. Maybe... Th that's the good thing with things with magic and sci-fi guys that is that you can explain a lot of way you know just by making up an excuse you know um yeah he definitely is more unhinged i mean but that is a fantastic decision that they made we wouldn't have had again i don't know if it's going to be in the next chapter but the line i i've, I've been waiting 12 years in just screaming the line um it, was, it had to be shorter, it had to be shorter, and so they decided to go with intents. And I, it was uh, the right decision, in my opinion. But yeah, you're right. Straight away, he's worried about uh, Ron's leg. It's cool. It's great when we get two different versions of the scene, and they both knock it out of the park. So, Simon, thank you so much for your comment from Nori Bat Nora Batty's Wrinkly Stockings. Um... I'm starting to think is that a reference to something else, but it is Last of the Summer Wine, isn't it? It must be. Right. Um, is anyone from... Oh, that's a good question. Is there anyone who was on Last of the Summer Wine in Harry Potter? Was Lizzie Phillips ever in Last of the Summer Wine? I doubt it. He may have, he may have had a cameo. Okay, I am wasting everyone's time now. Okay, let's do this. Harry Potter, last of the summer wine. The guy who does, um, or oh, did, unfortunately he passed away now. The guy who did uh, uh, Wallace from Wallace and Gromit, his voice actor, he was, he was, uh, he was on it throughout the entire run. Wait, what? Okay, now I'm really going down the rabbit hill, guys. Who's Timothy? Bat Bateson. Apparently he was in Harry Potter. I'm sorry guys, this is ridiculous. Oh, he was blooming, um, what's his name? I really like his, uh, I, I, oh God, was it? Creature, I think. Okay. I just want to see if there is someone who is on both Last of the Summer Wine and Harry Potter. Yes, he played Creature. Was he in Last of the Summer Wine? This is the this is our big moment, guys. I should say his name is um, Timothy Batson. Midsummer Murders. That doesn't count. So he blew it. Was we found one, guys? He was on an episode in 1978. It is bizarre to think it ran for so long. He's in one episode of Last of the Summer Wine, and he did the voice for Creature. He played Omos Hames in Last of the Summer Wine in one episode in 1980, 1978, before I was born. 
He was also in Going Straight in one episode. Blum that. Going Straight is the uh, sequel to Porridge, which is a very popular sitcom in the UK. Porridge is excellent. Definitely some dated language in it, though, unfortunately. Um, but he played Blooming Creature. D did he always play Creature? Order of the Phoenix. Because Creature comes back, doesn't he, in Deathly Hollows? Nah. It looks like he only played Creature in... Order of the Phoenix. Voice actor. Def he was in Deathly Hallows, wasn't he? he? No, he definitely was. Yeah, because he comes in with Dobby. Simon McBurn uh, took over the role. A lot younger. Well, there you go, guys. I've wasted enough of your time. Now let's get back on with the... With the I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I needed to find a connection between uh, Lost of the Summer Wine and uh, Harry Potter, and I did. Right, so, Rebecca. I'm sorry about wasting your time just then, guys. So, uh, Rebecca. Always a pleasure, Rebecca. Uh, I have to say, reading the book is this time around. Ron saying, get away from me, were werewolf, and asking if Dumbledore was mad... To, to hire Lupin, he did actually say that, yes. That really hit me in the feels. The way he speaks to Lupin after finding out that he's a werewolf is so vicious and demeaning, even after knowing Lupin this whole year. Very in, very true, Rebecca. I, I, mean, I feel very bad for Lupin having to hear that, but you know he's heard that his entire, well, since, since he got turned, of course. Um, I understand that Ron has grown up in a society that is pre prejudiced towards werewolves and is probably lashing out because he believes that Lupin has betrayed him, but that doesn't make, make, make it okay. I would also add on top of that, Rebecca, that he currently has a broken leg. Uh, I, I, think, I think that is fair to add as well. He must be in agony right, right, as, he's, as it's all happening. It also tries... It also tells us so much about what Lupin has been dealing with his whole life. It just makes me want to give Lupin a hug. That's the way that I see it. I feel like it's it's heartbreaking to hear it from, from Lupin's perspective. But you know he's heard it a hell of a lot before though. Also, I I have to I have a somewhat morbid curiosity about Harry actually planning to kill Sirius. If he could bring him himself to do it. I mean, I'm pretty sure they don't get around to teaching about a, about a cadaver or Sectum Sempra. There we go. Uh, and like the f and like to the 30th. Well, absolutely. But, you know, using magic in other ways to kill people. I mean, it's, it's like what, what Molly did to uh, to uh, Bellatrix. Is it, it wasn't one of the unforgivable curses, but Pretty sure it's going to kill someone if you use it on them. I mean, what's it called? The, the, the fire one will, will do it as well. Well, potentially. Great comment, Rebecca. Will, here he finally is. My favourite character, Sirius the Drama Queen. Uh, he said the line, Are you going to kill me, Harry? Though you must have noticed how different his tone is in the book. I also watched the movie before I read the, the book. So for me, Sirius always looks like Gary Oldman. Um, and that is a big part of why I like him so much. It's true. He's just one. It's like, uh, it's like um, with Snape. Um, he's just like an actor which you just everyone just loves, you know. Alan Rickman, I should say. Um, Gary is so fun and ser serious. He really brings out the madness. Well, you know all about the madness. That's what he says in the book. In the movie, he doesn't say in the book. Not yet, at least. I don't know. My favorite thing about Chapter Seventeen is that when Lupin hugs Sirius, he was in prison for twelve years, and everyone thought that he was guilty. Lupin included. It's true. Lupin has only just worked out as well. And that's the thing that's kind of missing from the movie is explaining how Lupin worked out, you know. But that's his his best friend, and seeing Sirius again must have felt amazing, especially after James James's passing. Very true. That's very true. Fun fact, I have a tattoo of the code that is on Sirius's mugshot. That's pretty awesome. Will, that's very cool. Okay, I like that. That's a cool idea for for, 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 uh, for a tattoo. 
I don't have a tattoo, guys, but that is definitely a cool one. Um, okay, thank you so much, Will, for your, for your comment. Uh, Kenzie, I'm afraid that I can't read your comment. I'm so sorry if... if I, 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 I've, I've been advised and and had and had a second opinion on, on it and apparently it is regarding something that is isn't is yet to happen so unfortunately I'm gonna come um, skip your comment this time I'm so sorry the thing is I don't know the full context because I haven't read it uh and so if it is a mistake I'm so so sorry um but I am gonna skip it this time and so I, I hope you understand uh let's move on to it's a dance thing uh it's a dancing um, <coughs> oh, Reggie, I swear, I could go on for hours about these two chapters alone. I, yeah, you and me both. Short, shorties, but packed with good stuff. They are short, that's the weird thing. But I, I'll do my best not to. I want to preface everything I'm about to say with this. Prisoner of Azkaban is probably one of my favourite Harry Potter movies. That being said, why did they change the prophecy? They, there was no reason to change the word, wording at all. It wouldn't cost extra, it wouldn't be difficult to shoot or anything like that. It was probably my biggest gripe with, 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 the, with the movie. You know what? It, it's a dance thing. The prophecy was such that it was such an out of, out of nowhere moment and done so quickly, it didn't have any time for me to take it in. So when it comes to the differences, I actually don't know what they are. I, I really don't. I've been waiting to comment on Trolley until this moment because the prophecy hadn't hadn't been been made made yet, but now that it has, I feel comfortable. Trolley is a real seer. She has made legitimate prophecies like the one Harry witnessed, but that but thinking the fact, but but. I think the fact that she can do that inflates her confidence just a bit too much. That's a very nice way of putting it. I don't think a divination should be a subject taught at Hogwarts unless it is theory only. Very interesting. I can't teach someone to make pro prophecies like Trolley does. You, you're either born with the ability or, you, or you're not. Much like wizards and muggles. I think she makes up a lot of a lot of hooray hooray to s seem more knowledgeable than she is okay so you do think that she is a bit of um a bit of a charlatan in a way okay um i saw she didn't even believe oh you you said you saw she didn't even believe harry when he told her that he had witnessed her, uh, her pro 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 prophesizing. It's very true. So she isn't aware when she does her best work then. God, that's, that is bizarre. That is bizarre. And, and the fact that that's who you choose for the teacher as well. But Dumbledore knows what he's doing. There, there, there must be a reason for that. The scene in The Shrieking Shack, I think, is much better done in the book. I will say, I didn't remember qu it being quite so violent. True. I love how calm Sirius was, almost like he was numb or just on autopilot. Made him even, even, made him even a bit scarier. So much was explained, and so many questions were answered. Why Lupin knew about the map, even explained in the, even explained in the movie. Why did Black want? Why Black went after Ron in, in the dorm with Crookshanks? When when Hellbent and Scabbard, I think I hope this is okay. I hope we're not going to be going into any future charity. I'm I have been advised to to avoid this. So I'll carry on. I love 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 this section of the book. The for, the movie fell felt felt a little flat. Oh, fell a little flat for me in th this part because it kind of kind of answered some things, but it also left left a lot out. It's true. Why Lupin turned up at that when when he did? It's absolutely. And also the fact that he's, that he's moony. Uh, that there is a lot of things that... I still think the scene's amazing, though. I really do. But it's interesting to hear your, your thoughts um, on, on it. Um, I And I can't wait for the next chapter. Even more to explain that is... Explained is so interesting. Oh, I bet. I can't wait for it. Final thought. 
what what real world application is there for turning a teapot into a tortoise? Um, what would you even need to know how to do that? I would imagine that there isn't. But maybe it is extremely similar to doing something very useful. So maybe getting rid of some sort of pests like gnomes or something like that, you know. Very, very interesting. Yeah, the specifics of Transfiguration. That that's that is quite bizarre. The, like the fact that it's like quite specific things that 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 are that are picked and being turned into. Very good point. Uh, it's a dust thing. Greatly appreciate. Max of our summaries, guys. Uh, Cat, rat, and dog is one of my favourite chapters in the entire series. Ron protecting Harry on one leg, Lupin questioning the situation before lowering his wand, and oh, the re the reveal that he was the the werewolf and and writer of the map and the involvement of crookshanks is so much more and also the fact that 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 uh Sirius is 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 the grim as well um i read this after watching and my mind was blown as if i didn't know what was coming excellent chapter it is brilliant and i do think the movie it's arguably the best scene as well it i mean there's a lot of contenders about though to be honest max thank you so much for your comment logan i love how this book shows how fe feared and segregated werewolves are in the world me too remus uh doesn't even react to how badly he is treated by the trio when outed as one which shows how used to his com these comments he, he must be 100 percent um he went. He wants you dead too. He's a werewolf, Hermione. Get away from me, werewolf, Ron. Dumbledore hired you when he knew you were a werewolf, Ron. Oh, it's so true. And seeing it from Ron's perspective, being in the wisdom world, is actually a very good point. Also, the fact Dumbledore had to convince many staff members. Yeah, you say many. I do wonder how many it actually is, actually members to be okay with the hiring of Lupin really shows how difficult finding employment must have been for him. Logan, I completely agree. This is this is basically a summary of why I bloomin love Lupin, guys. And also the fact he's just clearly a great teacher and a great guy. You know, I'm sure we'll be covering the stuff with Snape in the future. Um from the past. But yeah. I, I, I completely agree, Logan. He's he's such a lovable character. Uh, John, just to let you know, chapter 18, 18 and 20 of this book are very short chapters. I don't know how many pages it takes up in the UK edition, but in the US they only take uh, take up around 7 or 8. Well, I'm on the audio books, and so it's hard to really measure that. I do find, although it tells me how long each chapter is, though, so if we if we end up doing a free part, of it, then, then we can. But that being said, it might be nice to do a short one every now and then. <laughs> um, and, and you know what? It'll still be long. <laughs> you know what these are like. Uh, I do find it interesting that Harry thought of killing both Sirius and Crookshanks to protect, uh, for protecting Sirius in the Shrieking Shag. I know he didn't have the heart to kill anyone, but I wonder how Hermione would have felt if Harry thought, thought process about Crookshanks and, and Sirius. Oh my god. God, imagine if he'd, he'd killed Crookshanks, guys. Oh, God, I don't even want to think about that. That's horrible. Oh, poor Hermione. Oh, no, I don't, no, I'm putting that in my mind. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention something when I first made this comment. So I'll edit this comment and add another, uh, another sentence. That's the way to do it. It's always best to have it in one comment, you know. Um, in the book. It was Ron who stood up to Sirius and said, if you want to kill Harry, you'll have to kill us too. Absolutely. All while standing on on a broken leg. Broken frickin' leg, if you ask Max. In the movie, it was Hermione who said that line, and Ron was just sitting in the background. This is yet another Ron moment they gave to Hermione in the movies. Yeah, Ron in Prince of Azkaban, the movie. 
I cannot see him getting up on one leg with the other leg broken to defend Harry. Because he's just a comedy character, guys. In the scene when you're getting dragged away by, by Sirius, in, in the book it doesn't say anything about him saying, Oh, help me! Oh, no, help me! Uh, which is what he's doing in a movie. Yeah, movie Ron wouldn't have done it. Couldn't have done it. Couldn't have done it is probably the better way of putting it. But book Ron with his massive feet. Um, yeah. It's badass. He is badass, guys. And yeah, you know what? It's it's nice to see. Because I, I think that in the movie, Ron does become that badass. You know when he freaking shows up again in Deathly Hollies Part 2? Oh my god. Pretty sure I cried massively at that moment. <laughs> I love that. Was it Part 1? No, Part 1. Part 1. It was, because that's when they got the sword. Part 1. Uh, thank you so much for your comment. I did read it all, didn't I? Yes, I did. John, thank you very much for your comment. Michelle. Hey, Vanji. I don't really like... Oh, I don't know where I got that from. Okay. I don't really have much to add at this point, since i just really looking forward to your reaction to Chapter 17 onwards. The history of... The history info dump will really knock your socks off. Excellent. I love that term. And I'm really excited to hear your thoughts. Enjoy the roller coaster, Michelle. Greatly appreciate it. I'm enjoying it already, and we're not even there yet. Uh, Chiesa, isn't it? Chiesa. Given that Professor Trolley has a genuine vision, but then doesn't remember it, I wonder if she's she's had other important genuine visions that, that no one, including her, know about. Oh, I think so. The way that the movies are done... The way that it's done in the movies, the way that she's recounting what what the situation with with Neville is in Deathly Hallows Part Two, I feel like it's exactly the same. I, I that that's my interpretation of it. Um, she knows she spends a lot of her time alone in the Ashomi uh, Tower. Oh, I see what you mean. So no one knows about it. Oh my goodness, that's true. You know what? They need to... Yo, I wonder if Dumbledore's got, like, a tape recorder. Or a magical tape recorder. Snape recorder. Hashtag Snape recorder. Um. Yeah. I would definitely have a microphone. Yo, yeah, with her with her consent, of course. Just in case if in, in the middle of the night she comes up with something that could avoid apocalypse. You know? That's such a good point. Also, I love Hermione's biggest fear is for failing her exams. It's just so Hermione. It really is. I was really trying to rattle my brain what it was, what it was going to be, but it really is the most obvious thing for her, isn't it? Um, thank you so much for, for, your, for your comment, Jessa. Gary, not Jerry. Remember a few book clubs ago, we were discussing... Make sure you are definitely recording, I am. Uh, <laughs> remember we, you... you Few clubs ago, we were discussing what Hermione's boggart would be. You were so curious that you accidentally read my reply to that comment. Did I? Which was a little spoilery. Sorry. Oh, that's not uh, Gary. That's on me. If I did, I apologize. Lucky I didn't. It didn't sink in. Basically, I was saying that Ron's joke guess about Hermione's boggart, a piece of homework that only got nine out of ten. There, we, that's what he said. Thank you, Gary. It was actually very close. Yeah, Gary, if I if I read your comment by accident, I hope I didn't... I, I don't think I would have, like, said, hey, don't do that, Gary, last time. If I did, I'm really sorry. Because uh, that, that is absolutely my fault. I should not be reading replies. Um, what do you think about the Boggart appearing as McGonagall, especially considering that it also took the form of Snape? Would you... Why do you think Snape's appearance is held against him? But not, but McGonagall's is not. This is a debate that we were having in the comments. Oh my goodness. Very interesting. Very interesting, Gary. Um, Neville is scared of Snape because of things that Snape has done. Um, McGonagall. Hermione isn't scared of McGonagall. 
I think there is significance to why it is McGonagall that 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 that, that is that is uh, that the bogget his has is has is using. Again, it depends what the st not stupefy. Sorry, it depends what the um, ridiculous is. It really does because that's that's the thing which caused the issue around Hogwarts with Snape. I I have no idea what it would have been for McGonagall though. Let me know in the comments what you think the ridiculous would have been for McGonagall, guys. I'd love to know it. Um, also, I wonder why Scabbers decided to hide in in Hagrid's house. Perhaps he thought he would be safe from Crookshanks there. Yeah, I think that's partly it. Although, you know, Hagrid has some crazy blooming creatures. I was thinking, why didn't he just get out of Dodge? But I think going around, because uh, he, could, he could change at any point. Could he not change at any point? Oh my goodness. Could he not change at any point? Maybe he had a spell put onto him saying that he had to stay as a rat. Oh, I we'll see if that is we'll see if that comes up in future in future comments. But I was thinking that maybe he wouldn't want to leave Hogwarts because it would be very dangerous for a rat. Because he has essentially been a rat since what happened happened, right? Maybe he couldn't change until Remus and Lupin did Revelio or whatever they did to him. Maybe he had a curse put on him. Well, maybe. I'm really not sure. Great question, Gary. I think it was to stay away from Crookshanks. I think it was also to stay away from Harry because he knew that Sirius was on the way and he wouldn't want to be in the same vicinity. Um, yeah. Great question. Great question. Uh, thank you so much for your comments. Sandra. Hi, Veggie. Just joined the Patreon. Sandra, you're very welcome. I found you... I found yours and the book cl club's comments really insightful and interesting. So thanks, Sandra. I, that is greatly appreciated. The comments that we get here are amazing. I love JKR's ability to create di dialogue so normal, so normal to to age and personality. Have any of you ever seen anything in these crystal ball? Asked, asked Neville. Nope, said Ron. <laughs> in in a half offhand voice, yes, that is a great way of putting it. It's just so 13 year old doesn't care about the subject they hate. I love it. It's true. It's uh, that is a very real moment between <laughs> Neville and, and Ron. The way Ron's like, nope, <laughs> it's, it's always as if he sounds almost prideful in a weird way. I, I think it's great. In the Shrieking Shack, I find it interesting how Ron embodies the wizarding community's negative attitude towards werewolves very true. I know he must be terrified, but we also know that Ron comes from a family to a family tolerant of ev everyone regardless of, of their blood status and conditions. That is a very good point. The fact that he's a Weasley. I That's a good point. Sandra, that is something that we didn't because we, 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 we were talking about this earlier on, weren't we, with, with Ron being brought up in the Wisting world, but he is from, he is a Weasley. But then again, he la he laughs about um, he he laughs about Filch being a squib. That still sticks in my mind, you know, guys. I I don't hold it against Ron, but it does stick in my mind. I find squibs fascinating. I really do. And I think that they are muggles. I think that it is a scientific term. I think I feel like squib is a scientific term for a muggle that has been born. After there being a wizard in the family. Anyway, I, I find him fascinating. Maybe Ron would not be saying this were were it not for Lupin seem seeming guilty to help the criminal black. I think you're absolutely right, Sandra. I would also add on top of that the broken leg, and also the fact that he's a thirteen-year-old boy as well. Oh, no, sorry. He's a 13 year old. And I don't think the boy thing is significant at this point. Um, just a fun fact. The executor, McNear, is one of the Death Eaters called by Voldemort in the Grave of the Goblin the Five. There we go, Sandra. I, I, thought, I thought I had to comment saying that at, at the time, actually, when doing the movie reactions. Excellent. Excellent little fun fact. Thank you so much for confirming that as well. Sandra, great comment. Thank you so much. And, and I hope to see you, uh, see, see you uh, next time as well. Jack. Um, I absolutely love the end of this 
this book. Chapter 16 through the end is of this book is my favorite part in the series. Good stuff, good stuff. I do prefer the time traveling sequence in the movie, but it would it works better in, in the movie form than it would in, in in the book form. So for me, my personal canon is the Shrieking Shack scene from the book and the time traveling sequence from the movie up until after the Dementors. Now that's interesting. I never heard of that before, Jacqueline. Head cannon, choosing choosing your choosing your favorites. That's awesome. Does anyone else do that? I must do it. When I think of the Quirrell death, I think of the one from the movie. In my, I, 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 this is a new concept, guys. I've never thought about this. My head cannon for scenes. Wow, what an interesting idea, Dracolin. I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start keeping an eye on, on myself doing this. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like it. I'm going to start doing that. Thank you so much for your comment. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, he's the first comment as well. Hi, Veggie. First time, uh, f first time here. You're very welcome, Harry. Or oh, Mr. Potter. I apologize. Thank you for th th this series. Best Harry Potter content online. That is very kind of you. I've read this series so many times, but now I get to relive the feeling of the first time reader. That's what we're here for, Harry. That is very kind of you. Um, Harry feeling euphoria for a week after f finally winning the Quidditch Cup is so nice after all he's been through. Maybe you think it's a bit undeserved due to the fire belt. I'm sorry about that, seriously. But I think having a better broom than someone is, is similar to kids' sport activities in real life. Someone with will always have a better bicycle than someone else or a better internet connection for online games. That's very true. I do feel like it is the like 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 the the team talk, you know, like the the jabs that they were saying about saying there's no way that Cho Chan's going to stand a chance against you and stuff like that, you know. Was rubbing me the wrong way, but then again, if yeah. But again, these are teenage kids, guys, and and and, and it could just be, you know, boasting you know like like um like the commentator on said harry has been practicing a lot which is the only reason he was able to do the dive straight down and pull out at the last second to grab the snitch don't go there. i think malfoy was i'm sorry i think malfoy i'm sorry guys right i think malfoy was miles ahead is mostly in harry's mind that is a possibility but had Malfoy seen been as good as Harry at flying, then Malfoy probably would have won. If Harry was uh, had a worse broom, he might have used a different strategy though, and not done the fake attack on the Slytherins. That's very, very true. I see comments like Ravenclaw wouldn't stand a chance as kids being excited about someone having the latest and greatest equipment, not literal statements. That's very true as well. I I think that that is possible. By the way, I believe Hogwarts League is around Robin, which whilst all teams meet each other one time, so six matches in total, you know what? That took me so long to understand. It really did, and I, and I really appreciate that. Uh, Harry. Was the Hufflepuff the first game? Of course it was, yes. Yeah. So so then slip so uh, Draco could could recover. Six matches in total. It's very nice to see the results like this. My goodness, look at those W's, guys. Hang on, what? Six game six games. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I see. I see it now. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, thank you very much for the chart. Before the last game, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw are one and two. Slytherin are two and two, and Gryffindor are one and one. Gryffindor needs to win to have the same record as Slytherin. The points difference from e the entire season uh, is a tiebreaker. Is that definitely true? It's the point's definitely a tiebreaker. 
They're only relevant in a tie-breaking situation. That's very interesting, because that does change a lot. Um, it changed a lot in my mind, I should say. It will often be a multi-way tie for first place with this system, which is why there's a big focus on points. I'm based... Basing this on Gryffindor's feelings like S after the first loss since they know they can't win the cup if Hufflepuff win uh, their other two games. After Hufflepuff loses to Rainclaw, they feel hope again. Gryffindor were not out of the running after, after all, but they can't afford to lose another match. There we go. Okay. This is great, Harry. Thank you so much for, for laying it out like this. It, I, it's something which really took me a long time to to comprehend the whole six game system but great comment thank you so much for your, for your for your first comment and i hope to see you next time as well thank you so much helen i've always been interested in how crookshanks is suspicious of scabbers for the very from the very beginning presumably because he could detach detects right he was not actually a, a rat i'm curious though at what point in the school did crookshanks meet sirius that's a very good question it could have been when he invaded the room where was crookshanks at that point i'm not sure um was he suspicious at all of this uh imangus dog or did he know right away that Sirius could be trusted? Animals do have that ability, guys. They they are they are magical when it comes to that. They genuinely are. Uh, also, how many of his attacks on Scabbers were done prior to him teaming up with Sirius? Well, there's that as well because the first one definitely would have been. You know, he he wouldn't have had a word with Sirius in the in the pet shop, would he? Wow. So he was already attacking Peter Bettigrew before. But then he probably was attacking. Maybe he hasn't actually attacked. No, because he, he chased after him uh, outside the Shrieking Shack. So, yeah. My goodness. That does raise a lot of questions about at what point Crookshank was a part of the team, you know. <laughs> Seriously, this team. Great point, Helen. Thank you so much. I just had some Bombay mix. Okay, Johnny. Um, it's be it seems Trolley doesn't even know she's a real the real seer. She doesn't remember making the prediction. She even thinks Harry's crazy when he points out out to her. She wouldn't have been that that surprised if she, she wouldn't have been that surprised if she had known she could do it. It's very true. So, so it is potential that she is just a, she is also a charlatan. It is it's very important to word it carefully there. Um, I'm kind of confused by Hermione's exams. For example, she has transfiguration and. Are Aphromancy at the same time, but that means that there's no other student who can take our Aphromancy exam because the two exams are at the same time. No one else has a time turner. So is Hermione the only student that takes Aphromancy classes? That I mean, that's even better. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it, it. There is definitely something going on with 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 the uh, timings on all these. I mean, the fact is there could be other time turners. Um. I don't. I doubt it, though. I. 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 I, I my head candidate is that there is only one time turner. Um, if they had that many time turners, it would be blooming useful for the other movies, wouldn't it? Um, chapter seventeen. The next, and chapter seventeen. Hang on, did I? Yes, I did. Chapter seventeen and the next few chapters are my favourite ones in the whole book. I love the suspense just before Sirius is revealed. Ron defending Harry on a broken leg. I hate they took that this moment from him in the movie. It's true. Crookshanks defending Sirius and then Lupin explaining so so, so many things. I wonder if people that only watched the movies ever realised who the Marauders really were. Janny, it was in the comments where I learnt it. It really was. It, it was it, people saying, hey, Veggie, you know, it's Wormtail, right? And Mooney. And it took me even then a while to understand it. But yeah, it was through the comments. It, it certainly wasn't true in the movie. Um, and in fact, that's never explained. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, and yet Lupin just is right there. It's like, yep, this is it. <laughs> he's, he's very cool in that scene in the book. He really is. Um... 
Crookshank is defending Sirius and then Lupin ex ex examining so many things. I wonder if people that only watch the movie... Oh, I didn't, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I certainly didn't from just the movie. Absolutely not. It would have taken me a long time to work that out. Um, yeah, great, great comment, Janny. This schedule thing is weird. And yeah, and you're not the first person to say how much you hate the fact that they... That they took away that moment and gave it to Hermione. The way that ha that Ron has been portrayed in the first three movies, he, would he wouldn't have been able to do what book Ron did there, which is pretty amazing, quite frankly. Um, thank you so much for your comment. Catty! These chapters are a good example of why I prefer the books. It shows that magic isn't easy and shows the slow development of characters. Ron was such an amazing character, fighting to get free, unlike his perpetual, terrified, bumbling movie version. That's a great way of putting it. Plus, being a top-tier friend. Very true. Then th there is Harry's self-discovery that no matter how angry he is, he is not a killer. This will be important for the rest of the series. That's very interesting, Katie. The fact that it doesn't matter how angry he is, he, he's good to... Yeah. Does Harry never kill anyone? Oh. I guess not. Again, Quirrell... I, I can't blame on Harry. I really can't, particularly in the book. In the movie, he's like... <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Fat Kit Catsy, thank you so much for your comment. Tammy... Hi Veggie, what is your reaction when you found out that the secret passageway led to the Shrieking Shack? Did you read? Did you already find out why it was the most haunted building in Great Britain? Also, we fi finally meet the hero of the book, Crookshank. He blow it is the hero. When it comes to the Shrieking Shack, I've always had it mixed up, guys, because I feel like you guys have told me that it is haunted because. Lupin stayed there rather than actually being haunted. When it comes to the secret passageway, in my head I thought it was still linked up to Hogwarts and so away, but it really isn't, is it? It's a one way is a one-way system. I think because I think I've always assumed that the Marauders map is of Hogwarts, you know? Rather than the sur surrounding areas as well. Although Lupin sees, sees them at Hagrid's hut. Um, I would have loved to see your reaction when he frees the Whomping Willow. I, yeah, I was like, hang on, wait, what's going on? And he really needed to as well. The Whomping Willow is vicious in, in the Blooming Book. What I a lot of people don't know, because it really um, isn't really mentioned in the book, that Crookshanks is half... Nizzle. JKR confirmed this only after writing Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. That it says that the Knizzle kin has an uncanny ability to detect unsavory and suspicious characters, which uh, explains why he knew that Sirius was a good guy and Scabbers uh, Peter Pettigrew was not. Wow, okay. Nizzle. My goodness. They are cute. They are awesome. Um, I love all the relevations, re re um, revelations, there we go, that have just been made, and I can't wait for the next chapter. I'm so excited, Tammy, you and me both. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your comment. Stephen. Uh, these chapters are... A good example of a small but important detail that are either not included in the movies or aren't given enough importance. I feel like that's very true. Like Scabbers being found in Hagrid's milk, milk and being happy, happy there. It's very telling that there's something going on with him when... You read you, when you read it again. It's true, yeah. Because we get no context at all of that, do we? Um, 
In fact, he's not desperate to get away. He just bites Ron and then he's off. That's it. He's not trying to get out of Ron's hands. Very true. With these books, it really... It's really little but important details that oft, oft, often times get cut for from the movies. And I can't help but feel like a lot of them were wrongly removed. Yeah, you can't say that it was just because of time for a lot of them. Some of them are very subtle things. Like Ron going like this before Scab is getting away. The bite just seems kind of random in the movie, you know? Um... Crookshanks is a great example since he, we, we see him scuttle off towards uh, Sirius in the Shrieking Shack, which doesn't make sense without having also mo moments where we are led to believe that Crookshanks is, uh, is more important than just rivalry between Ron and Hermione. Yeah, it's true. We've definitely had those hints of, hang on, there's something going on with this cat, but exactly what? Even to this point, I'm not 100% sure. Thank you so much for your comments, uh, Stephen. Uh, Darcy. Okay, so now that you seen Lupin and, and Black interact, I would love to hear your thoughts on Wolfstar, the ship the ship between Rubus and Sirius. Oh my goodness. Although never stated, there almost seems to be an amplified relationship between the two. You have already heard that Lupin's uh, lycanthropy, being a werewolf, is a metaphor for HIV and AIDS. Exactly what I was mentioning earlier on. The the potential problematic comparison made by J.K. Uh, a lot of people read Sirius as I don't I don't feel that is problematic per se. Um. I'd like to hear opinions on that. I, I would. Please be respectful of, of each other's opinions, though, guys. If, if if you do leave a comment on it, or read a comment on it that, that you may not disagree with, please d do be respectful in this discussion, because it is a very sensitive issue. Uh, I've got to say, I've never picked up on it being, um, being an, an, an issue. But now, I now I, I can kind of see where it could could be from actually. A lot of people read Sirius as as Sirius as gay and Lupin as bisexual. They read Sirius as gay. Very interesting. I mean, I've only just met him like you know in, in the books, so that's very interesting. It is um it is uh, and and Lupin is bisexual. It's interesting to note that the line then. Lupin spoke in an odd voice, a voice that shock, shook with some su suppressed emotion. Was changed in the American version to Lup then Lupin spoke in a very tense voice. It is interesting that they took out Lupin's suppressed emotion, and while it was maybe a stretch, could be s so so it would not represent be representative of gay. Wow. I can see how that line could be, the two different lines could absolutely, that's fascinating. Suppressed emotion. Yeah. But then again, it could also just be the suppressed emotion of losing, you know, three of his, that's a good point, guys. Lupin. Poor Lupin when it all happened. I mean, poor all of them, obviously. Um... But yeah, losing his three best friends like that. Jeez. Um, yeah, I mean, that could be what that means as well. But yeah, it's food for thought. I'll definitely keep it in the back of my mind uh, when moving forward. I mean, I ain't against uh, Wolf Star, but obviously I'm a big uh, Tonks fan as well. But we shall see. I've only just met Sirius, and so we shall see. However, we finally find out who ha ha Hermione's boggit turns into. It's Professor McGonagall herself. In my opinion, this fact as important perspective on Neville's boggit. It shows that the, a boggit turns into a teacher isn't something unheard of, or nor is it unique to Snape. I think p people very often apply unfair double standards to these professors. Oh, I, I, I know you do feel like, like, like that, Hawa. Um, I mean, Hermione's biggest fear is not McGonagall, though. 
And Neville's biggest fear is Snape. I guess it's Snape being nasty to him, I guess you could argue, but it's definitely more down to Snape's personality than Hermione's with McGonagall. Neville's bucket turns into Professor Snape. Fandom. This proves Snape is a horrible person. That's odd. I I, I hope I didn't suggest that, that, that that's uh, back to back, guys. You could be... Um, you know, you'd be afraid of something, and that and that thing not be a bad thing. Hermione, I mean, I I get I, I my phobia is tall buildings. Bad phobia being near or or inside tall buildings. I don't think the buildings are a bad thing. You know, Hermione's bogget turns into Professor McGonagall. This doesn't prove anything. I haven't heard that argument today, Howard. I really haven't, and so I'm sure that it's out there. But I, I feel like, in in this forum at least, in in the book club, um. We're more respectful to others' opinions because that does seem like a strange way of processing it. But I hope I certainly haven't processed it in in that, the way that you've written there. Several people have commented that Hermione's bogget isn't necessarily McGonagall herself, but failure. That's and that's a valid interp interpretation. Absolutely. The point is Neville's bogget can be interpreted in the exact same way. I feel like that is fair as well but it's because of Snape that it's happened we'll learn more about Neville's home life later but so far it has it has already been est established that Neville fe fears he's not good enough for his family especially his grandmother it's plausible that especially after that blooming howler as well it's plausible that the fear manifests as Snape because potions are Neville's worst subject at school. Yes. Yes, I can see I can see that philosophy. That being said, that being said, now there I feel like this is an important point and I, I don't know if you you're about to address it. When Lupin says to Neville what is your biggest fear, he says Snape. Let's let's read on. On the other hand, Hermione's boggart can be interpreted to literally. A boggart turns into whatever the person fears the most. If Hermione's fear was really just fa failed exams and nothing more, wouldn't the boggart change into a report card or an expulsion letter? You know what? No, because... No, this is this is what this is what annoys me about Newt Scamander's um, to give him his full name for some reason. <laughs> Newt's um, Boggit in Crimes of Grindelwald being a desk. If it was like a mirror showing Newt at the desk, yeah. Or his boss, like a, a, a fictional boss coming along with loads of paperwork and giving it to him and saying, process that by this time. But the fact it is a desk is dumb. It, it, yeah, it, yeah, uh, that, that didn't sit right with me. It was kind of stupid, the fact that it is a desk with some papers on it. And the boggit is trying to psychologically break the person. And if it was a report card or an expulsion letter, I think that Hermione, she's a smart girl. She would have to be a moron to be scared of that. Um, now, granted, she it's it's ridiculous that she comes screaming out of the of the trunk um, from McGonagall. But the McGonagall one is definitely going to be more effective because it's someone saying that that you are you are not good enough. Oh, there we go. That might be it. A uh, letter saying that you're being expelled or a report card is not the same as someone saying that you're not good enough from someone who is desperate to achieve. You know. Um, great discussion here, by the way. Uh, my point is, we should either. It Interpret both boggets literally or both figuratively. Not pick and choose what's most convenient to us. Well, I, I'd say that. I'd say this. Um, uh, Howard, I think you can interpret one figuratively and one literally. I don't see an issue with that. Because um, at no point does it say that the boggit will show you a literal sense of thing or a figurative one. It absolutely can be both. 
That's why I hate the desk. <laughs> I, I hate the desk. I hate the newt's uh, bog. It was, was the desk, guys. I really do. Yeah. Great discussion. How? Thank you very much. Uh, Digo. To to me personally, that th this chapter always uh, cemented that Trawley is a fraud most of the time, and th that most of her predictions that come true are probably coincidental, like the thing with Lavender's rabbit. Because one, basic, she's basically admits it to herself. Um, she admits it to herself. I would certainly not presume to predict anything quite as far-fetched as that. That's true, she did say. I can't remember when she said it, but that is very... Oh, of course, with, with, uh, with uh, not Hedwig. Um, the other big white bird. Um, Mopik. I, you know what, guys? I thought Hedwig was going to be so, so much more of a bigger thing in Harry Potter. In the movie and the books. I thought he was going to be Harry, Grunt, Hermione, and Hedwig. I really did. I really did. Very, very, very little action in it. Considering it's Harry's pet, you know? Alright, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, we see here how a genuine prediction of hers looks, which doesn't resemble at, at all to her predictions in class. Uh, to be fair, it's, it's talking about someone else's prediction, though. Yeah. And so they are visions. They are they are things that come to her. She can't say, okay, I want to know. Actually, that's a good point. Can she say, okay, I want to know the results of this horse racing. Let's look in the orb. Um, that would be very immoral. But I feel like that the visions are random to the seer. So you look in the, uh, in the orb and it might be a horse race, but it could be absolutely anything else. And so it's not like Trawley's choosing. This is an important point. Trolley isn't choosing what she sees the future of. And so when Harry is saying that Buttbeak's fine and he's flying off his head on, Trolley is using logic there, not her own seeing ability. No, I'm not defending her, guys, but I feel like that's that could, could explain a lot. I hope I made sense there. Um, we see here, here how we generally do it. She does does dismiss Harry's correct prediction that Buttbeak will be fine and all but outrage uh, outright predicts his death instead, which is clear a wrong prediction. Does she But she's she's predicting it out of logic, not her abilities. If 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 she had an orb here and Harry's like saying, Yeah, Buttbeak's gonna be fine, and she's got like going, Nah, oh, Buttbeak's screwed, mate be a bit of a weird way of wording it to Harry in classroom like that, but that would be amazing. Um, she's using logic at this point. She's not using her ability. She's saying, no, there's no way that Buttbeak's going to be fine. What are you talking about? Not because she has seen a vision where Buttbeak dies, because she's applying logic. This is a good discussion, guys. I did not expect Trawley to be such an interesting talking point. Um... Uh, other characters also predict stuff correctly. Harry's butt beak survival, Ron's j j j jokingly? Oh, jokingly! I'm sorry. <laughs> jokingly. Um, Hermione's boggit, uh, and that Tom Riddle might have killed Myrtle to earn his medal from for services to the school. Oh, I know. I that is the first I made that connection about Myrtle. So Riddle did it on purpose. See, when I say Riddle, I think of the wrestler. Wrestler now. Um, very interesting. Uh, so Trolley predicts something coming true doesn't pr doesn't prove anything, especially since it is mentioned multiple times that she basically makes dozens of predictions per lesson. So, so some of them are bound to end up being at least it kinda right. This is a great discussion, Digo, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Specifically with Harry's, she's not using her seer ability to counter what Harry is saying. She's just using logic. Because she doesn't say, that ain't what I saw, mate. She's just saying, oh, at least he tried, but of course Bubbik's not going to survive. Wow. 
this is this is good. I'm enjoying this. But to be honest, I think it's quite sad that Trolley actually possesses the gift of sight, but doesn't even see seem to know about it. That's it's kind of tragic, actually, based on the fact that she dis, dis, dismisses Harry, telling her about her prediction, and instead puts on a show for everyone. While whether she in she, she whether she herself actually believes in her normal predictions or not. Fascinating. What a fascinating discussion on Toronto we're having, guys. Seriously, that's awesome, Digo. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's great to break. It. The great thing with Toronto is that it's a long, it's a long game, isn't it? Is we're fi we're things that happened at the start of the book are now starting to pay off, and now we can discuss of the likelihood of it actually being a prediction or just you know being luck or just being life. L luck may not even be the right word for it. Great comment, Kevin. Hey, Reggie. I know I'm. Uh, e I know that earlier you had questioned. Where the part of the story where Harry sees Pettigrew's name on the map went. Well, now we know. In the book, he never actually sees Pettigrew on the map. Lupin does. So cool. So cool. And that's how he realises that Pettigrew is alive and therefore Sirius is innocent. And that's why he says, unless you guys switch. Which I still don't know the full story behind. It's cool. I don't... I, I, I find that... The, you, know, you know what? I love... I love this... Well, we talked about it last time. Where uh, Lupin has scolded Harry, taken the map, said, get back to bed, I'll know if you go on a walkabout. And then Harry like, says, oh, by the way, I saw someone, I think the map doesn't work properly because I saw a name, Peter Better grew. And Lupin's face, that, that scene is chilling, guys. That's not possible. I can't do it. I, I, I cannot, I, I love that actor, he's so good, guys. Watch Inspector Calls with him in, guys, it's awesome. He's in the Big Lebowski as well. <laughs> um, briefly. Uh, do, 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 do. Very young as well. Uh, do, 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 do. Where did I get to? He has always raised... This has always raised a question with the Harry Potter fandom, though. At some point in the last two years, Fred and George would have had... Uh, you know what? I, I've heard this before. Fred and George would have had have had to have seen Peter Pettigrew on the map in close proximity to Ron, Harry, and 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 had questions. When did they when did they never say anything? Also, one of Harry Or or was or, or has Cookshank has Scabbers been gone for that for that long? Maybe he has. Blimey neck. That's a long time. Yeah, I mean, Fred and George definitely would have. Yes, they definitely would have. Although, okay. Okay. How many years did you say there? Did you say two years? Yeah, you said two years. I was going to say, because before then, they probably wouldn't have. They wouldn't be using the map outside of. I oh, know they found it two years ago. I'm I'm getting very confused now, but no, this is this is watertight, guys. I wonder if there's ever been an explanation put out. Why did they never say anything? I guess they just saw the, a lot of names in the area, as it would most likely be wherever they they are in Gryffindor common room, and so they would likely be dozens of names in. The vicinity, so that it would probably be unnoted. Also, you got to think about it, guys, and this is not represented at any point in the, in in the movie or anything like that. I mean, Hogwarts is not one floor, and so at some point there's going to be names stacked on names because there's people in rooms underneath other people. But they must, if they were, if they, if they were looking at it a lot, like not just in the evening or something like that. If they're looking at, at, at keeping an eye on it, they must. No, because Ron doesn't take scabbers to class all the time, does he? Well, I'd like to hear explanations for this, guys, because this does feel like a little bit of a plot hole. Great, great call. Kevin, thank you so much for your comment. That is greatly appreciated. Uh, Katik, hi, Veggie. Now things are getting interesting. What, you mean in my video? It's only taken a, a four, four hours in a quarter to get interesting? Oh, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Ron... 
<laughs> I'm sorry. The Ron being a true Gryffindor again and putting himself between his friends, his friends and, and a prospective mass murderer. That is a good call. That's that is him earning his Gryffindor marks. I hate that this was taken away from him in the movie. It, it seems to, in the film, sorry, it seems like this and the, the scene in in uh, Snape's Defense Against Dark Arts, where he defends Hermione. Those are the two big bits which really gripe so far. I'm sure there's many more in the future. Something. Imagine if it's. Imagine. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's ridiculous. I, I, okay. I was gonna. I was gonna say something stupid. Shall I say it? Okay. I'll say, I'll say it stupid. Because obviously a lot of things are being taken away from. Oh no, that'd be the way around. Hey, move on. Right. <laughs> so something that only occurred to me uh, this time rereading the book, Lupin described describes, describes how he followed everything that had happened on the Marauders map, but has he but has he seen the extra time traveling people there as well? Oh, Katik, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a breakdown. I'm gonna have a breakdown, guys. That's too much. That's too much for my brain to process. Okay, I'm going to say yes, and that he and all the other teachers must know about Hermione having the time turner. So it would have only been a very brief time that he may have had the chance to notice uh, time turning Harry. And so as soon as he saw that Harry and Hermione and Ron were together, he wasn't going to be looking for another Harry. You twisted my melon, Cat, Cat, Cat you, you twisted my melon with that question. My goodness. Um, that is a great point, though. Da, 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 as well. They would be quite close at some point in time to the main trio, so they should be spotted. I wonder if they just don't show on the map, or Lupin didn't notice, or did, did but didn't say anything? What do you think? I think that he must... I think that all the professors... I mean, quite frankly, a lot of the students should have worked it out by now. But a lot of the professors, all the professors must know about Hermione having the time turner, right? I mean, the rest of the book could prove me wrong. So seeing Hermione's name would be nothing. And at that point, even... It depends how close they get. If they get as close as in the movie, then sure. Katic, I'm, I'm going to get a headache from this question, seriously. It's brilliant. It's, made, it's making me think. What do you think? And last thing, with all the uh, Magnus re re revelations, do the dog and Sirius and the rat is Pettigrew, the first time readers... Oh, I think I know where this is going. First time readers, the time I read the book, I went, okay, so who's Crookshanks then? Did people think it was James? No, that would have been... No, but James... Oh, my God. I wonder if people thought it was James. But why would James be in a pet shop? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because we keep on hearing about his mother's death. But we haven't heard James's actual death, have we? Oh my goodness. I wonder. Okay, let me know if you thought it was James, guys. Oh my god, what a twist. Because it's the whole gang. The whole gang's there. The Marauders. Although at this point, you wouldn't know about the Marauders, would you? I take it back. Who are they are, I mean. Um, oh god. This 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 comment. Katic. It somehow didn't, didn't fit he'd be the only one left being just an animal. I know. Silly, silly me. Please, someone tell me I wasn't the only one. No, you can't have been the only one, Katik. And I wonder if maybe Crook Tranks was someone. Because we have um, ne ne Nijeri, is it? Um, the lady in, uh, in um, Crimes of Gurinder World, who will eventually become a forever snake. 
And I said, wouldn't it be crazy if it's the one that, that Harry meets at the start of Phosphorstein? No, guys, it's the other snake, and I completely missed the name. <sighs> Wish I'd remembered that. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Cutting. I can't be reading a comment like this four hours into a video, because that is that is blown my mind. <laughs> that is brilliant. Katik, thank you so much. Uh, the paracetamol are on, on you. <laughs> that one, because that made me think. Thank you so much. I'm joking, by the way, Katik. That was a fantastic comment. Emma. Hi, Veggie. I'm finally leaving a book book club comment. You're welcome, Emma. I'm hoping calling Emma is, Emma is like... I usually take the first part of people's name. After one... Over, after a year of Harry Potter book clubs, I I might add, serious, where has the time, seriously, oh, sorry, seriously, where's the time gone? Has it been over a year? It bloomin' has, because we started before we finished Deathly Hollows. Bloomin' Nora, that is insane. Well, let, let's check out your comment, looking forward to this. Hermione's boggit isn't McGonagall specifically, it's failure. Failing in her classes, failing at magic, and even potentially getting kicked out of school and the wisdom community, which which changed her life. Again, was she like this before or not? I do wonder, you guys. Or, at least, that's my headcanon that that exists. It's, it's all up to, to interpretation, guys. That's what's so great about it. Let's just say, let's just say that if I, if, I always got to check it, definitely still recording. Um, let's, oh, where am I? Oh my goodness. I, I, let's just say if I, a muggle, got accepted to Hogwarts, fail, failing would probably be uh, my boggit too. Harry in Philosopher's Stone, his boggit could have been that. Oh, wow, because Harry was terrified of losing everything in that book. You know, getting out of that horrible situation that he was in. Hermione wasn't in a horrible situation. Unless she hates dentists, which a lot of people do. Um, yeah, in the first year, Harry's probably would have been that as well. Wow! Um... Hagrid's letter is heartbreaking. Just imagine being in a situation, feeling utterly hopeless. But I love Hermione in her, her, in her de determination and bring, bringing there for being there for Hagrid throughout the, this this book. She's only eleven. It's true, and she has so much other stress going on with Harry and Ron and the lessons and everything. She's she is a she is a, a fighter in this one. I always, uh, the, the way Lupin hands the trio back their wands without hesitation means that at this point he 100% trusts Sirius and believes Peter is the real mole. Rat. You see what I did there? Catamole, of course. Catamole? Right, I'm not making any sense! Right, sorry. Sorry, guys, it's been a long video. I think the, thing, the fact that he's that he didn't need Catamol. I know he didn't need any further Bruce Sphinx volumes to his uh, friendship. Absolutely. Very true. I wonder if he'd been doubting the official version of the events in the back of his mind all this time, but dis dismissed it as denial. I think he absolutely would have done. Emma, he's just lost his three best friends. I don't know how well he got on with Pettigrew, but I think that, that he definitely did see him as a friend. You'd think that, that you know what, out of the three Marauders, I bet Lupin is the one who liked Pettigrew the most. Definitely. From what I what, from what from I know about the characters so far, anyway. I think he definitely would have been in denial about it. Um, and now, just seeing Peter's name on the map is what makes it click for him. And he's he's willing to risk everything for his old friend Sirius. And for Harry's soul as well, you could also argue. James's son's... Yo. Know, yeah, his soul. I, I think that's the best way of putting it. Brilliant. Emma, fantastic comment. Is this really your first comment, Emma? Well, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. I'm finally leaving a book talk. Yeah. Well, Emma, thank you so much. This was brilliant. Greatly appreciate it. Hope to see you next time. Paloma, thank you so much uh, for being a Paloma. I, I, blew, I blew you in here. 
Yes, yes, you are. Yes, yeah, yeah. I see. Snooping. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. Let's give no more context. Hi, Veggie. I'm so glad to be to be here. Since you're, uh, by the way, guys, I don't, I don't agree with. Okay, snooping is something that happened in the last video, guys. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, since your reaction in the middle of Harry, sorry, since your reaction in in the movie Harry Potter and the Floss uh, Prism and Prism of Azkaban, I've been waiting for you to arrive to this chapter. Your reaction to the scenes were where it all de all developed in the movie just made me think that will be nothing compared to to all the crucial information that the book gives the readers it's true it's it's true i i love both though the movie scene is so good and i i i, I still keep myself talking over the werewolf bit it's it's oh man I, I'm sorry guys. I feel like I've gotten better at shutting up now when it comes to um, movies, movie reactions, um, showing up and listening. I mean, um, I'm not going to comment about it yet because you because you don't want to split this chapter ch two chapters um, for what's coming next. Just one question: during the book, were you already? Where, 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 you, where you already know the relationship between Sirius and Lupin at this point, do you think Lupin believes Sirius is innocent, or he, he blame him like everyone else? I think he did. I think he does blame Sirius. Although the way he talks about, you know what? Maybe not, Paloma. Because we had that wonderful bit earlier on in the book, where Harry's like saying that 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 Sirius deserves deserves death or something like that and Lupin is almost taken back by it and says does, does anyone deserve that and like we were just saying in the previous comments there is definitely there was definitely going to be a, 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 an edge of doubt in the back of um, Lupin's mind about what really happened so this moment for Lupin must just be so emotionally overwhelming on top of his, three of his students appearing to treat him derogatory because of uh, his ailment I love and love looping guys um, oh man. Paloma you, you raise a great point I think that that's he would have re reluctantly believed it but would have always had that spark of doubt. That's my reading of it. So far, we shall see. Great comment. Thank you so much, Paloma. Frederick. Frederick, sorry. Um, uh, I think I think the one who said I should call you Freddy. I'm sorry if you are, if you are or if you aren't. I apologize. Firstly, I don't think Trawley is a fraud because her predictions come true. But I also think that her predictions are completely made up. <laughs> So, oh, I see what you mean. Okay. So the fact that, so it's basically she, she, she got a couple right and thought, oh, now, now I must always be right. But, and, and it will always justify them maybe. Yeah. Um, so the fact that they come true is utterly meaningless. She's not a fraud because she does, she does have the ability, but she does act fraudulently. It is not our abilities, but our choices that define who we are. Remember? My goodness, I like it, I like it. Um, now, the scene in the Shrieking Shack. It's so odd because it is probably my favourite scene in the entire Harry Potter movie series. Or at least top tier. I, I think it has to be for the movies. Uh, top tier, definitely. But the book is so much richer with the detail. We don't get... Gary Ullman's superb performance and the rest, quite frankly. All of them, the kids, everyone, everyone in that scene is just great. Um, apart from Scabbers. Oh, no, no I mean Scabbers and, and not Peter, Peter Peregrew, who is a fantastic actor who I once really annoyed. Uh, if you haven't heard that story, go and check out my um, Prisoner of Azkaban movie reaction. <laughs> um, and some people say that he was out of order. I don't think Timothy Spall was out of order. I was being very unprofessional. Uh, I I want to I want to speak to him someday and apologize. I read it. it's been quite a while as well. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting... Richard, we don't get Gary Moore's superb performance, but we... But we have both Hermione and Ron defending Harry. We get to see Li what Lily and James' death did to Remus and Sirius's friendship. How Remus lost all his friends in one way or another in one night. There's just so much more there. Uh, and it's only the first half. It's true. It's true. Lupin is not that important in the movie scene. And yet, when you think about the context... It's all about Lupin. It really is. Jeez. Great comment, Freddy. Or oh, Frederick. I, I think you said to call you Freddy. If you didn't, I apologize. Um, great point. I do. I still really love that movie scene. Though. I really do. Kate. Uh, I wonder why Scabbers didn't run away or, or and was hid, hidden in, 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 in Hagrid's. Where... Where Crookshanks and, and Sirius patrolling the grounds to ca to catch him, or I guess it's I guess yeah, Scabbers would have been uh, uh, Crookshanks would have been patrolling as well. Or is there some sort of barrier preventing him from leaving Hogwarts grounds? He's still a rat and can hide easily, so se seems like he had plenty of opportunity to escape. I, I, Katie, I don't know yet. I, I have a fan theory at this point, which could be shot down immediately. Because of what happened happened with Lily and James, and the fact that 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 um, that Peter Pettigrew is low low on morals and everything, if he Voldemort or whatever put a spell on him so he couldn't turn back without someone else activating it you know if that isn't a thing then i'm not sure but if that is a thing then going out into the wilderness in scotland as a rat would be pretty damn dangerous i guess he could hitch a ride on someone but if he gets caught they're just gonna kill him so oh man i wanted to read the replies because that is a, it's a it, it's a good question for, for debate i don't feel like there's a force field preventing him Wouldn't be the Dementors. No. Wow. I'm not sure. Because in the movie, it's it's uh, Lupin and Sirius. Or Remus and Super Sirius, I should say. Who who do the spell to return Pettigrew there. But has has Pet Pettigrew been risking it for a biscuit and turning human every now and then? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. One of the best Ron moments, protecting Harry with a broken leg. As someone who broke my leg a few months ago, I know Kate, I didn't know about this. I know how much agony he should be in. And respect him so much. Kate, I respect you so much. That must have been brutal. I've never had an injury like that, I, I must admit. Sprained my ankle, that's the closest. Uh, the map is fascinating, and some things are never explained. So, shows people under the invisibility cloak for one but maybe because the marauders knew of the cloak when they were making the map it, it was james that i that's my head counting, the fact that they would have done it on purpose just so the rest of them can know where james is at any point yeah i i think so 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 yeah it's, it's picking up the person rather than the vis visibility of the vi vision of the person you know what i mean and Harry never saw Pettigrew on the map. Only Lupin did. I personally think it's because Marauders had it so that only Marauders can see other Marauders on it. Otherwise, it's, it seems like a major plot hole. Oh, Kate. That's a good explanation. But why would they do that? So only Marauders opening the map would reveal their positions. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, that, w that would explain it. That would absolutely explain it perfectly. Because it doesn't show Hedwig, does it? It doesn't show other animals. Oh, this is interesting. It only shows humans, right? 
I don't know. I mean, apparently Dobby is more in these books than, than he is in the movies, guys. So that's very interesting. That that would be an explanation. Kate, I like it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's Shiraz? Is it Shiraz? 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 I'm so sorry. I'm terrible at reading names. But either way, we finally get to one of the most e e e egregious Ron and Hermione book, uh, book movie mishaps. The movie made her out to be some sort of action hero, dodging the tree like a pro and grabbing a, a, a stunned Harry, then self, selflessly putting her between Harry and, and the danger. I mean, she is screaming on the tree. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's like, ah, like that. But no, you're right. Um, I don't mind it. I don't mind that moment too much. She does do she does dodge the tree for a while, much more than she would have done in the book. The, the tree is much worse in the book, isn't it? But then she'd like hang on to the, to the branch, and, go, ah! and then she does like grab Harry, nearly breaking his neck to put him away. She does put herself between Harry and, and like in the book, Hermione's basically in the corner, really freaking out in, 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 in the book on um Um I just got a, 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 a tweet from Jonas, who makes the uh, sidebars. Um, side panels, I should say. Um, broken leg. I'm sorry. I, oh, God. I, I'm sorry. I, I've messed up. Meanwhile, Ron is bumbling and scared. Yes, I. this is, this is a shame. What a big difference. Hermione is my favorite, but this was insane. Yeah... She was screaming for help whilst Harry figured things out, and she was trying to hush the boys whilst Ron stood on a broken leg, ready to, to die to protect his friends. It's true, Hermione's like saying, like she's trying to calm Harry down, whereas Ron is like, no, we're, if you're fighting, we're fighting. Amazing. We surprised at this unnecessary change. I'd say that I'm not surprised because at this point I'm almost used to it. But it is, it's a shame. It is a shame. It, you know what it is? My is issue with it is that Hermione is a brilliant character. Being scared in this situation is completely natural. And the way that she handles this scene is fantastic as well. So the idea that her character being improved by making her not scared or being more defensive than 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 ron is i don't think that is an improvement um i think it waters the character down if anything um it is a shame because ron it, it for me it's up there with a the chessboard moment for, for for me i thought he was amazing when he did that um shiraz shiraz maybe i, I i'm oh sh shiraz Shreeze, maybe? I'm so sorry about my, my reading of your name. I, I'm, I'm, I'm dyslexic. I'm terrible at reading names. Um, so um, if you let me know how to pronounce it, and, and then I will uh, endeavour to do so probably next time. So, But great comment. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, it is a shame about Ron. It really is. And especially as Hermione's your favourite character. It's it's interesting, guys. Okay, so I just read Jonas's tweet that he sent me. So there's a thing that Jonas does where um, whenever I put that the book club is complete... Which essentially that happens like even like the day before or a few hours before the book club appears and everything. <clears throat> and Jonas always keeps an eye on the Patreon, and so when 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 he sees that that's the case, he he acts me a a meme about the fact that I, that I'm closing the book club. And um, and yeah, I always retweet it and everything. They're always amazing. And uh, this time he knew that I was recording today, and he's just sent me a message saying, "Well, it's been like six hours since you started recording, Veggie. Uh, are you actually good?" good? And, and so I've just replied to him saying that that yes, it, we we are getting there. We're, we're less than ten comments left to go. And so, if you follow me on Twitter, you will uh, see uh, his wonderful memeing works. Uh, but before then, we need to get through the last handful of comments. Annette. Um. This is where all the information is missing in the in the movie. So much more info about the Marauders and what actually led to Sirius being in Azkaban and even how he escaped. Oh, we haven't got that yet. Uh, that's interesting. I'm sure that'll be next time. Then then there's Ron, Ron's heroism and how they actually got past the Whomping Willow. I love 
the the barely seen interaction between Sirius and Crookshanks uh, in this book that ha only Harry sees. Yeah, when that happened, I was thinking, wait, what? Wait, what's happening here? As someone who's watched the movie, that was such a surreal moment to be happening. It's like, okay, I have no idea which way this is going. That, that's that's how I that how I felt when we got to that part of the book. Annette, thank you so much for for your awesome comments. I always appreciate it. Maria, I'm so excited that we're getting to my favourite part of the book. These chapters are so great. It's amazing. I'm a cat person. I'm a dog person. But it's alright. It's alright. Uh, so one thing I especially... I love cats as well, by the way. I, one thing I especially like is how crucial Crookshanks is to this part of the plot. I think he is often overlooked, but he really is the MVP of chapter 17, d defending Sirius and helping Hermione and, and uh, Harry with, with the Whomping Willow. Absolutely, and Crookshanks. And the fact that all of that was cut for the movie is kind of bizarre, but I, I can kind of see it. I think Crookshanks is supposed to have some magical intelligence. I think you're right. Although I've met some real cats that are uh, uh, almost as smart as him i uh but animals in general are really good at identifying good good people and bad people uh so i think the fact that crookshanks uh likes serious and hates scabbers is subtle hints that to the reader about their true personalities maria you're absolutely right in fact weirdly enough i i won't say who it was because you know but uh, i was actually having a, a, a word with with um with someone um, online uh, about a similar thing, and it's absolutely true that animals pick up on all sorts, guys. Um, it really is. I mean, I can't really say Woozle as an example because she—if you look Woozle in the eye and she doesn't know who you are, she is going to get scared. She, 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 she had a bad uh, upbringing, guys. Woozle's my lurcher, if you, if you don't know that. Um, but that being said, that there will be days where I'm feeling really down, and she absolutely picks up on that and actively tries to make me happy. It's it's like magic, guys. It really is. And you know, people, animals can pick up on someone being sensitive or going through emotional stress or being anxious and everything. And obviously, different animals will be different. Uh, like some some animals will. Um, treat different people in a way but some will absolutely understand and and you know process what people are going through and everything um yeah it's it is it is magical guys it really is a uh, fantastic beast as they, they they all are i also think that it's really sweet that hermione asks for help and crookshanks immediately responds it really shows their bond oh you're that's so true i think we should have had more Crookshanks in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, my initial thoughts of Crookshanks was, I, I don't get the point of that. Was it because Harry has Hedwig, Ron has Scabbers, and Hermione has nothing? And I, you know what? I, I may have even predicted that Crookshanks was a movie exclusive because of that. But yeah, Crookshanks earning earning his paycheck in this book if he's getting paid. Yankee Veg! Thank you so much, Murray, for, for your comment, by the way. Yankee Veg. Ha, Veggie. I love your content because it feels like added value experience for, to Harry Potter movies and books. Again, for the first time through the eyes of a friend. Yankee, that's very kind of you. Uh, now for these chapters. Yay, Crookshanks. And why is Scabbers so edgy at... To start with, he doesn't seem to be in danger. Keep, keep being you, Veg. Uh, we love you, Yankee. That, uh, Veg, I should say as well. Uh, that is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. And why, why is Scabbers so on edge at the start? I think because, oh, one because he's been found, but maybe for whatever reason he knows that Black is nearby. And Crookshanks. I mean, the thing is, throughout the book, he's getting worse and worse, isn't he? And he's getting more and more anxious. And so it could just be a build-up of that. But it could also be because he knows somehow, maybe he's been looking out the window at Hagrid's hat, that that things are getting towards a, a, a crescendo, you know? Yeah. 
Awesome comments, Yankee, uh, or Veg, whichever, whichever you prefer. Jonas, the person I was just talking about. Me that output. Hey, Reggie. Uh, I have a point about the this chapter 17 that always left me confused. I kind of got the feeling in the book that Harry was planning to kill Black. I mean, in the movie, he shouts that he wants to kill him in his emotional breakdown. But I mean, how would Harry go about that? He should not know how to kill someone with magic. Is, is he going... Got a one... Wind Guardian, Leviosa, a knife into black, and how, uh, and how exactly is this going to play out? Good point, Jonas. But there are there had to you had to be able to die from other spells. Again, Molly does not do the the, the unfor unfor unforgivable curse on uh, Bellatrix, right? Unless it's different in the book, of course. So there are spells which you can use that will end in death. But also Harry just gra just charges him, doesn't he? So maybe he's just playing to rip him apart of his hands. Or maybe Harry hadn't even thought about that, you know? It's not like he, he had like a, he had like a, some sort of scheme or anything. Uh, he's, he's an emotional wreck, isn't he? That's the thing. I think I read book one and two when I was very young and then later watched the movies up to number four before reading the books. And I have to admit, I did not understand the story that unfolded in chapter 17 and following chapters in the portrayal of the movie. So I can't wait to see if you like them and if they maybe clear, th clear things up for you as well. Well, this is the thing, Jonas, the, the fact that Lupin popped in through the door, I've never really questioned... How's he here? <laughs> no, that, that never that, 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 that dawned on me. Maybe because the scene is just like... Duh, 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 duh. It didn't give me time to think. But that was great, hearing about how he how he was there and, and how he now knows that Sirius... Because I, I think I thought that, that Lupin had been long-term. Because he does say, up until now, I thought he, that, that Sirius did it in the movie. But I thought that maybe he was lying there because I, I thought that he, that he had long-term known it. So... Finding it out now is a is a treat, guys. It really is, and I learned it today, guys. I I read I, I read the the, the that, that that chapter today, uh, for the first time. Um, it's been a long day. It has, but it's worth it, guys. I love the I love reading out your comments. Hope you're doing well, Veggie. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Greatly appreciate, it, Jonas. And, and thank again, thank you so much for these side panels. They are wonderful. They really add a lot to to the to, to the uh, to the videos. Uh, so thank you. Gothic Lama. The beginning of the chapter 16 is why I have a bit of beef with the book. The time of exams just doesn't make sense. I mean, the whole plot about Hermione and her taking all the classes, but we discussed it previously. How is it possible to even logic or even logical for a school to have set double exams for one year and to... to, to for year one one year in two days is it two days wow that is crazy well that that throws my theory about there being other exams going on at the same uh, um at different times then i refuse to believe it is that only her money is the only student who wanted to pick charms and ancient ruins they do feel like they go together don't they uh normally the school would probably set uh, up a charms exam for third years and at at one and ancient ruins for fourth and fifth year in the same time and then let's say have third years take ancient ruins exam at three or some or, or another day that's how school works oh god so the optionable classes are they doing them every year now then? Or is it next year you could choose other ones? No, it has to be every year now. God, that is a young age to just be deciding your future of education, guys. 13? It's GCSE age for us, so it would have been like well, 15, so it's not that much better. Wow. Other interesting things I've picked up in these chapters. In Trolley's prediction, she said that the servant has been chained these 12 years. Which is a misdirection to Black, but Pettigrew has been chained to live as a rat. 
that's, yeah. Now, I don't know if that's because of magic or literally because he just can't change back because he's around people. It has to be, be playing out this, this, this rat thing. I do wonder if he's ever changed back out of the rat since what happened happened. And if that is because he was made to be like that. Interesting to, to find out. Why did Hermione not use Repero for Hagrid's broken kettle? That's a very fair point. Um, that's a good point. I feel like that could be the case with a lot of things, actually. Hmm. I like that the trio didn't actually see what happened to Buttbeak, like in the film, but only heard the noise behind uh, behind them to make them believe Buttbeak really died. They see the axe getting swung, but you don't see what it's hitting. And then later on in the movie, you get a McNear out of frustration slamming the axe down, I think, through a pumpkin. Again, it depends on how time travel works in this universe. Because in my head canon, but Beak at no point ever died, was executed. How funny was it must have looked? Sirius sitting on the bed with a cat on his lap and Ron scoot scooting around. Anyway, oh, did I skip a bit there? I did. Yeah, I did. Krushank's being more important than in the film. Loved it, yeah. It's so different, so different. How funny would it have been to see Sirius sitting in the bed? He's actually like that at one point. He was head, 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 head in his hand. Um, on, with Cat in his lap. And Ron scooting scooting around. Anyway, sorry for the long comment. And greetings from Poland. Gothic, that's absolutely fine. That's not long at all. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much. Chorafini? Chorafini? Oh, yes, it's your first participant in the book club. Trofini, I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I, I really do struggle with names. So uh, let me know in the comments. And I will endeavor to, to correct it. Correct myself. Been watching your Harry Potter journey from, oh, for over a year. And it's been awesome. Your uh, your videos make a, a very happy Brazilian Ravenclaw. That's so... Fa thank you so much. That's, that's amazing. Um, now for the chapters. Even though uh, I, I love this book, the class schedule for Hermione <laughs> to, to me seems a, a bit forced so that she can have a time turner and a convenient way to help Sirius and Buckbeak. Yeah, I guess, I guess, it, yeah, I guess it, uh. time travel, a lot of people, yeah, time travel can be very clunky. In, in some things, can't it? So I think I, I I see what you mean there. Did you notice the executioner's name, McNear? He was mentioned w one time in the movies, but I won't say which one in case you don't remember. I think I've already been, I think I think I've already had that uh, filled in. So I think that was actually filled in after I finished go uh, Goblet. Sorry, not Gauntlet. Um, uh, movie reaction. So yeah, it's cool. It's cool that he's there. Um, it's nice. That it's all connected, you know. Does he actually work for the destruction or dangerous creatures? Or is he freelance? I'd imagine he's probably freelance. But then again, they don't do humans, do they? That's a good point. But no, they can't do unforgivable curses on, on animals, can they? Well, they can, but it's unforgivable. Regardless of who you're doing on. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. uh, do it now said a voice in his head. This happened when Harry was pointing his wand at Sirius. As far as I remember, every time Harry thinks some something, the narrative just explains it as no with no dialogue. But this time it specifically mentions the voice in his head. I did not pick up on that. That is awesome. It's freaking Voldemort, guys. That's Chorofini. Trafini, that is awesome. Of course, of course, that's brilliant. Uh, I wonder if it has to do with the Horcrux, or uh, am I looking too much into it? No, I think you're spot on. That's brilliant. Even if it, I think that is absolutely the case. I mean, that, that is my head cannon. See what I did there? Sorry. Um, even if it's un understandable. Especially at their age, even though the majority of the wizard society is like this, like that, it's sad to see the prejudice against werewolves here. I do feel like it is prejudice. Yes, the true comments were almost 
all regarding Lupin's condition rather than him helping uh, a possible mass murderer. It's true. They don't say traitor or anything. They're saying werewolf. Well, Ron is. That's a good point. Wow. Jeez. It's going to be another long video, guys. I think it will be under five hours this time, though. <laughs> so there is that. Um... Interesting to note that Harry's scene, seeing, seeing Pettigrew on the map, was transferred to to Harry, and what and what a good cliffhanger! Oh, Lupin's scene. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I think that was very cleverly done, actually. To be honest. Uh, sorry for the long comments. I will try to get more to the point in future. No, I think that's fine. I think I think that's fine, uh, Trofini. Great first comment. Uh, greatly appreciated. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but that is awesome about Voldemort telling Harry to do it. I think yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Pardon me. Last three, I believe, guys. Yep, there's the Buffy's eyes sneaking into shots. Where is it? There we go. Starting series three soon, guys. Exciting. Um, Noe? Noe? But uh, hi, first my first time here after finally catching up with the discussions. No, you're very welcome. Uh, again, if I'm saying your name wrong, please correct me. I have read the, these the, those books so much as a kid, and it's great to experience it again with you after a couple of years, and also reading it in English for the first time. Now that's interesting, because we know there are... Other people have said there are definitely some changes when it comes to the different uh, regions of it coming out, and languages. I really love how different the more unique kinds of pets are uh, a big part of this book. It's so true. I have I have a pet snake. Oh my goodness. You're not Slytherin, are you? I think you might be Slytherin. His name is Monty uh, because um, he's a bull python. I see what you did there. I like it. Kadog in there. Um, and I think it's just really cool to try and learn about the different characters by 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 looking at the animals they connect to yeah you know what i swear that these books have different subjects at the forefront uh of 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 different i feel like certain subjects that you learn at hogwarts are really focused on in different books and care for magical creatures is definitely one of the ones for um, Prince of Azkaban. Monty is a great name for your python. Um, I honestly never really appreciated the movies as a kid because I loved the books so much. Uh, uh, books to match. But I can still say this one is probably the best one in my personal uh, in my in my opinion sorry for the sole reason that they got a really good director to do it so it really stands out it does and i think i've said it before i don't know if it is my favorite because i really like definitely hollows part two guys i really did but when it comes to the movie which i think is the best made i think it's definitely prison of Asking man i think it is i i think it is guys uh, the production of all the movies is still incredible, especially the practical effects and sets. But in my opinion, after this one, the most obvious problem is that the books are, are just get way longer, I have heard. Goblet of Fire is almost triple the length of Philosopher's Stone. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I knew it was a chunky one. Um, Order of the Phoenix is chunky as well, right? To, to the point... Where they just can't tell the whole story in two and a half hours, our movies, even if they, if things, everything else is perfect, and it's not. But I know you already talked enough about the portrayal of the main characters, especially Ron in this chapter, and to the other problems I'll I'll get to in later books. Cool, I can't wait. Um. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's where this HBO series is going to be interesting, guys, because the only information that we have about it is that it's going to be a more book accurate telling of the story. I do feel like they should have chosen a different story in the in the Harry Potter world. We shall see how it goes, guys. It's a long time off anyway, but uh, we shall see how it goes. We'll definitely be covering it when 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 it when it arrives. By the way, sorry if 
I if I have writing mistakes, I'm still practicing written writing in English. No, you did excellently. Seriously, um, if I struggle to read any parts, it's because I struggle at reading very well written English. And so I think you did wonderful there. Greatly appreciate. Thank you so much for your first comment, and I hope to see you in the future as well. Thank you so much. H. Here are some things that I enjoy in these chapters. I and. I will try not to mention anything mentioned by others above. That's fine. The point, the pointless flubberworm exam. I'm not happy with Hagrid there. I'm not ha happy with Hagrid there, guys. Uh, Florine, the ice cream man, getting a mention again during the exams. I thought that was so smart. Uh, Ron talking passionately to Fudge about Buttbeak. That was cool. Where where it slowly seems the true losing faith in authorities, which obviously is an important part of Harry Potter's story in future books. That's very true. Yeah, this is this is where it's really starting to kick off, isn't it? Obviously, we have Hagrid getting uh, arrested last time, but yeah, absolutely. And actually speaking back to authority as well, at least for Ron, at least. The description of Hagrid's helplessness, so sad, but such a good description of it, and it seems so right for his character it's true i feel like the book the movie did do okay but he's definitely more broken in 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 the in the uh in the book uh lupin throwing the ones back to the trio i know this was mentioned in another comment that's a, that's all right you don't need to hey you don't need to be you know your comment doesn't need to be exclusive um but i mostly like it because he understands how to get people to listen very well put. It's a way of dealing with people which explains why he is such a good teacher despite the whole Snape Boggett thing. Yeah, we've, we've, we've covered that as an ad nauseum at this point, haven't we? Um, that's true. It, 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 that was the best way to call the situation and actually to get to buy Sirius and him some time to try and explain to these guys. And it was a heck of a risk, especially with Ron, the way he was uh, talking earlier on. Uh, and the way he just spoken to Lupin as well. I'll end this comment by guessing how long uh, into the video you are when you read uh, this sentence. Uh, 3 hours, 58 minutes and 22. You're at least half an hour out. I think uh, I think over uh, definitely over half an hour. I, think, I don't think you're an hour out just yet. I think we will come under 4 hours this time. Um, but we shall see, though. Depends how long it takes me to, re to reply to said, which I believe is the last comment. I guess I should really do a refresh just to see if anyone else has commented since. Oh, I just checked my emails. You know what? I I will I I will read said's comment and then we I will refresh. Uh, but said says to round us up for this book club. There is a plot hole that's always mentioned whenever the Marauders are discussed. Everyone wonders how how in the three years of at Hogwarts the twins never noticed Peter on the map, believing believing basically living in in Ron's dom. Even if they didn't know who Peter is, they would be suspicious if they're if they ever see someone in Gryffindor common room that shouldn't be there. There are, there is a theory that the Marauders were hidden on the map with some sort of password spell that can only be seen by each other, each other somehow, which is why Lupin can see Sirius and Peter Pettigrew with the trio. Yeah. And I think that that's perfect guys. I, I think that that fan theory actually does. I think it was a mistake. Or an oversight, I should say, or a plot hole, I guess you could you, you could say, which is filled in by this theory. I like it. I, I think it's got legs, guys. Again, sorry, Ron. Um, and Kate as well. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you're right, by the way, Kate. You said about your, your broken arm. I think it was Kate. Uh, of course, that would not work in the movies, as Harry saw Peter on the map very true, but it does make perfect sense in the books. Also, love that the books explain how Lupin found out where they were or how they found out they they needed help. Uh, I understand making... yeah uh, That filled in such a big blank for me. It really did. I, I appreciated that so much in the book. I understand making some scenes in the movie more grand for the sake of the movie, but the book ha books have always been more realistic and 
in that scene were able to connect to the characters more. This is common throughout the book, books, books, movies. Sorry for the long comment. Back you're fine. You're fine, Seth. Uh, for okay, but there are five chapters left, and you might want to consider covering three in the next video, as two of them are quite short relative to 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 the other chapters. But whatever you decide will be all all be eager to, to wait for the next book club. Uh, they have been amazing. Thanks, said. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. I do appreciate that. Um, I. I'll have a look at the times. I'll have a look at the times. But then again, these today have been two short chapters. But they had so much stuff in. And so, um, I feel like we will probably go on with two chapters next time as well. But we can decide that a later, uh, uh, closer to the time, guys. Um, I'm just going to double check if there is anyone else that has commented since. Because I, I do want to cover as many people as I can. I quickly just refresh. Scrolling past the Buffy things which you can't see yet because of... Oh, no. Uh, is Patreon down? It better not be because that means I can't end this video properly. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, my goodness. What's wrong with Patreon? Okay. So, I'm going to give it one more shot. Right, said was the last person. Okay, I'm ending it now then, guys. So thank you so much for taking part. I can't, I can't do the close message because patrons crashing for me every few, every few seconds. How bizarre! So I, I apologize, Jonas. Um, thank you all so much for watching, guys. I think we, I think we probably brought this in just under five hours. But my goodness, I love the book club so much, though, guys. And so I, I do appreciate you all. I'm sorry about the sidetrack stuff, which I do sometimes do, but uh, apparently some of you don't mind. So. I, to, the, to those who do, I do apologize. I do need. I know that I need to get uh, speedier at doing these things. But either way, guys, love every single one of you. Remember to leave your lunch at the top of your comments or where or at any point in your comment doesn't need to be at the top. And anyway, guys, I'm gonna go and um, make some food. Everyone, by the way, guys, I did say that, 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 that today is the first time that I've covered this chapter. That's not strictly true. It was the, it was the latter part of the, of the chapter which I which I've covered for the first time today. It does take me a lot of prep time to do a lot of this stuff, and that's why these do take quite a long to get out. And so it was part of the chapter which I which I read new today. Um, I think essentially from when Lupin came in. Good stuff. Lupin was awesome in this chapter. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, guys. Love every single one of you. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. All the good stuff. I'm Game, and I'll see you next time.